Hello, comrades. Uh, hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Also, uh, who all the people who are watching us on YouTube, um, all the live streaming and or uh, other uh, channels. Um, you are. We are now officially opening our conference on Lenin's centenary. Uh, the title of the conference is Lenin's Legacy. 100 years on we are gathered here to um, talk about the greatest leader of the october revolution which shaped not only the lands that were part of the soviet union but also the entire world almost throughout the entire century of the 20th uh, uh, entire uh, 20th century sorry about that um, and the October Revolution also, as a revolution, as a political revolution, was perhaps the closest example of a real revolution, a proletarian revolution uh, so far in history and became an inspiration to the entire world throughout the 20th century. So this architect of revolution and of the construction of socialism is our topic today at the centenary of his death. We are here not only to commemorate him, but also to learn from him, to learn from his example, to learn from his vision and understanding, lessons for the future, because Lenin is not of the past, but of the future. Let me say, uh, my name is Sungur Savran. Uh, I am the chairperson of DIP, which is the Revolutionary Workers' Party of Turkey. Uh, I am also, uh, of course, this party is also a member of the uh, International Socialist Center Christian Rakowski, uh, and uh, also animates the uh, Red Med web network along with other parties, starting with uh, EEC, the Workers' Revolutionary Party of Greece. Uh, you can see the leader of uh, EEC uh, right next to me on the screen. Um, I would like to briefly go over the program so that our guests uh, know, have an idea of the overall program. After this opening introductory session uh, where um, uh, Savas will be speaking and later I will be speaking, there will be our guest speakers, uh, two of them, uh, immediately after this session. Then we go to uh, the former Soviet republics um, and discuss, it, Lenin will be discussed by uh, the uh, members of parties and associations of those countries who lived under the Soviet Union. We will then go to Latin America where we will have speakers from Brazil, Cuba and uh, Venezuela. Uh, later, there will be a session where members and friends of the Rakowski Center will be speaking. There will be a brief discussion session after that, and then we, uh, we end the Lenin uh, uh, conference and pass on to a special session on Palestine. Given the uh, terrible situation at this moment in Palestine where a genocide, a live genocide, so to speak, is going on before our very eyes, but also the heroic struggle of the Palestinian people against uh, Zionist and imperialist oppression, uh, given the importance of all this, we uh, decided as the Rakowski Center in Red Med to have uh, this special session at the end of the Lenin conference. Um, let me simply leave the floor to Savas, but before that, please permit me to read you a poem by the Turkish 
um, communist poet Nazem Hikmet in order to set the pace for this conference. I will read a few passages more uh, later on uh, different occasions. But here, I think, when I first started to uh, watch the video at the beginning of this conference, I saw my right hand uh, fist tightening all of a sudden, pugno chiuso, as the Italians say. Uh, this is the feeling that Lenin gives me and possibly, probably, to all of the comrades here. And so I would like to read this wonderful short poem to you by Nazim Hikmet, which he wrote in um, the 1950s. The title is Communists, Just a Few Words. Communists, I have a few words for you. Whether you lead a state or you're in prison, whether you're a foot soldier or party secretary, Lenin should always and everywhere be able to enter your work, your home, your whole life. As his own work, his own home, his own life. This is Nazim Hikmet. Now we pass on to our comrade, um, Savas Mihail Masas. Savas, uh, the Secretary General of the Air, that is the Workers' Revolutionary Party of the East. Uh, he is, of course, along with Eric, and he is, of course, one of the, of the um, Rakowski Center as well. Um, today, he is going to talk uh, uh, under the title Lenin for the Future. Savas, the floor is yours. Thank you, Comrade Sungur. Dear comrades, Davarishi, compañeros y compañeras, camarade, compañe, compañe, Yoldasar, Sidrofiga Sidrofsis. Welcome to the International Conference on Lenin's Legacy, 100 years old. Our deliberations today, January 21st, 2024, exactly 100 years from the day when Vladimir Ilyich Lenin, the leader of the great October 1917 Socialist Revolution, passed away to eternity, is the beginning of a much needed, fresh, collective reflection on his revolutionary legacy. It is not a formal celebration of a harmless icon of a legacy reduced to a fossilized dead dogma we need a new dialectical critical turn to a historical source, which is not at all dried up. It remains an indispensable source of inspiration and creativity for revolutionary theory and practice for all of those who today fight for the self-emancipation of the working class, for the liberation of the exploited and oppressed humanity. With this spirit, we want to declare this year, 2024, as the year Lenin. Vladimir Ilyich Lenin, the architect of the victory of the Red October, the October Revolution itself as the epic and tragic trajectory of the Soviet Union are not a relic of the past, but a necessary preparation for the future. So let us think about Lenin for the future. First, before going to my presentation, all of us here in the Rakowski Center, we want to pay tribute to all those who were heroically defended against all the grave diggers and creatively developed Lenin's legacy the last century both in the Soviet Union and all over the world. Today, particularly in this conference, we want to pay tribute to our comrade Alexander Vladimirovich Buzgalin, an internationally well-known Marxist, 
professor of political economy and Marxist studies in Lomonos of Moscow State University, a founder of the alternative movement and journal, author of many important theoretical books and articles, organizer of many successful scientific, cultural, and political events in the land of October and internationally. He dedicated all his life for theoretical research and political struggle, especially in the tragic period following the collapse of the Soviet Union to defend communism against Stalinist bureaucratic deformations and bourgeois slanders, to promote internationalism in action, to develop Lenin's heritage, to renew a creative Marxism, to educate a new young generation for the paths of emancipation for a, a homo novus creator. Now, why to return to Lenin today? Why we need to rediscover his essential contribution now in our turbulent times? At the centenary of Marx's birth in 2018, we had noticed in a conference in Moscow, by the way, the reactions of well-known spokesmen of the capitalist class and of mainstream bourgeois press, the respectful bourgeois American newspaper New York Times, which on April 30, 2018, has published an article with a cheerful titled, Happy Birthday, Karl Marx, You Were Right. And on May 4, 2018, the voice of the city of London, the equally respectful and bourgeois Financial Times, hosted a book review by the economic historian Adam Tooz under the impressive headlines, Why Karl Marx is More Relevant Than Ever. Nothing similar could be noticed today at the centenary of Lenin's death. Why? Why his enemies remain silent, although they spoke on Marx. The belated after the event recognition of Marx by his opponents had more to do with the inability to bourgeois economics to explain the ongoing world capitalist crisis. They cannot explain the past. They cannot understand the, the present. They cannot foresee the future. As one of the bourgeois commentators put it, the future is uncertain. The present is uncertain. The past is uncertain. In this conditions of theoretical bankruptcy of the ruling class and of generalized disorientation all over the world. Even a liberal economist like Nouriel Rubini can agree that Marx's conviction that capitalism has an inbuilt tendency to destroy itself remains as prescient as ever. The ruling class and its analysts can agree that the destruction of capitalism, even an end of the world, is possible, but never a victorious socialist revolution. And Lenin is insoluble, connected precisely with the victorious October socialist revolution. To add insult to injury, the Bolshevik leader himself characterized this event as the beginning of a world socialist revolution a historical prospect and a horrifying future for all rulers in the present world. The vast majority of them try to console themselves with the thought that Lenin is buried forever in 1991 under the ruins of the disintegration of the Soviet Union. And consequently, he was buried, it was buried the threat that emerged in 1917 of a revolutionary overthrow of global capitalism. This dominant wishful thinking 
proved to be an illusion. It tended together Fukuyama's fallacy of the end of history, of the so-called final and complete victory of liberal capitalism, and of the delusion of a monopolar moment where America is the center of the world empire. On the contrary, from these illusions, history has accelerated its march. Liberal capitalism plunged into the protracted, escalating, and soluble until now global crisis and the decline of American capitalism and of its world hegemony are now manifest in more and more brutal forms, intensifying its imperialist war drive. If everything was historically settled for United States and global capitalism with the catastrophe of the USSR, why now they need to complete the 1991 disaster by a NATO proxy war to fragment and colonize the former Soviet space, the post-Soviet Russia, and then China. They are afraid from another competitor within their own system, or they're terror terrified for the, by the possibility of a reversal of the 1991 disaster. With wars going on in the heart of Europe and in the Middle East in Palestine, a dozen other military conflicts in the global south, declining United States and global capitalism, imperialism, as Lenin has profoundly analyzed its nature, brings now humanity at the brink of the abyss of a third world war of a nuclear holocaust. So, are they afraid more from an end of the world or from a new Lenin's moment? In today's explosive conditions of this insoluble global capitalist crisis escalating into an impeding imperialist world war catastrophe, Lenin's theoretical work on imperialism acquires a burning actuality. After the eruption of the First World War, the unfolding barbarism in Europe and the collapse of the internationalist socialist left, Lenin's struggle, often in solitude or in a small minority, represents the most dramatic, but also the most creative period of his revolutionary life, preparing, rearming, and leading together with Trotsky, the Bolshevik party and the Soviets to the triumph of the 1917 October Revolution. This was a process not linear at all. The road to victory was full of obstacles, traps, conflicts, splits, realignment and reorientation of revolutionary forces within and beyond the Bolsheviks. From the eruption of the Great War and the capitulation of the Second International, Lenin had to grasp the specific historical nature of imperialism, and on this basis, to develop the line of transformation of the imperialist world war into an international socialist revolution. And finally, with this internationalist revolutionary line, to transform a catastrophe into a triumph, the triumph of Soviet power in October 1917 in Russia. After the initial shock in 1914, the first crucial step of Lenin was a decisive, original, and deep reworking of materialist dialectics by a detailed study of Hegel's science of logic as well as a vast philosophical field from antiquity and Aristotle to the philosophers of the modern times and early 20th century. Lenin's philosophical notebooks is a unique testimony how he worked in his theoretical laboratory. It is a vital document 
or his methodological break with the so-called orthodox Marxism of the Second International, the theoretical foundations of the reformist opportunism of social democracy. Lenin's intense philosophical methodological, methodological work, his break from mechanical thinking and linear gradualism, penetrates and marks all his writings on imperialism, the political center of gravity of his research during the Great War. His small book, Imperialism, the Highest Stage of Capitalism, with a modest subtitle, A Political Outline, presents a, a popular outline, sorry, presents under conditions of censorship in condensed form, the main results of an immense theoretical labor on a mountain of empirical facts and a, a critical study of the main debates on imperialism of that period, particularly drawing from the works of Hobson and Hilferding. This tireless labor had been seen in his voluminous notebooks on imperialism. In these notebooks on imperialism, is not at all absent the evidence of his continuous attention to philosophy with references to dialectics, its categories and cosms, even a note of interest to Hegel's phenomenology of mind. The booklet on imperialism, higher stage of capitalism, has to be carefully studied again in connection and within this broader epistemological framework. Any eclectic separation of a particular quotation for the entire context of dialectical, historical, materialist inquiry and exposition has disastrous political implications. A typical example today, it is the repeated ad nauseum misuse of Lenin's definition of imperialism by five basic classic economic features, you know them. By they taking this definition out of context and reducing it into an abstract dead formula, it is artificially, artificially imposed and applied to every concrete living social reality from many people claiming to be left theoreticians. In this distorting way, the warnings of Lenin himself, himself are ignored just before the definition in five basic four features. What are the main features of imperialism? He warns Lenin, the conditional and relative value of all definitions in general, which can never embrace all the concatenations of a phenomenon in its full development. Immediately after the definition in five basic features of imperialism, Lenin points out imperialism can and must be defined differently if we bear in mind not only the basic purely economic concepts to which the above definition is limited, but also the historical place of this stage of capitalism in relation to capitalism in general, or the relation between imperialism and the two main trends in the working class movement, namely the opportunist and the revolutionary trend. The opportunist trend in our days, sometimes claiming to be even Leninist, arbitrarily applies the five points definition to declare arbitrarily Russia and China as imperialist countries, and in this way to legitimize their own equidistant position in the US NATO proxy war in Ukraine or in the US imperialist aggressive encirclement and antagonism against China. In other versions, the same method of formal justification of reactionary policy of keeping equal distances while paying lip service to Lenin against Lenin, they use the pseudo concept of sub imperialism or of peripheral imperialism or of capitalism in transition to imperialism 
to describe conflicts between global north and the global south. These pseudo con co concepts totally ignore and or reject Lenin's central approach to the historical nature of imperialism. Its analysis and recognition of imperialism as an epoch of transition from a decaying, parasitic, rotten, agonizing capitalism. All of these adjectives are Lenin's transition to socialism. In Lenin's imperialism, the highest stage of capitalism, two concluding chapters, chapter seven, imperialism as a special stage of capitalism, and chapter eight, parasitism and decay of capitalism, are crystal clear on the nature of the imperialist epoch. This is why these two particular chapters either are ignored or rejected as wrong or obsolete. Always new, higher stages of an ever-renewing capitalism in an eternal return of the same in different forms are discovered by apologists of the status quo. Plus a chance or plus la même chose. Savas, you have the, five minutes. Yes, I finish. Five. The political implications of such impressionistic assumptions are immense for the present and for the future. The past is uncertain, the present is uncertain, the future is uncertain, and there's mainstream bourgeois ideology admits. No orientation is possible or even necessary today for them. The conclusion is the old Thatcherite sophism, there is no alternative, Tina. Undoubtedly, many and great changes took place, indeed, during the hundred years from Lenin's death. But an epoch of transition is not a smooth evolution of gradual progress, but precisely a historical process of constant and brusque changes of unfolding contradictions and transformation to the opposite, leaps forward and the regressions of unexpected turns from long sequences of calm and stagnation to volcanic explosions of wars, revolutions, and counter-revolutions. An epoch of historical decline, Hegel has pointed out, is the negative expression of the emergence of a higher principle of social organization. In the current transitional epoch of declining capitalism, it, it is its special historical stage when, as Lenin writes, the features of the epoch of transition, this is Lenin's words, from capitalism to a higher social and economic system had taken shape and revealed themselves in all spheres of the quotation. This is the essential point of Lenin's analysis of imperialism, not as an expansionary policy, but as the historical stage of a developed, parasitic, decaying, agonizing capitalism. It's not by chance that agony, the death agony of capitalism is the title of the transitional program of the Fourth International. And this, the transition in an epoch towards the higher, so a higher socialist reorganization of society in its transformation into a classless, stateless, communist society. This point is ignored and or rejected by all inventors of new post-imperialist stages. Interconnected with this essential point is another one. The transition beyond capitalism is not, as in the past transitions, a transition from one form to another form of class society. But it is, but it is an entire historical epoch of transition to a classless society, world communism. It is not an automatic linear revolution, but it is a world socialist revolution. The role of revolutionary subjectivity becomes immense, preponderant. To lead the transition forward towards historical goal, it is, not, it is needed the conscious participation of the working class as a universal class, that is, as a class 
which cannot emancipate itself without leading a universal human emancipation from all forms of exploitation, oppression, and humiliation of a human being by a human being. So could you wind called, up slowly? Ask the uh, uh, last sentence. Yes. yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. To fulfill its historical task, the working class has to be organized in its one independent organs of mass struggle and political power. First of all, it has to be organized in the revolutionary combat parties of a revolutionary international. And this central point palpitates the living heart of Lenin's legacy. It belongs not to a remote past, but to an open and necessary future. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Savas. Thank you for a very lively and dialectical presentation of Lenin's legacy. Um, let me, as the moderator, add to what Savas said about the contrast between the bourgeoisie's approach to uh, the uh, anniversaries, different anniversaries regarding Marx and Lenin. Lenin, I think, just, you know, adding to what Sava said, has become the dividing line, the criterion these days after the uh, the collapse of the Soviet Union, the dissolution of the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, and what is happening in China and Vietnam, uh, after all this has become the real dividing line. And uh, therefore, uh, we have to pay great attention to how not only the bourgeoisie, but different groups on the socialist left approach Lenin as a leader. Now, um, I'm passing on to my own presentation on behalf of the RedMed um, Internet Network. Um, let me first say that we're discussing Lenin's legacy. This legacy is, of course, full of a wealth of different um, areas where Lenin contributed to Marxism, both in the theoretical field and in the practical field. Lenin's legacy is really uh, very precious in the organizational area where the theory of the party is an immense contribution to Marxism. He has contributed also in the fields of uh, the theory of the different um, aspects of the development of capitalism and made great contributions to the program and strategy of Marxism. Some of these are seriously discussed, of course, although they may be controversial for different uh, the groups and tendencies on the left. But there is one aspect of his legacy that is simply not understood or deliberately denied or silently rejected. I wish to talk about that aspect of his legacy. Mind you, this is Lenin's contribution after this great break mentioned by Comrade Savas concerning the First World War and the capitulation and betrayal of the so-called socialist international leaders uh, to the bourgeoisie at this stage. He, Lenin moved towards a, a new position within the international Marxist um, movement and in a certain sense, took over the leadership of the international proletarian movement after that point. This is what contributed to his um, envisaging a new strategic vision for the future of the proletarian revolution. What I call, how uh, I would like to call this is 
the question of nations, Lenin started to grapple with the problems of the transition from capitalism to socialism even before the October Revolution. But after the October Revolution, of course, it became a very practical matter for him. So he started to uh, grapple with all the different questions, economic, political, etc. But the question of nations was a very special contribution to Marxism. Mind you, I'm not talking about the national question which is the usual name that people uh, give to Lenin's uh, treatment of the relations between nations. That is really um, exclusively a question that exists between the oppressor and the oppressed nations, which was Lenin's great um, contribution also in the, the 20th century because the Bolshevik party was the party that really put forth uh, the uh, importance of self-determination within the international movement in the 20th century. But the question of nations, although it includes that, is not coextensive with it. It's much broader and therefore I will dwell on that question and not the national question in particular, although I will, of course, have to uh, refer to that as well. The reason why I dwell on this question that I call the question of nations is uh, for several reasons. Well, first of all, it is underestimated. As I said, many people do not really understand what Lenin was trying to uh, come to grips with in the last years of his life on this uh, special issue, which is very important for the construction of socialism. And therefore, I would like to dwell on it because of this. Secondly, I think we probably, many of the people, uh, along with many of the people in this uh, meeting, in this conference, that the um, bedrock of, on which the uh, Socialist, the experience of socialist construction in the 20th century broke its back was the question of national communism. That is to say, how all the different communist leaderships in the 20th century, of course, with the exception, with the very notable exception of the uh, tradition of the Fourth International, broke, it really could not solve the problems of international communism and therefore um, uh, really led to the collapse of all the experiences that started in the, 20, the 20th century. Lenin's legacy is the exact opposite of this. This is what I'm going to try to show and shows us the way forward. Thirdly, as I said, this is not grasped even sometimes by the best elements who remain loyal to uh, Lenin themselves, or at least mean to remain loyal to Lenin. Let me start to um, try to define this question of nations in its, by co contra comparing and contrasting it with the national question. The national question, as taken up by all the Marxists, was always a tactical question of unifying the working class, that is to say, the English and the Irish, for instance, or it was considered to be a democratic question uh, that is parallel to all the uh, political and civil rights of the working class and the oppressed masses, or the union rights of the working class, etc., etc. These are all desirable. So is the uh, self-determination of nations. But that is all. It is a matter that belongs to the democratic struggles uh, of the uh, working class and the oppressed masses. Lenin poses an entirely new, new question for the communist movement, for the Marxist movement. That is the question of how do we get over, how do we transcend the problems posed by this division and in many cases hostility between nations in the construction of a classless society? 
No longer is it a question of, you know, uh, a certain aspect of democracy at the international level in particular between nations. It is a matter for the transitional period between capitalism and socialism. I will take his view up in four, uh, under four headings and go over very quickly, unfortunately. I have written on this. I will be writing on this again, and uh, especially uh, when we bring out uh, some of the, uh, at least some of the uh, um, presentations made in this conference uh, and make them into a collection of articles. Uh, I will be writing on this as well. So I'll go very quickly. First of all, of course, Lenin's answer to the national question in the narrow sense that I mentioned that everyone always talks about. Well, one can talk about three different points here. The right of nations to self-determination, because this will uh, present a guarantee to the oppressed nations that in the future, the states ruled by the power of the working class will not treat them in the same manner as the bourgeoisie did in the past. The federal principle, that's the second aspect, the federal principle because it gives some leeway to uh, the oppressed nations of the past to rule themselves, to develop their uh, own national life, etc. And also give them, of course, the right to self-determination. And thirdly, real equality between nations, not only formal, because Lenin says very clearly that formal equality is the petty bourgeois outlook. The Marxists, the communists really should go for real equality. That means, of course, for him, and he says this very clearly, what is now called in the, uh, at the well, since the end of the 20th century, positive discrimination or affirmative action in the U.S. terminology. We now go over to the second point, and that is the strategy and tactics th these three points require in the practice of the revolutionaries, and in particular in the case of the Soviet Union under Lenin. Now, the general strate strategic approach is this. I'll present this under four points. First of all, there is the peaceable granting of the right to self-determination to those nations who want to leave the Union. At least four, probably five, nations were thus given the right to self-determination in practical terms, proving this way that the Bolsheviks were very consistent in their practice Along with the, alongside their theory. Uh, Finland at first, then three Baltic states, that is to say Estonia, Lithuania, and Latvia, and in a more controversial sense, Poland were granted self-determination rights under Soviet uh, administration. The second point is the fact that Lenin and Trotsky along with him on this, Trotsky concurred with him, as opposed to many Bolsheviks, as we'll see in a moment. The extreme respect to the specific national and religious sensibilities of the Eastern peoples of Russia, especially the Muslim peoples. Um, this, of course, is in the same direction as self-determination. It gives guarantees to the previously oppressed nations that they will be equals and enjoy their autonomy to a certain extent in the new um, in the new uh, governmental system the third point and it is very uh, uh, fortunate that today we have a Brazilian comrade, Alain Klemesha, who will be speaking on Lenin and the Muslim peoples of the East, which probably will resonate with some of what I said about these peoples, although my um, area is, of course, much broader. The third point is that the foundation of the Soviet Union, uh, according to Lenin, had to rise on on an egalitarian basis. That is to say, 
the oppressor nation of the past, the great Russians, had to be on a par, on the same footing with the others. During the discussion in 1922, when the Soviet uh, Union, that is to say, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics was being founded, Stalin and many of his uh, people in the nationalities uh, commissariat um, came forward with the idea of all other national uh, Soviet unions, uh, units, sorry, uh, should join this uh, Russian Socialist Federation of Soviet Republics, which was established before. This meant that the Union would regard the old name, with the Russian, of course, remaining there, and these would be autonomous republics uh, uh, of that, of that uh, federation, together with, for instance, uh, some very small nation, national uh, units, such as, for instance, the Bashkordistan or uh, Dagestan, etc., etc. Uh, Lenin stood up against this and came up with the idea of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, uh, which meant that Russians were given no privilege at all in the new Union. And the fourth point is Karenizatsia, which can probably be, I mean, uh, I've spoken to Russian comrades, some Russian comrades about this. It can probably be translated as self-rule to a certain extent and, and uh, national self-administration to a certain extent. This meant that all the oppressed nations of the past now were um, responsible for taking care, were in charge of the um, areas which were left to the uh, federative units within the federal union. Now, um, there is also a third point is this, the very unique national character of the USSR. I have spoken about this before. The USSR is unique in modern history. It makes no reference to any nation at all, and even a geographic space, for instance, uh, like the United States of America. Of course, America became a nation afterwards, when uh, much after, sometime after it was uh, named as the United States of America. Um, here you have a nationless nation, as a nationless state, correct myself, nationless state for the first time in modern history, in this epoch of nation states. On the one hand, you have this, but on the other hand, you have the colonization approach and the revival of nations, etc., etc., within the units that harbor the oppressed nations. And why this contradiction? This precisely corresponds to Lenin's understanding that it's not formal equality, but real equality that matters among nations in order to have them pass over to classless society together. And in this case, it arrests the development of the formerly uh, dominant and oppressor nation, Russians, but gives an opportunity for the previously oppressed nations um, in the, under the new setup. My last point is this. This has a strategic um, extension on the international arena. This is the most important point. This is more important than anything I have said before. Before, what I said was Lenin's, con what I talked about was Lenin's conception of the question of nations in general. Then the um, reflection of this on Lenin's policy in the construction of the Soviet Union. But here we come to the international arena, which is the key for the future. And this is the last point I'm going to make. First, the Comintern internationalized the attitude of the Bolsheviks to the national question and made it a part of European uh, uh, Marxism. The second international parties were pro-imperialistic at the you know, um, extreme. They defended, some of, some of their uh, currents defended 
uh, imperialism because it was going to bring civilization and progress to primitive peoples. This changed totally, especially with point number eight under the 21 conditions. And uh, this way, we have a new um, uh, formation within the international sphere. Secondly, um, Lenin foresaw a unity between imperialist un anti-imperialist emancipation and social revolution, socialist revolution, one might say. He foresaw the peasant revolutions of the uh, 20th century under communist party administration. Thirdly, he had this strategic vision of socialism in one or several countries leading to a world socialist republic. This is in a very unsuspected document. Many people don't even realize this. The theses on the national and colonial question, which was passed as a resolution in the Second Congress of the Common Turn, in its items six to eight, this is what is really um, stipulated for the future. Every country which comes through a revolutionary um, shakeup under the uh, dictatorship of the proletariat should join the Soviet Union. The Federation is the way forward for all proletarian countries. And the fourth point is, that, as I said under uh, the second point here, it, the peasant revolutions would also, anti-imperialist uh, peasant country revolutions would also become socialist uh, revolutions in many cases, according to Lenin. The Sovietization of peasant countries also uh, really um, came under the same kind of attitude. Let me give you a glimpse of the 20th century if Lenin's program, if Lenin's strategic vision had been really uh, implemented. And this is my last point. If Stalin and Mao and Ho Chi Minh and Tito and all the others had been good disciples, loyal disciples of Lenin, what we would have would be a single country that extended from the uh, northern um, polar ocean all the way to the Mediterranean and, and, and from Central Europe in the West all the way to the Sea of Korea or the Sea of China, in South Sea China of China. And it would include, it would have included the largest territory the country with the largest territory in the world, the Soviet Union, and the country with the highest population in the world, China. How mighty would this have become, um, this country have become militarily? And what um, economies of scale and division of labor in, of course, a judici judicious manner would have given this country a great economic growth? And if you include the fact that Lenin considered peasant societies joining this uh, federation of socialist countries, then India might have come in, which would have extended it from not only the Mediterranean in the south, but to the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. Lenin would have considered, I think, these um, experiences of the 20th century as examples of national communism. His route, his road was totally different. Lenin then is the alternative for the future, the one not yet tried. Thank you. Now I would like to turn the um, moderation of the meeting over to comrade Savas. He will take over the second uh, session of guest speakers. The floor is yours, Savas. Thank you, Comrade Sungur. Okay. After uh, these introductory speeches, we move now to open speeches by guest speakers. And uh, we have first, uh, we, uh, we have still the 
link with a comrade Osvaldo Cogiola, who is a professor in Sao Paulo, Brazil, of, but is uh, coming from Argentina and from the whole history of the struggle of the Argentinian working class, of the struggle of the Brazilian and the Latin American uh, oppressed. The title of his presentation is From Lenin to Leninism. Salut, bonjour. Bonjour. So I will speak in French because uh, parce que ma maîtrise de l'anglais parlé est assez pénible. En ce sens, mm -hmm. je regrette, je vais parler lentement en français et je crois qu'il y aura une traduction soit pour les personnes qui nous assistent en ce moment, soit pour les enregistrements qui seront reproduits à travers YouTube. Bon, je vais me concentrer pour cette exposition qui s'appelle, qu'on a appelée à partir d'un article que j'ai rédigé, « De Lénine au léninisme » sur une question centrale. Cette question est la suivante. Que, a, que représente Lénine pour l'histoire de l'humanité et pour l'histoire de la lutte des classes sous le capitalisme so, uh... Ce que Lénine représente a été concentré dans une formule très simple usé par l'historien Eric Hobsbawm, un historien eh, anglais, euh, anglais d'adoption parce qu'il était né, il est puisqu'il était né en Égypte. Lénine a été l'homme avec le plus d'impact individuel sur l'histoire du XXe siècle. Si l'on considère XXe siècle pas seulement comme une catégorie chronologique mais comme une catégorie historique, on pourrait élargir la formulation d'Eric Hobsbawm en disant tout simplement que Lénine a été l'homme avec le plus grand impact individuel sur l'histoire contemporaine. Le fait d'avoir été les fondateurs l'Union soviétique. Camarade, ce sera très bien si je peux traduire un peu et, et, et vous pouvez continuer, on peut aller, disons, eh, phrase par phrase. Comrade said, uh, he will be speaking in French uh, because his uh, speaking, uh, his spoken English is uh, so, somewhat limited. Uh, and this is based on an article he penned uh, called From Lenin uh, to Leninism. And he started uh, by quoting uh, the British uh, historian Eric Hobsbawm, uh, who said uh, Lenin is the person with the most individual impact on the history of 20th century. And Comrade Kojola uh, expanded that by saying we can also say that, uh, in, in a sense, he's the uh, person with the most in, uh, individual impact on the Uh, about the uh, course of uh, modern history. Le fait d'avoir été le fondateur de l'Union soviétique et le rôle que l'Union soviétique a joué et sa projection historique continue à jouer sur le monde contemporain justifierait la qualification de Hobsbawm. Aucune. Uh, personnalité n'a eu l'impact que Lénine a eu sur l'histoire contemporaine. The fact that he was the founder of the Soviet Union and the uh, impact of the Soviet Union on the uh, course of history uh, will justify uh, Eric Hobsbawm's uh, verse. No, no other person had uh, the impact that Lenin had. Mais cette image est aussi trompeuse puisque Lénine n'a pas été seulement un leader national. Il l'a été, il a été un leader national. Mais l'action politique de Lénine n'avait un but national, avait un but mondial, international. Uh, but this image can, uh, can be somewhat uh, misleading, uh, 
uh, because uh, Lenin was not only a national leader. He indeed was a national leader, but uh, his uh, politics was not uh, only national, but also uh, in, uh, international, uh, global. On pourrait résumer en disant, Lenin est devenu, comme autre, autre historien l'a dit, le plus important homme d'État de l'histoire contemporaine, homme d'État national, puisqu'il a lutté au même temps contre l'État et contre la nation. As another historian said, uh, Lenin became the most important states, uh, statesman because he fought against uh, against the state itself. Dans ce sens, en termes marxistes, nous pourrions dire que les qualificatifs les plus appropriés pour Lenin, c'est qu'il a été dans l'histoire contemporaine les moments exemplaires et jusqu'aujourd'hui non dépassé de la transformation des idées révolutionnaires en force matérielle. Uh, in Marxist terms, uh, we can say that the biggest impact of uh, Lenin was that he uh, transformed uh, revolutionary ideas uh, into material change. En reprenant la formule de Marx dans ses thèses sur Feuerbach, c'est-à-dire les, les idées à travers les masses deviennent une force matérielle. To borrow uh, from uh, Marx's exp expression in, in th uh, thesis uh, on Feuerbach, Feuerbach, we can say that ideas uh, can become a material uh, force once uh, they, uh, are, they, they, they join um, uh, masses. Le but de l'action de Lénine en tant que révolutionnaire, je ne vais pas les exposer dans sa totalité, puisque ça serait absolument impossible dans une courte intervention, ont compris la question de l'organisation du Parti ouvrier, la question de la caractérisation de l'étape historique mondiale, c'est-à-dire l'étape de l'impérialisme, la caractérisation des tâches spécifiques de la révolution russe et des moyens à travers la révolution russe ne, pour, ne pourrait survivre que, sur, que comme premier échelon d'une révolution internationale, d'une révolution mondiale. I, I will not try to give a resume of uh, all the ideas of uh, Lenin, but we can talk about uh, uh, several things, including uh, the uh, construction of the working class party, uh, and then uh, the understanding of the current uh, current phase, which is imperialist phase, and then the tasks of, uh, of Russian revolution uh, as the beginning of a world revolution. Le Leninisme non pas en tant qu'adjectif, puisqu'il est absolument légitime de parler d'une théorie léniniste de l'organisation, d'une théorie léniniste de l'impérialisme. Le léninisme en tant que substantif, c'est-à-dire le léninisme, a été le produit d'un tout autre processus. Beyond Leninism as an adjective, because it is completely legitimate to talk about a Leninist theory of party, a Leninist uh, theory of imperialism, but uh, if we are talking about Leninism as the uh, world uh, it, itself, as a, as a, as a noun, uh, the conditions uh, leading to Leninism were, uh, were quite different. Les mots marxistes, comme on sait bien, a été inventé par les adversaires du marxisme, les adversaires du marxisme, les antécédents du soi-disant anarchisme ont inventé les mots marxisme pour défendre, pour attaquer ce, ce que considérait un socialisme autoritaire. C'est-à-dire, on disait que parce que Marx ne voulait pas abolir Tout de suite, l'État, il était un socialiste autoritaire. Et celui-là a été 
l'origine du terme marxisme, marxiste, au marxisme. The expression Marxism uh, was not coined by um, Marx itself, but uh, on the contrary by its adversaries, uh, particularly by uh, the presidents of uh, what we know right now as anarch anarchists, uh, because they considered, given that Marx uh, did, uh, did not foresee the immediate evolution uh, of the state, uh, so they uh, considered Marx as a form of uh, authoritarian socialism. Alors, le terme « léninisme » pas « léniniste » a été inventé aussi par ses adversaires, par ceux, par ceux qui voulaient contenir la révolution dans des frontières nationales et abolir les pouvoirs ouvriers en les substituant pour les pouvoirs bureaucratiques qui ont inventé les termes « léniniste » en tant que substantif. Du, du coup, ils, ils, vous avez dit qu'ils ont inventé léninisme et pas léninisme. C'est ça Les, les, les termes léninisme avec un M, mm -hmm. pas ouais, léniniste comme ouais, adjectif, ouais, que... ont été inventés par les adversaires ouais. de Lénine qui s'opposaient ouais. à la révolution mondiale et à l'exercice du pouvoir ouvrier. So not the not Leninist, but the uh, expression Leninism uh, as well was uh, coined by uh, its uh, adversaries, by those who wanted to uh, limit the revolution within national borders, by those who wanted to replace uh, working class power by uh, the power of uh, bureaucracy. Et c'est à cause des limitations de l'histoire et du langage que nous utilisons que nous avons dû nous, nous conformer à l'usage du terme des termes marxisme et léninisme. And due to uh, linguistic conventions and to history that we had to use uh, expressions uh, marxist uh, uh, marxism and uh, marxism. leninism. Yeah, marxism and then leninism. L'effet de, du corps de Lénine être jusqu'à aujourd'hui exposé dans le Kremlin comme si c'était une, une symbolisation physique, physique de la tentative de transformer Lénine non pas dans une théorie pour l'action révolutionnaire mais en un, un icône presque religieuse. Uh, Lenin's uh, mausoleum in, in uh, Kremlin, it is almost like a uh, physical expression, physical, uh, transfer, uh, expre physical expression of the transformation uh, of Lenin uh, from revolutionary theory to almost a religious object. Je ne vais pas m'étendre plus parce qu'on pourrait démontrer facilement que la tentative de créer une Léninisme, un léninisme qui soit un corps d'idées fermé, pas mutable, comme si c'était une théorie indépassable, qui aurait besoin d'interprètes privilégiés, est une idée absolument contraire au développement des idées révolutionnaires. Uh, we don't need much proof. Uh, I, I will not uh, dwell on that because we don't need much proof to uh, show how uh, le, uh, le, de, uh, le, le, uh, they uh, inter show le, uh, Leninism uh, as an idea that needed special uh, privileged uh, interpre uh, interpreters and as an uh, un uh, uh, as an idea impossible to uh, modify and impossible to surpass. Pour finir, je veux dire, une seule, je vais exposer une seule idée. Nous nous situons dans la continuité de Lénine. Nous nous situons dans la continuité de Lénine. To finish, I will just uh, talk about one idea. We are situating ourselves uh, within the continuity uh, of Lénine. Et face aux contradictions du monde capitaliste rendu aujourd'hui plus aigu que jamais dans le passé, 
and uh, in face of uh, of the contradictions of uh, capitalism uh, which are even uh, more uh, sharp uh, pronounced uh, right now than it ever was nous défendons trois idées fondamentales we defend uh, three fundamental ideas celle de la révolution internationale celle de la révolution mondiale that of world revolution international revolution la seule révolution possible contre le capitalisme il y en a pas d'autre which is the only possible revolution against capitalism there is no other way le deuxième les combats contre toutes les formes d'oppression the second uh, fight against all forms of oppression et c'est pourquoi la révolution contre le capitalisme est aussi une révolution permanente. This is why uh, the revo revolution against capitalism is also a permanent revolution. Il ne pas, il ne peut pas, il ne peut pas s'arrêter à un certain moment de son développement. It cannot uh, stop at, at, at a certain point of its development. La troisième. Pour réaliser la révolution, il faut un parti. The third uh, idea for a revolution, uh, we need a party. Ce qui ne veut pas dire défendre l'idée du parti unique. Which is not the same thing as uh, defending the idea of uh, only party, one sole party. Tant qu'il y aura un État, il y aura plusieurs partis. Ce n'est pas possible un État de parti unique, c'est l'État fasciste. Uh, as long as there is a state, there will be uh, multiple uh, parties. A single party state, uh, it's, it's not possible. C'est-à-dire, il faut un parti révolutionnaire et ce parti révolutionnaire, dans l'ère du capitalisme, ne peut pas être qu'un parti international. Uh, th this means that uh, we need a revolutionary party, and uh, under capitalism, this uh, party has to be an international party. La seule organisation internationale, ou le seul projet politique international qui défend ces trois idées à l'époque actuelle, the only organization uh, which defends these uh, three ideas uh, at the moment, c'est le projet politique qui nous devons réaliser de la quatrième internationale. And the, the political project that we should uh, realize, it is uh, the fourth international. Dans ce sens, nous ne défendons que Lénine et Trotsky étaient exactement la même chose. Uh, we, we, are, we are not uh, defending that Lenin and Trotsky were exactly the same thing. Mais ils combattaient chacun à sa manière, comme des milliers d'autres camarades pour les mêmes buts qui se résumaient dans les trois tâches qui sont encore non réalisées représentées aujourd'hui par les projets politiques de la quatrième internationale. But they were fighting uh, both in their own uh, own way and uh, together with thousands of uh, other com uh, comrades uh, for uh, for the same uh, goals which uh, uh, right now are. Uh, finding expression in the political project of Fourth International. Nous devons mettre cette idée dans les débats politiques international qui est nécessaire pour profiter de l'actuelle crise mondiale pour lutter pour que l'humanité la surmonte à travers une révolution prolétarienne internationale. We need to uh, put these ideas uh, into international uh, debates so that uh, humanity can uh, surpass its uh, crisis with an uh, international proletarian revolution. Merci, camarade, et j'attends avec impatience les autres interventions. Thank you, comrade, Thank you. and I'm looking forward to the other interventions. Thank you, comrade Osvaldo, for your contribution, which is very important. I will. Thank you also for the full text of your uh, uh, contribution, which will be published uh, as, oh, all, yes. as the other material from this conference, uh, both no, in three places. In Brazil, thanks to the effort of Comrade Osvaldo Cogiola. In, uh, 
in Turkey, in revolutionary Marxism, a selection of uh, uh, these presentations, as well as in Greek, in uh, our uh, in uh, the proceedings of this that we publish the proceedings in uh, our uh, in a book as well as in our newspaper Neoproptiki. Before giving the floor to and explain the video of comrade. Uh, um, the next speaker, who is Thomas Kraus. I want uh, to sh just to make a, a short, uh, a brief uh, announcement. A matter of fact, a denunciation. Today in Athens, there was a demonstration in solidarity to Palestine. And um, the, the march towards the Israeli embassy, the Zionist embassy in Athens, was attacked uh, by the police force and who uh, particularly they attacked with uh, chemicals uh, our comrades who participated in this demonstration in palestine it is known that uh, the greek uh, right-wing government as well as the european union and the, all the so-called uh, western capitalist countries are in solidarity with the genocide that the Palestinian people suffers. So uh, now the next speaker is a comrade and Professor Thomas Kraus, who, who will uh, send us a short uh, uh, brief uh, video with his contribution as a guest speaker to our uh, conference for Lenin. Comrades, uh, thank him. you for the invitation on your conference. Uh, let me read my short text because my English is very English, not too sophisticated. And um, the theme about Lenin is very important to me. Dear comrades, for us, Lenin's heritage is the voice of the living working class movement of the political and social awakening of the subordinated classes and the historical embodiment of their revolutionary will on a global scale. For the small and big nations, the practical, political, and economical alternative to capitalism, next to Marx and Engels, starts with Lenin. Lenin left to the workers of the world the revolutionary objectives and practical experiences with which they can defend themselves even today against the world of capital. But we live in a different world today. Uh, we know that the different layers of Soviet and East European bureaucracies, with the support of the global institution of capital, transformed the Soviet state property as potentially social property to private property. As people say, the new class stole the state property the same way as Trotsky predicted this possibility in 1936. How could he foresee that? Because socialism as a social system hadn't been realized in the USSR. What have we learned from our failed socialist experience? First of all, Lenin many times underlined that socialism cannot be introduced. After the socialist revolution, a whole historical period is needed to learn the practice and culture of direct democracy and self-governance, which is the main function of the mixed economy of the transitional period to socialism. Socialism is not a market economy. Socialism is the satisfaction of the needs 
of the individuals and their communities according to the work based on the abilities without the tutelage of capital and the state. Stalin and his comrades and the power elites of the post-Stalin period didn't understand the core of the socialist project. For them, socialism meant state power, which Lenin criticized so radically in his state and revolution. But Lenin presided his own three-step concept in state and revolution, in which socialism as a lower phase of communism is preceded by a transition a period, he couldn't foresee that the Russian Revolution would be left alone. As a result, theoretical socialism as a practical project has been cancelled and what has been realized was a kind of state socialism in its peculiarly Russian form and outcome which Lenin would have almost wanted to avoid. Thus, the theoretical considerations and the practical possibilities came into an inevitable conflict already on the second day of the October Revolution. After all, all great conflicts and contradictions were rooted in this fact in one way or another. Lenin was conscious of the fact that the Russian backwardness, the semi peripheral development, in which facilitated the course of the revolution, was very far from supporting the realization of socialism. The direct realization of socialism was transferred to the distant future, and concerns were made to the system of market economy. However, Lenin's life work remains to be of giant significance for the peoples of the world until the realization of socialism, since there has been no other relevant alternative to capitalism during the last centuries. However, the complicated history of state socialism is, uh, its experience shows us that even this form, there have been important social and cultural achievements for the subordinated classes in Eastern Europe and in the Soviet Union. The main lesson is still that these achievements can only be durable if the workers take the state property under their direct control through their own organizations. Lenin's socialism was aimed at changing, so changing society and politics as a whole, because he knew that any partial approach would imply the possibility of regression of restoration. He therefore didn't think highly of a policy that was devoid of the ideas of universal socialism. There is no green socialism no socialism of identity based on minorities, etc. Similarly, Lenin didn't believe in medieval socialism that was also reflected in his conception of anti-colonialism. He trusted only in a real anti-imperialist movement that looked ahead, that didn't uh, represent the premodern superstitious word, but the word of enlightenment, humanism, dialectical materialism with humans and its center, and the emancipation of the oppressed woman, man, and the oppressed class. However, we recognize that socialism, communism, that Lenin fought for, is only a historical opportunity against the genocidal world order of capitalism. Its realization depends first of all on the subordinated classes to whom we belong. Thank you very much for your attention.
Thank you, Comrade Thomas. I want to inform all the participants that Comrade Thomas Krauss is not only a militant and a professor in university in uh, Budapest, as well as uh, a leading member of the editorial board of the only Marxist journal in Hungary, Eshmelet, and uh, but also he is the author of what is considered as the best intellectual biography of Vladimir Ilyich Lenin, and uh, which uh, took uh, got the prize of the Isaac Deutscher Prize for this biography. Now, after the two speakers, uh, before going to the next uh, speakers, I we have to see a very brief but very dense film sent to us by a comrade uh, film director in Moscow and uh, he's a student of uh, Alexander Buzgalin and of uh, Ludmila Vlavka Buzgalina. His name is Viktor Tkachev and he sent uh, to us uh, two very short films. The first that we'll see now before the round of speakers from Russia has as a title, which means uh, what is leaderism, most in Greek. And then uh, only in 10 minutes, without uh, much, uh, just through pictures, you can, you will see the contrast between three well-known figures of the 20th century movement, Stalin, Mao Zedong, and the, the contrast between the two of them and the personality cult, as they call it, with Lenin. So what is leaderism through the contrast of three leading figures which marked the 20th century and not only until now. The film is only nine, 10 minutes, okay. Thank you. Thank you. 
великий русский писатель Гегель. А я ж чувствую, куда я приехала, и что наши вожди говорят. И они все-таки золотые слова говорят, и надо записать, и надо в голову взять. И дома приехать, что надо рассказать. И хочется так и сделать, как вожди говорят.
Uh, we saw this film. Now I have to give the floor for, to moderate the next the session to Comrade Sungur. The session has a title Lenin as leader of the Soviet Union and the comrades and friends from, so from the former Soviet Union from Moscow and the Leningrad will take the floor. Thank you very much. Um, comrades, uh, th uh, this is a very important session because these are the people, these are our intellectuals and leaders and uh, party leaders, etc., who are from the so former Soviet Union, who are now going to talk about Lenin. Be we have a small complication, and that is that is that um, our two speakers from the Soviet, former Soviet Union, Lyudmila Bulavka Buzgalina and Andrei Kolganov, will have to leave early. In this session, it was first Yosef Grigorovich Abomson who was going to speak, but now we ask his permission to give the floor first to our comrade Lyudmila and then to Andrei and then turn to the regular order of the session. Да, добрый день, уважаемые коллеги. У нас сейчас будет сессия, где будут выступать товарищи из бывшего Советского Союза. И первым по программе должен был выступать сейчас Иосиф Григорьевич Абрамсон. Вот, но поскольку еще двое коллег, это Людмила Булавка Бузгалина и Андрей Колганов, должны закончить пораньше, мы попросим Иосифа Григорьевича уступить им место, чтобы они сначала выступили, а потом уже речь перейдет к Иосифу Григорьевичу. Before we go on further, I would like to thank Lisa Barabanova for her um, contribution to this conference. She has graciously accepted to translate uh, Russian speakers who need translation into English. And she has herself also proposed, uh, and we thank her for this, to translate from Spanish into English as well. Uh, so uh, we thank her very heartily. Now I would like to turn the floor over to uh, our comrade Lyudmila Bulavka Buzgalina. Um, of course, before giving her the floor, I would also, along uh, our comrade Savas, uh, wish to mention um, mention uh, the uh, loss of our comrade Alexander Buzgalin, who contributed immensely to an international uh, communication between all countries and Russia. And uh, Andrei Kolganov, Kalganov, our uh, other speaker, will uh, to that as well, and of course Lyudmila as well. So uh, we remember all the contributions of uh, Sasha Buzgalin in this context once again. Uh, Kalganov, are you going to speak first? I mean, isn't it Lyudmila? Lyudmila. Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay. So the floor is yours, Lyudmila. The title is The New Man as the Creator of History, Lenin's View. Uh, Lyudmila contributes to the journal Alternativi. Uh, she's uh, one of the uh, promoters of the journal. And she is, um, she teaches at the Lomonosov, St Lomonosov State University of Moscow. Yes, Lyudmila, the floor is yours. Uh, to the technical person in charge, can we have Lyudmila on the stage? No? Um, let me check. At, apparently, uh, comrades, apparently Lyudmila is not here. Perhaps she had to leave early because it's because of this that we have changed the program. So I'll turn the floor. Людмила, ты вышла, что ли, из чата? 
Just a minute. Andre is talking with... Только, media, только они могут тебя Christian. включить. Я, я теперь, я тебя не вижу в чате. Andre, can you take over now? Uh, Sungur, uh, can you switch uh, on uh, Ludmila? The person in charge of the technical matters says she's not here. She's not on on the on the, on the line. She hasn't Lucia, entered. Lucia, ты каким-то образом вышла из green room чата, и поэтому они тебя включить не могут. She has to link, click on the link that was sent to her. Ты из Ютуба, перейди обратно туда, в, гри в Green Chat Room. Ты там есть? Ты там себя видишь? Слушай. Ты... Андрей. Would you please take over so that, you know, Yudmila could perhaps renew her page? What I'll do while they're talking is to read another poem by Nazem Hikmet because this is the land of the October Revolution that we are now going to hear from. And this poem by Nazem Hikmet is called The Winter Palace. So I pass on to the poem. In the Winter Palace, Kerensky, in Smolny, the Soviets and Lenin, and they on the streets. They know that he said, yesterday was too early, tomorrow too late. It's time now, today. And they said, we have understood. We know now. And never had they known what they knew with such marvelous perfection. Their look with their bayonets back from the front, with their trucks and machine guns, with their yearnings and aspirations and their sacred appetites, with their words that scatter round with the snow, they are marching to the winter palace. Of iron, coal and sugar, of and red copper and textiles, and of love and oppression and life, and of all the branches of industry, and of the small and great Russias and Belarus, and of the Caucasus, Siberia and Turkestan, and of the sad roads of the Volga, and of cities, the fate of all changed at one dawn, at one dawn, when from the side of darkness their snow-covered boots stepped on the marble staircases. This is Nazem Hikmet. Now I think we have to pass to uh, either Andre or Lyudmila if she's come in. Uh, Andre is still busy talking to Lyudmila. I th think we have to give the floor to our comrade um, Yosef if he is prepared. Could you ask Lisa the question? Yes, Yosef Abramso. Yes, Yosef, can I, uh, uh, Lisa, would you tell him to stop for a moment? So that I can introduce him. You are hearing me? You are yes, we do. Yeah, we do hear you. Just soon we will we'll give a little introduction. Okay. So, uh, I will speak Russian. Ah. Uh, if you hear me, it is... Uh, Comrade uh, Yosef, can you hear me? Would you stop for a moment? I would like to introduce you. 
Да, вот Сунгур сейчас просто немножко представит, да, вот сделать введение, и потом можно будет начинать презентацию. Хорошо. Окей. Okay. Йосиф Григорович Абрамсон is, is a person who has experienced from his childhood on almost the entire history of the Soviet Union. His wisdom will be of great importance for us when he is assessing Lenin from the inside, so to speak. Yosif Abramson is a member and the leader of the Russian Party of Communists. He's also an editor of the Communists of Leningrad, um, a publication that is um, a periodical that is published in uh, Leningrad and now called, of course, St. Petersburg. Um, I would like to turn the floor over to Yosef with great expectations. Thank you, Yosef, for being here. Yeah. I will speak in Russian and uh, to me will help comrade uh, Lisa Barabanov. Подготовка весь процесс Октябрьской революции явили собой превосходный пример марксистской диалектики. Yeah, the preparation and the whole process of the October Revolution is a great example of Marxist dialectics. Смена тактики мирного и вооруженного взятия власти mm -hmm. выдвижение mm -hmm. выдвижение mm -hmm. снятие и новое выдвижение лозунга вся власть советов mm -hmm. реализация недоступной догматическому марксизму меньшевиков идеи прорыва цепи империализма в ее самом слабом звене, когда отсталость царской России при наличии сильного пролетарского движения и его партии стала предпосылкой первой в мире социалистической революции. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, there were uh, a, a lot of factors that com contributed uh, to the victory of the revolution in Russia. Or, or, and uh, let me name them uh, in the order that Yosef Grigorovich has named them. Uh, this is the change of tactics uh, that the Bolshevik party implemented, the withdrawal and then the uh, for the proclamation of this slogan of all power to Soviets, uh, this slogan uh, was not used uh, like all the time uh, throughout the process of the revolution, but at some uh, time it was uh, taken back and then it was proclaimed once again, um, uh, which is a manifestation of uh, uh, dialectic and not dogmatic thinking. Uh, and uh, one other thing is this uh, understanding of um, of the role of Russia as the weakest link in the chain of the global imperialism, global system of countries, and uh, the understanding of the backwardness of Russia uh, as a potential. Yeah, all of these things, all of uh, um, uh, the understanding of all of these things, made it possible for the revolution to be victorious. Тактическое мастерство в ликвидации, снятии буржуазной власти временного правительства, начиная с сегодня еще рано. А послезавтра будет поздно. 
Yeah, we have to pay tribute as well to this tactical wisdom. Uh, when uh, at one time uh, it was announced that uh, tomorrow it will be too late, and yesterday it was too early. So this was this right moment uh, to take the power uh, to re to overthrow the provisional government. Снятие ликвидации буржуазной власти. Да, значит, продразверстка, гражданская война, Брестский мир и триумф по началу этой спорной идеи. Ленин – гениальный вождь, более того, идеолог Великой революции. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, there were some very controversial uh, events, yeah, such as Prodra uh, Vyorska, which is uh, withdrawal of uh, food from peasants uh, in order to fill the needs of uh, the army. Um, then uh, the civil war, uh, the, bre the Brest Peace Agreement, yeah, uh, these uh, events, these decisions were uh, looked at as something controversial, and at the same time, those decisions uh, were right in, if we judge from the historical perspective. И все принципиальные решения, принимавшиеся в ходе ее проведения, блестящие примеры практической диалектики. Mm -hmm. right. Such decisions, such decisions are great examples of what dialectic dialectics is as a practical tool. Поразительно, что никто иной, а именно Сталин, это убедительно показал в работе Октябрьский переворот, опубликованный в первую годовщину революции, в правде, 6 ноября 1918 на первой полосе. Mm -hmm. uh, on the 6 of, uh, of November 1918, uh, Stalin, it was Stalin who published an article in the Pravda newspaper that uh, the article was titled The October Revolution. And in this article, these uh, issues uh, are, are brought to light. Yeah. Он писал, всем движением руководил Владимир Ильич Ленин. Накануне он прибыл из конспиративной квартиры в Смольный. И, и в той же статье Сталин показал выдающуюся роль Льва Давыдовича Троцкого в той грандиозной эпопее. Партия должна знать, что переходом гарнизона на сторону восстания и умелой организацией работы военно-революционного комитета она обязана главным образом и в первую очередь товарищу Троцкому. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is um, uh, notable that in this article by Stalin, uh, the role of two leaders of the October Revolution are mentioned and explained. So uh, he writes in this article that uh, it was Vladimir Ilyich Lenin who directed the uprising, and it was Leon Trotsky who played a very big role in uh, turning uh, the army to the side of the revolution. This was this, um, uh, it was called the um, Military Revolutionary Committee, uh, which Trotsky led, and um, this committee played a key role in the victory of the uprising of uh, October the 25th. После великолепно 
проведенного главного акта Октябрьской революции, взятия большевиками власти, Ленина больше всего беспокоил вопрос ее удержания. Не только удержать власть в крестьянской стране, но и обеспечить создание основ социализма была призвана новая экономическая политика НЭП. Еще один яркий пример ленинской диалектики. Came into the agenda. Uh, it, this was the issue of holding this uh, power of maintaining uh, the uh, new uh, state and um, the policies, uh, such as the new economic policy, uh, which was adopted by uh, by the leadership, is another example of the use of dialectic. Прогноз о прорыве империалистической цепи в самом слабом ее звене оправдался. Но последовавшие затем восстания в Европе одно за другим терпели поражение. Ленин выдвигает в этой ситуации стратегическую задачу антиимпериалистического союза с национально-освободительным движением. Ленин – создатель и вождь коммунистического интернационала, реализовавшему в 30-е годы 20 -го века эту стратегию. Yeah, so the forecast uh, that Lenin made about the possibility to break the imperialist chain in its weakest link uh, became true. This chain was really broken, but uh, afterwards uh, uprisings, um, proletarian uprisings in uh, different European countries um, were suppressed one after another. And uh, at this point, uh, Lenin comes up with this idea of uh, a union with national liberation movements in um, uh, different countries, uh, which is uh, actually the idea of, uh, of an international. And uh, this idea uh, was also realized and uh, it was implemented uh, in the 30s. Согласно Марксу, смотри критика годской программы, после ухода с исторической сцены капитализма наступает эра бесклассового общества, коммунизм, с предварительной фазой социализм. В ходе этой длительно развивающейся фазы управление людьми постепенно уступает место управлению вещами и производственными технологическими процессами. Um, the capitalist system uh, is to be replaced by communism, but not at once. Uh, there is this transition phase, which is uh, titled as socialism. And in the course of this uh, long transition um, on, the global, on the global scale, uh, the, uh, the system where people are managed но не только Маркс, вряд ли и Ленин могли предположить, 
что сложится ситуация длительного сосуществования социализма в разных странах с различными национальными особенностями. Китай, Куба, Вьетнам, КНДР и сохраняющегося на мировой сцене капитализма или растерявшего колонии империализма. I believe that uh, not only Marx, but also Lenin uh, would be um, surprised uh, to see this long coexistence uh, of uh, different formats of socialism in different countries, such as Cuba, such as China, and uh, the capitalist system. The capitalist system are the imperialist countries that have lost their colonies, So this uh, long period of coexistence, co yeah, parallel existence of uh, different systems is something that uh, Marx and Lenin um, did not or, or could not foresee. Рухнул Советский Союз, не выдержавший бюрократически буржуазного перерождение правящей партии, руководство которой проигнорировало ленинские предупреждения о грозящих опасностях. Но революционное красное знамя продолжает реять над нашей планетой. Ruling uh, party, uh, the party that had ignored the uh, warnings of Lenin. Um, um, so so the, the Soviet Union, the system collapsed, um, and at the same time, the red flag, the red banner, is still there. It is still uh, waving in the air above our planet. Выстояла Куба, сохраняющая дух борьбы, владевший Фиделем и Раулем Кастро и их сверхгероическим сподвижником Эрнесто Че Геварой. И, и Куба, находясь буквально в подбрюшье главного в мире империализма США, берет на себя обязанности быть одним из центров международного коммунистического движения. Пример встреча Компартии в Гаване в 2022. И, конечно, влияние социалистической Кубы, несомненно, на невиданный по размаху левый поворот подавляющего большинства стран Кариба. Latinskay America. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Cuba uh, is a country which has resisted all this pressure and um, due to the legacy of Fidel and Raul Castro and Ernesto Che Guevara, uh, um, it uh, is still uh, there. It has preserved the, um, the traditions And uh, now it has this uh, special role. Um, it has some, we can say, obligations in front of the global socialist or communist movement. Uh, we can uh, remember uh, this recent, uh, recent Congress of the communist parties that took place in Cuba in 2022. And uh, we can see that uh, the Cuban um, leadership, the Cuban system, is affecting the left-wing parties in the region, in the Caribbean region, and uh, where we can witness a turn towards the left. Lisa, could you translate for me, please? Uh, mm -hmm. Comrade Yosef, it, yep. your time is almost up. Could you wind up? 
Last abzac. Два года уже мир живет без Советского Союза. Но высоко поднят красный кулак Китая, ставшего второй экономикой мира с потрясающими темпами ее роста. Китай, как и Вьетнам, стали мощными центрами притяжения трудящихся и левых политических сил стран Азии, Африки и островных стран Тихого и Индийского океанов. Идеи Ленина не ушли в прошлое. Они вдохновляли, вдохновляют сегодня в борьбе за социалистическое будущее. And uh, the, this country, China, uh, is uh, a big economic power, yeah. And uh, being such such an important uh, country, it uh, inspires the left wing forces across the region, yeah, the isles in the Pacific Ocean, and uh, other countries globally look at this example. And uh, this is another uh, kind of uh, fact that shows that the ideas of Lenin have not uh, become the best, yeah, have not uh, died, and uh, they are still topical and uh, keep attracting attention of, um, of the left. And of other people in the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa, as well. Uh, now, if um, apparently Comrade Lyudmila has still not connected, and therefore uh, we will now pass over to uh, David. Um, Andre has also. Um, some engagement apparently so if he is here with your permission we'll take him first is andre here thank you david for your understanding but apparently he's not here therefore it is also we... tatiana filimonova she also can speak of course she can speak i thought i thought you know uh, you can you, you you talked with her and are coming in first so could you could you come in later could you come in later yes there is also daria mitina's uh, video video so apparently andre is not here too with your permission uh, according to the uh, schedule that we have according to the program uh, the, the the the person who has the floor now is Daria Mitina from the OKP, that is to say, the United Communist Party. Um, Daria Mitina, our comrade from Moscow, is at this moment busy with a similar conference that is being held in Moscow, um, organized by the OKP, the United Communist Party, and the RKRP, which is the uh, Russian or Russia Communist uh, Workers Party. Uh, so um, we send our uh, salutation to them. To, we send our uh, regards uh, to their uh, conference as well. Uh, Daria, because she was not going to be able to be present personally at this uh, online conference, uh, sent us a video, which is what we will now be showing. Chers camarades, tout d'abord, permettez-moi vous saluer. Pour moi, il est insupportable de savoir que nous nous rencontrons aujourd'hui, nous nous rencontrons maintenant sans Alexandre Vladimirovich Bouzgalin. Habituellement, il s'appelait marxiste, mais il était léniniste en même temps, bien sûr. Cette année, 2024, 
est l'année du centième anniversaire de la mort de Vladimir Ilyich Lénin. En fait, tout le siècle passé depuis la victoire du Grand Octobre 1917 est passé sous le signe de Vladimir Ilyich Lénin et du léninisme, et en même temps dans une lutte acharnée contre eux par les forces de la réaction mondiale. Très souvent, ces commémorations sont destinées à éveiller la mémoire de certaines personnalités du passé qui, bien qu'elles aient laissé leur marque dans l'histoire, ont depuis longtemps perdu leur pertinence dans le présent. Un, un tel sort a touché de nombreux héros célèbres du, du, moment, du moment, les nobles tsaristes, les fonctionnaires, les dirigeants du parti de la Douma et même l'ensemble du cabinet de ministres du gouvernement provisoire de la Russie post-impériale, de nombreux contemporains de Vladimir Ilyich Lenin, mais pas lui-même. Après la retraite temporaire du système du socialisme dans le monde et la victoire du contre-révolutionnaire Octobre Noir 1993, dans la Russie elle-même, il n'y avait pas un seul jour que tous les régitons réactionnaires, des libéraux fondamentalistes, des emparés, aux néo-nazis purs et durs qui se joignaient à eux euh, sur la base de l'anticommunisme, n'essayaient pas de renverser l'héritage idéologique et politique de Lénine et de déraciner même toute mention de lui. De la toponymie des localités russes en son enterrement historique au cœur de la capitale russe. Sur la seule lutte ostentatoire avec la mausolée de Lénine de renommée mondiale au cours des 30 dernières années, des dizaines d'aventuriers euh, et des passants politiques ont fait et continuent de se faire des noms douteux. Dans le même temps, les œuvres de Lénine et Marx occupent toujours la première place dans le monde parmi la littérature traduite. En Russie, en 1991, il y avait environ euh, 7000 monuments à Lénine. Aujourd'hui, il, il en reste euh, presque 6000 environ. Le peuple russe n'a pas succombé à la vague folle de décommunisation que Eltsin et les Eltsinistes ont tenté d'initier. Les monuments ont été conservés dans presque toutes les villes capitales des régions de la Fédération de Russie, à l'exception de Grozny. À Grozny, Lénine a été démoli, euh, démoli au début des années 1900. 80. Dans la grande majorité des centres régionaux et dans les nombreuses petites villes et villages. À Moscou, il y a plus de 100 monuments qui ont été conservés. Euh, à Saint-Pétersbourg, plus de 50 monuments à Lénine. En 2020, euh, à l'initiative de l'OKP, le Parti communiste unifié de la Russie, de mon parti, euh, a été créé en détachement volant en mobile pour lutter contre la décommunisation. Nous avons réussi à protéger euh, plusieurs monuments de Lénine, Dzerzhinsky et d'autres révolutionnaires de, de la démolition dans plusieurs villes. Au cours des dernières années, plusieurs monuments à Lénine ont été construits grâce aux efforts du public de gauche, grâce aux communistes grâce aux socialistes, euh, surmontant la résistance des autorités. Mais il ne s'agit pas seulement de propagande monumentale. Dans la Russie actuelle, le pouvoir fait tout son possible pour rabaisser le rôle de Lénine, draper le mausolée, déformer l'histoire de la lutte léniniste, la dénigrer. On sait que le président Poutine répète régulièrement la thèse absolument fausse et anti-historique selon laquelle Lénine aurait posé une bombe sous la Russie 
posé une bombe sur la Russie, transformant ainsi le créateur en destructeur. Le correcteur, collecteur de terre, en ennemi de son intégrité. Euh, le détenteur du record en, costé, euh, en contesté, certes, plus en termes de dégradation et euh, d'extinction, est l'ancien Ukraine soviétique, ex-soviétique, qui s'est distingué dans le domaine de la décommunisation totale. Mais il serait naïf de penser que ce dernier est une exception aux règles. Euh, partout où le vecteur euh, du développement social suit la ligne de la négation de Lénine et du léninisme, partout les forces des, les plus réactionnaires prennent le dessus et triomphent des formes les plus arriérées euh, des relations sociales. En conséquence, même en quart de siècle après les répressions violentes du projet soviétique, aucune, aucune, les anciennes euh, républiques de l'URSS n'ont jamais atteint le niveau de développement de euh, 1991. Et c'est pourquoi plus l'impasse historique dans laquelle l'humanité s'est retrouvée face à la retraite du socialisme est évidente pour les contemporains, plus la campagne de dénigrement de l'image lumineuse de Vladimir Ilyich Lenin, un brillant scientifique matérialiste, euh, un révolutionnaire créateur exceptionnel, fondateur d'un État fondamentalement nouveau de majorité, sous la forme de la République socialiste fédérative soviétique de Russie. En ce qui concerne la Russie elle-même, euh, tout ce qui se passe aujourd'hui ici, c'est la stratification sociale sauvage, la domination de la bureaucratie corrompue, le mépris de toutes les bases démocratiques, y compris euh, les principes fédérés, etc., etc., etc. Tout cela est une conséquence directe d'apostasie tragique. Euh, C'est la conséquence du départ de notre pays du projet fondamental de Lénine et le démontage de la République socialiste fédérative so soviétique de Russie. En fait, ce sont les nombreuses bombes atomiques ou mines euh, les plus notoires qui ont été posées à la base de la fédération de Russie actuelle. Mais, par, euh, Vladimir, mais pas par Vladimir Ilyich Lenin et le projet soviétique. Et exactement ceux qui ont d'abord transformé la plus grande république de l'URSS en un appendice colonial du monde des prédateurs capitalistes. Et aujourd'hui, avec la même obstination maniaque, rêve, il rêve d'une troisième voie salvatrice spéciale euh, pour garder le bouton et rester dans la même campagne, euh, dans la même compagnie avec ces mêmes prédateurs, mais seulement sur un pied de l'égalité. Cependant, une telle voie est une impasse de, euh, est, une impasse est profondément hostile aux intérêts de la grande majorité, aux intérêts de la Russie du travail, le, de la Russie ouvrière. En rendant hommage à la mémoire du leader immortel et de l'enseignant de toute l'humanité ouvrière, nous sommes convaincus que le meilleur monument à Lénine, comme il y a 100 ans, en, et, 100 ans et maintenant, sera le travail de communiste pour populariser le patrimoine scientifique et pratique à multiples facettes de Lénine, qui est toujours pour nous une référence idéologique et politique éprouvée. Par un dogme, pas, pas un dogme, mais euh, une méthode scientifique efficace visant à la réorganisation révolutionnaire de la réalité, la construction d'une nouvelle réalité dont Vladimir Ilyich Lénine lui-même a providentiellement déclaré « Jamais le peuple dans lequel les travailleurs et les paysans ont appris, senti et vu qu'ils défendent leur pouvoir soviétique » Le pouvoir des travailleurs qui défendent la cause dont la victoire pour eux et leurs enfants permettra de profiter de tous les avantages de la culture, de toutes les créatures du travail humain. Euh, avec l'unionisme, nous allons gagner. Euh, merci beaucoup pour votre attention, chers camarades. 
We thank uh, Daria Mitina for her contribution. Uh, Daria Mitina, I forgot to add, is the first secretary of the Central Committee of the uh, OKP, the United Communist Party. Um, she is responsible for the international relations of the party. Uh, we also thank um, comrade Yosef Grigorovich uh, Abramov, Abramson uh, for his presentation. There's a lot of confusion about the, you know, to and fro of the speakers. That's why I did not do these thanks before. Uh, thank you, Comrade Abramson. Uh, now it's the turn, according to our program, of uh, Mikhail Borisevich Konashov, uh, who is a comrade of ours. We have been working with him together for years and years. He is um, a leading member of the Association Soviet Union, uh, which is not a political party, but is uh, doing, in my opinion, a very important uh, task uh, because it calls for the recreation of the Soviet Union, uh, and this is one of the fundamental uh, orientations that one has to take uh, in the former Soviet Union. Uh, Konashov is also the publisher of the uh, publication of this association, Soviet Union, called Soviet Renaissance, which is constantly, every two months, published uh, in Russian on uh, RedMed, our network. Uh, Mikhail, the floor is yours, comrade. If we, okay. Can we have, can we, uh, Mikhail, just one moment. Can we have Lisa if uh, she's connected? Yes. No, yes. I uh, but, so. but you're not I going so. to, you, you're going to speak in English. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, it, it's it's natural now that in Russian mass media, Lenin is described and evaluated mainly as a negative figure in the history of Russia as well all the whole world. It is also natural that Mr. Putin too evaluated regularly Lenin in the same way and have no one positive word of for Lenin. Let me cite the most demonstrative Putin's statements on Lenin. On January 21, <coughs> about 10 years ago, at a meeting of the Presidential Council for Science and Education, Putin said, I cite, the control of the flow of thought is the right thing. It is only necessary that this thought leads to the right results and not like Vladimir Ilyich. Otherwise, in the end, this thought led to the courts of the Soviet Union, that's what. There were a lot of faults like this, automatization and so on. They put an atomic bomb on the building called Russia and then it exploded. And we did not need a world revolution. Uh, two years ago, he had, I said, as a result of a Bolshevik policy, Soviet Ukraine rose, which today can be rightfully called the Ukraine named after Vladimir Ilyich Lenin. He is its a for and an architect. This is fully confirmed by archival documents, including Lenin's directives on Donbass, which was literally squeezed into Ukraine. Besides, Putin openly named the key purpose of his own policy. Let me say it again. Now, grateful descendants have demolished monuments to Lenin in Ukraine. They call this decommunization. Do you want to decommunize? Well, that's fine with us, but you don't have to stop halfway. We are ready to show you what real decommunization means for Ukraine. I can be seemed unnatural, sorry, it can be seemed unnatural, but some people named themselves Marxists 
criticized fervently Lenin and had found serious mistakes in his activity as a politician and a theorist, a thinker. For instance, one of relatively positive, positive articles devoted Lenin in our times was entitled Lenin's Fruitful Mistakes. Wherefore, of his article published in 1999 in so-called patriotic journal Nas Sovremenik, let's mean our contemporary, was Sergei Georgievich Karamorza, publicist, a forum works on the history of the Soviet Union, sociologist, political scientist, doctor of chemical sciences, professor, chief researcher at the Institute of so Social Political Studies of the Russian Academy of Science. According to Wikipedia, he is support of the so-called Soviet project or Red Project in <coughs> Russia. A representative of left-wing patriotic thought, a defender of the ideals of collectivism, traditional idiocratic society and rational thinking. In general, Karamurza has a positive attitude to the historical experience of the Soviet Union, criticizing Marxism from position close to Antonio Gramsci and populism. However, in, <clears throat> uh, in about 10 years ago, he published also an article in the Russian journal uh, Hope uh, for a Third Term, Putin's Plan, in which he stated that Vladimir Putin, despite a number of unresolved problems, I cite, has become a symbol a symbol of Russia and fulfilled the mission necessary to save the country. Because of this, he became one of historically significant politicians, worthy of memory and respect. However, such strange attitude is also natural or marginal in all sense, because this attitude is a natural that is an objective result of the destruction of the Soviet Union. The general or usual main reasons of the position are personal ambitions in connection with personal failure to reach any public recognition in Soviet times. However, many enough famous authors also state that Lenin was a politician, it was a revolutionist, but he was not a philosopher at all. So this is from my opinion, is a very wrong statement. Lenin surely was not a philosopher in a traditional or in a bourgeois understanding, but without any doubt, he was just an original and profound philosopher, and precisely Marxist philosopher, a disciple and follower of Marx. Why so? Because Marxism is not only philosophy or only political economy, or only the theory of revolution, and even not only the whole of these three main, its organic parts of theoretical or philosophical unity. Marxism is also, and first of all, the organic unity revolutionary thinking, including philosophical thinking with revolutionary practice. That is why Lenin is a true holistic, harmonious, and at the same time, contradictory embodiment of this unity of revolutionary theory and revolutionary practice. Unity, which is in constant process of revolutionary origin and development, its critical renewal. This revolutionary unity is not understood by critics of Lenin, including so-called Marxist critics of him. We need this unity, and we need such revolutionary Lenin just now and in near future. We need also a new revolutionary politician like Lenin with key Lenin traits. Let me call these traits now. He invariably kept his finger on the pulse of life, on the pulse of rapidly rushing and menacing stream of history, and in particular, on the pulse of the revolution, in some sense of uh, world revolution. He spoke to everyone in way language, both with peasants from distant province and with a worker from the Putio factory and with a refined intellectual. The goal of Lenin and the revolution 
that became his livestock was the liberation of a proletariat, all working people and all mankind. He dreamed of a revolution, predicted a revolution, prepared a revolution, and accomplished it together with those who, according to Marx, were supposed to accomplish it. All those who accomplished the revolution and here I want to give them who filed for evocation and destiny. Thus he saved Russia and guided it along the only path that only gave the country the possibility of, of existence, the possibility of a future and true and human future, the future of Russia or for Russia and for, for the whole world. This path is difficult and funny. But we must go through it. It would like to end with uh, my short speech with lines from the famous Vladimir Maikovsky poem titled Vladimir Ilyich Lenin. I said, Lenin is now more alive than all the living. Our banner strange and different. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mikhail. Um... Now uh, we are passing over to David Epstein. Um, David Epstein is an academic. He is a doctor in economics. He's professor at the St. Petersburg Federal. I am sorry. Now, uh, let me introduce David again. Um, David is an academic. He is a, a he's a doctor in economics and a professor at the St. Petersburg Federal Research Center of Russian Academy of Sciences. The title of his presentation is Understanding the New World and Acting. The floor is yours, David. Go ahead, please. Thank you very much, Sungur. Uh, let me first of all thank the organizers of this wonderful conference for making a presentation at it. This is a great honor for me. The topic of my report is to understand the new world and act. Remembering Lenin, we cannot but admire his purposefulness, determination and consistency. Having embarked on the path of the struggle against Tsarism already, at the university, and then having entered the highway of the revolutionary Marxism and the creation of the Revolutionary Party in 1895, Lenin never left his this path. Moreover, he was constantly developing the theory and tactics of the revolutionary struggle in Russia, the struggle for socialism, never losing sight of this goal. 100 years have passed since the death of, death of Vladimir Ilyich Lenin. The world has changed enormously since then. We would like to follow the basic ideas of Lenin, to correspond to, correspond to his transformative activities in the history of mankind. What was the main thing in his activities? In our opinion, this is the main thing. This is the greatest devotion in deeds and in thoughts to the advanced social idea, if you like the paradigm of our time. This is a humanistic idea of liberating the working class and all of humanity from exploitation, the idea of building a socially just society with the priority of the interest of workers. But if the world has changed in 100 years, it means that we must strive to create an equally substantiated theoretical picture of the new changed world, trying to further follow the humanistic and active transformative model of Lenin's activity. Due to the short time for the report, I will limit myself to only one but very important question. What is socialism today? Perhaps it is one of the most important problems that Lenin's followers must solve. Socialism can be understood on one hand as what existed in the Soviet Union without significant changes. This is the first variant. There is a second variant. The Soviet Union, 
but in a corrected democratic version with self-government of labor collectives and civil society, but without a market and commodity money relations, as Marx, Engels, Lenin, Kautsky, and many other Marxists assumed. Maybe also democratic socialism with a regulated market. This is a third variant. But it can also be understood as the movement of society towards greater social justice and solidarity without fixing any ideal models. This is a false variant. And between them, there may be several intermediate variants. It turns out, essentially, a whole continuum of variants what, what, what socialism is. Which one is correct? Scientific. That is what is socialism. Let's start with the question of the market. Today, in my opinion, it has been proven practically and theoretically that the idea of Marx and Engels about the destruction of the market and commodity money relations under socialism turned out to be wrong. I will try to explain this briefly. This is a difficult question even for many economists. The economy should produce mainly what the consumers, consumers needs, but consumers need a lot of products and in different quantities. But the degree of need, the severity of the need is different. If there is a market, the consumer focusing on prices and his budget chooses for himself what and in what quantity he needs. He compares first the importance for him of this type of product with others. Second, its price from different manufacturers with the price of other types of products and their substitutes. Third, the possibilities of his budget. As a result, the consumer chooses and buys exactly what he needs, taking into account the importance of a specific needs and other needs, actually paying for it with his own money. This determines the real demand for each type of product, its quality and its price, which balances supply and demand. Moreover, this ratio is flexible. It changes quickly, depending on the time of year, changes in production, the export and delivery of imported products, etc. If this market mechanism does not exist, then the state planning committee without a market and without commodity money relations must determine what needs to be produced and in what quantity, of what quality, and for each of the hundreds, thousands, thousands of enterprises and millions of types of products. But the state planning committee only has last year's data on production and sales and new wishes of enterprises that are ready to take more of everything and better quality, since they will receive the necessary budget from the state. Therefore, in the Soviet Union and other socialist countries, there have always been colossal shortages of many types of products. Many types of products had low quality, and there were constant queues for shortages. This is an ineradicable planning defect in the absence of a market when the choice is determined not by the real money of the real buyer, but by the management body. And this is fundamental defect of the absence of a market that cannot be corrected by any powerful computer or network of computers. Because without a market, there is no necessary information for effective planning. Similarly, in the field of planning scientific and technological progress, the state planning committee can only choose from new technologies, technologies already known to it and tested. And the task is to stimulate in the new period the creation and implementation of new technologies that are not yet known to the state planning committee. And finally, one more important, most important factor in the absence of the market and the prohibition on everyone who wants to be engaged in the entrepreneurship and production, only managers of enterprises and research institutes are included in the search for the most effective production options and new types of products and technologies. And if there is a market, millions more people are involved in the entrepreneurship 
in the search for effective options, creating new types of products and new methods of production. Therefore, a market economy can be efficient, efficient but with directive central playing in the absence of real market efficiency decreases. Each percent of growth costs more and more, and growth rates drop to very low and even negative. This was proven both by the practice of the Soviet Union and the world socialist system, and by the theory that studied the role of economic information generated by the market in optimizing economic development. In recent decades, there have been attempts to develop effective planning methods, algorithms that are based on repeated consultations of all possible participants in the economy with everyone, enterprises, producer unions, consumer unions, trade organizations, trade unions, political parties, and the state, etc. But so far, no convincing positive result has been obtained. And I doubt that it can be obtained if there is no market in the economy, market prices, freedom of choice for producers and consumers, etc. How does this affect our understanding of what socialism is? Our previous understanding was that socialism is the system that is required by the new emerging productive forces today. They already demanded in it under Marx 150 years ago. Socialism directly realizes public interest, that is, the interests of social justice, solidarity, freedom, development. This is directly realized sociality, directly realized sociality. In this way, it fundamentally differs from the existing capitalist system. But the capitalist system also realizes certain interests of society, the interest of economic development and growth, income growth, but it realizes them indirectly through the market. The market realizes some public interest, but in, incompletely it reproduces social inequality and social injustice, monopolism, long-term crisis, etc. But as we have found out, the direct implementation of social re requirements without a market is impossible. It leads to a loss of economic efficiency. Consequently, it is necessary to supplement, to supplement the indirect implementation of public interest with direct implementation, that is, public property in various forms and regulation of the market, private property, the entire system of economic relations and planning. On this path, we can achieve a combination of economic efficiency and social justice, creating conditions for the full and comprehensive development of every person in society. The concept seems attractive. In fact, we have come to the concept of new economic policy, which was first developed by Lenin as path to socialism. But where are the guarantees of victory and preservation of socialism today? And not the victory of capitalist, capitalist forces, because SNAP means class struggle. The only guarantee of victory is that in the end, it is beneficial to the majority of workers, and even more, it should be beneficial to the majority of entrepreneurs also, because the socialist state must take care of favorable conditions for entrepreneurs. But in order to implement such socialism, it is unconditional supporters. Its unconditional supporters must come to power. The party of parties of supporters of socialism must come to power. That is, it is necessary to mobilize, to mobilize the masses that attract them to the supporters of socialism. And in order to achieve this, an attractive theoretic example of socialism is needed. Members of these socialist parties must become tough, demanding supporters of consistent improvements in the direction of human and social development. Development that means the capability of nature and planet and implements the ideas of social justice, solidarity, freedom, and humanism, and they must lead the masses. Let me finish my report here. Thank you for your attention. I finished.
Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, you can hear me, right, right. Thank you very much, David. Uh, you grappled with very important and complicated problems, difficult problems. Thank you very much for this presentation. Now, uh, we are passing on to the v session called The View from Latin America. Before I turn over to Comrade Savas for the moderation for this session, I would like to read my last poem by Nazem Hikmet. Um, Yuri is here. Yuri is here. Yes, Yuri Shahin. I'm sorry. The session is not over. Um, there is Yuri. Yuri was uh, not able to come at the beginning, I think, but he's here now, or at least trying to connect. Let's see. Yuri uh, lives now, resides in uh, Crimea, in Sevastopol. Uh, he's a Ukrainian, uh, he was a Ukrainian citizen, but now residing in Crimea. And today they had a warning for um, military attack, and therefore uh, he uh, was taken by that. Apparently, there is a technical problem at this moment, uh, so let's let's wait a bit. I will, uh, since we're waiting for Yuri to be able to come in, let me read you another poem by Nazim. Um, which is on internationalism. I think it's one of the most important poems, but not very much noted even in Turkey. The title is There. Esteemed peoples of all races, I love you with respect and affection and merriness in my heart, neither superior to any other, nor inferior to any other, you sit on the throne of my heart, side by side. Esteemed people of all races and all motherlands, there is on this earth also a motherland for me above all others. Neither Turkey nor Russia, neither Japan nor Polynesia nor Azerbaijan, it is there where my first hopes blossomed. It is there my first dawn lit up. The passport I carry belongs there. Not made of paper. Its visa is carved on my heart. My heart carries its seal. There are my eyes and my eyebrows. There belongs the first new man of my century, Comrade Lenin, citizen of all my motherlands. This I was going to read before or after uh, Comrade Lyudmila spoke because uh, her topic was the new man, Lenin and uh, the new man in socialism. But unfortunately, um, things have obstructed her presence at our uh, meeting. Is uh, Yuri in now? I wonder. Apparently, Yuri is not able to connect either. We can give him the floor, I think, um, after the session on... After, sorry, there's a, there's a message. Let me see. Okay, um, we will give him the fl we will give him the floor after uh, the um, session that we are going to have now. As I said before, I give the floor to uh, Savas for the moderation. This is about Latin America, and therefore I, I want to read this just before the Latin American starts. Um, this is the famous picture of happiness uh, part passage 
short passage uh, from a very long poem on Cuba. Uh, actually, he wrote two on Cuba in 1961. He was in Cuba in summer 1961. You may remember that this was the time when socialism was declared to be the new regime of Cuba. Uh, so he was immensely happy to see all these festivities and these uh, demonstrations that these gigantic demonstrations that Cubans uh, used to have uh, for long, long years still have uh, in that country. So I'm reading this very brief passage uh, on, of the of the poem on one of the poems on Cuba. I returned from Cuba this morning on a square in Cuba. Six million people, white and black and yellow and mestizo, are planting a luminous seed, the seed of seeds, laughing and dancing. Can you paint the picture of happiness, Abidin? Abidin is the name of a painter who is his friend. So I start again. Can you paint the picture of happiness, Abidin? But without taking the easy way. Not the picture of an angelic mother nursing her rosy-cheeked baby, nor of apples on top of a white cloth, nor of a red fish darting through water bubbles in an aquarium. Can you paint the picture of happiness, Abidin? Now I turn the floor over to Savas for the moderation of the Latin American session. Okay. Thank you, Sangur. Before starting the view from Latin America on Lenin's legacy, allow me to introduce another very short, even shorter than the previous one, film again coming to us from Moscow, but the film director. Viktor Tkachev, they knew both him and the centenary of the October Revolution in 2017 in Moscow. Now this film called Pamyat, Memory, Mnimi, it is just in two minutes with the, only by the art of montage, it shows the memory of the Soviet past in contrast with the barbarity and the vulgarity of capitalist restoration under Yeltsin and following. Okay, let's see the film before starting the Latin America session.
the film of 2020. Now we can start the session with our comrades and friends from Latin America. Uh, the first speaker is Professor Luis Bernardo Murtinho Pericas from Brazil, well-known right. intellectual from Thank you very much. all over Latin America anyway, <laughs> and in the in beyond. And uh, the title of his uh, presentation, Connecting the First Marxist in Latin America to Lenin, is Caio Prado Jr., Lenin and the Soviet Union. Okay, Luis, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon. Um, I had planned to speak uh, today about Lenin's influence on the work of Caio Prado Jr., uh, the most important Brazilian Marxist historian, member of the Brazilian Communist Party, and author of classic works of contemporary historiography. Uh, after talking to our colleague, uh, Osvaldo Cogiola, however, we came to the conclusion that perhaps it would be more interesting for the audience uh, of this event to have a presentation on another important Latin American character, Che Guevara, and his relationship with uh, Lenin's works and ideas. So I'm going to make this change today. Still, I believe that my presentation uh, will maintain the same spirit of the seminar. Thus, I'll try briefly to point out some aspects of Lenin's influence on one of the most iconic uh, revolutionary leaders of our continent. Uh, in his book, The Development of Capitalism in Russia, and in other works, Lenin analyzed the formation of the internal market of Russia from the process of desegregation of small farmers into agricultural entrepreneurs and wage proletarians resulting in the stratification of the peasantry, a fundamental element for the composition of the nation's macroeconomic landscape in his time. Relations in rural areas, um, therefore, would be addressed in, his, in this pioneering work, which would discuss the tendency to concentrate production in the hands of a minority and the interdependence uh, with the industrial sector. At the same time that he examined examined the particularities of Tsarist Russia, however, he understood that the local space could not be dissociated with the quote-unquote world system and the tendencies and variables of monopoly capitalism in general, showing that his country was embedded in, uh, in the global economy from what he called quote-unquote semi-peripheral integration in which pre-capitalist forms are preserved as enclosures to ensure a subordinate role that served extrinsic corporate and financial interests in a singular center periphery relationship. In this sense, the question of the internal market would represent a problem also linked to the world economy, remembering that the accumulation and export of capital goods would be part of the same phenomenon that would tie the dependent nations to the capitalist center. Even if endogenous archaic forms were suppressed, traces of obsolete social configurations could therefore coexist with the modern system where different modalities of production or distinct historical structures would coexist, which would lead Russia to be a region characterized by overdetermined contradictions. The possible inheriting or discrepancies would certainly be able to be overcome in addition to a broad development achieved if a revolutionary process that ultimately led to socialism triumphed. Che Guevara held a similar view when it came to Cuba and Latin America more broadly. Thus, his efforts uh, to understand the advance of monopoly capitalism in Cuba during the first half of the 20th century the permanence of the chinchales, the productive infrastructure inherited from the previous administration, the insertion of the island in a larger picture of imperialism and its appendicular role in international terms. Essential here, as he himself pointed out, were political sovereignty and economic independence. 
Like Lenin, Guevara saw in the deepening of the nationalization of the sphere of production and the formation of consciousness uh, a fundamental elements for the advance of socialism. Voluntary work promoted by Che can be associated, associated to a large extent with the communist Saturdays encouraged by Lenin an attitude that would forge the character of the individual and could have favorable consequences in productivity. Socialism, emulation, and the factory is little, not to mention the role of the trade unions, a very important issue hotly debated by both leaders. All this, of course, was linked to the conception of the vanguard of professional revolutionaries and the further constructions of the new men. Both Lenin and Che embodied this ideal in their asceticism, abnegation, selflessness, theoretical concerns, and total dedication to the cause. After all, they did not undertake sterile academic conjectures, but actively, actively participated in political struggle, even occupying positions of great responsibility and prominence as high dignitaries within the state apparatus. As their main concern, the transition to socialism. On that point, Guevara, then Minister of Industries of Cuba, would consider that, quote, the sum of Lenin's work, uh, Lenin's works on the economy of the transitional period serves us as a very valuable introduction to the subject, unquote, even if Lenin wasn't able to develop and deepen the subject. A whole range of discussions along these lines would be addressed from the banking system to planning methods, the conduct and orientation of the labor sector, in turn, would be included in speeches and public presentations, such as the working class and this industrialization in Cuba, a televised conference on April 30th, 1964, the plan and man, a shorthand recorded conversations at the Minister, Ministry of Industries, communist labor, labor certificate at the CTCR in January 1964, a communist attitude toward work, at the Minister of Industry, August 15, 1964, and several others. Lenin's speeches on similar questions are also or numerous. After all, as Lenin pointed out in 1916, in a letter published only in 1929, quote, capitalism in general, and imperialism in particular, turned democracy into an illusion. Capitalism and imperialism cannot be overthrown with any democratic transformation no matter how ideal it may be, but only with an economic revolution. Capitalists cannot be defeated without seizing the banks, without abolishing private ownership of the means of production, unquote. It is worth remembering, however, that both were fully aware that in isolation, an experience of, an experience of radical and profound transformation within limited territorial frameworks would hardly survive. Lenin recalled that, uh, the unevenness of economic and political development, an absolute law of capitalism would make possible that victory of socialism first in a few countries, or even in a single country, would make possible, or, or even in a single country taken separately, and then, quote, the proletariat of that country, after expropriating the capitalists and organizing socialist production in its country, would rise against the rest of the world by drawing to its side the oppressed classes of other countries, unquote. In this, he said, quote, all nations will arrive at socialism. This is inevitable. But they, they will arrive in a way that, not, that is not absolutely identical. Each one of them will bring its own peculiarity, unquote. In other words, the importance of understanding at the same time the particularities and the universality inherited to the whole process. After all, Lenin was looking closely at the events in Germany and Hungary at the end of the war. The founding of the Comintern in 1919 in turn shows its con constant preoccupation with proletarian internationalism and dialogues with foreign militants such as the Indian Eman Roy would broaden his field of vision to national experiences and variegated societal formations. In a similar way, Che looked at this issue, the promotion of struggles in the third world, the creation of two, three many Vietnams, his operations in the Congo and Bolivia, 
clearly indicate the need for an expanded struggle in the weak links of capitalism, opening new fronts of combat and building the possibility for another rear guard for the Cuban revolution, which would go beyond Soviet support. After all, the USSR at the time advocated the policy of peaceful coexistence, something Guevara vehemently disagreed. If Lenin had promoted the construction of, communist, of the Communist International, the Argentine guerrilla fighter, in turn, would support initiatives such as the Tricontinental Conference and OLAS. Lenin was recurrently remembered by Che. In September 1961, for example, in an interview with Moritz Zeitlin, uh, che Guevara would say, quote, the value of Leninism is enormous, in the same sense that the work of a great biologist is valuable in relation to that of other biologists. Lenin is probably the leader who has made the greatest contribution to the theory of revolution. He has been able to apply Marxism at a given moment to the problems of the state and to come up with the laws of universal validity. Guevara, however, felt free to make the criticism he deemed necessary. And he would be harsh on some aspect of Lenin's ideas, even if his admiration and respect for him remained. On the one hand, he would assert that the state and revolution could be considered, quote, as the pocket Bible for revolutionaries. Lenin's last and most important theoretical work, in which the integral and orthodox, orthodox revolutionary appears. He was not able to fulfill some of the Marxist recipes in his country, and he had to make concessions that still weighed on the USSR today. But the time was not right for long-term concession, uh, long-term experiments. It was necessary to feed the people and organize defense against possible attacks. Faced with today's reality, the state and revolution is the clearest and most fruitful theoretical practical source of Marxist literature. On the other hand, however, Chair would say that in certain moments, two or even three Lenins would coexist. The Lenin uh, that was firm, determined, and resolute in his march towards a communist future that he envisioned, and the desperate pragmatists who tries to find a rational way out of the economic mess. In 1964, Chair would comment on what he saw as a crisis of theory. Um, um, for him, the theoretical crisis was uh, produced because the existence uh, of Marx was forgotten and because uh, they were basing their discussions only on part of Lenin's work. So according to Che, quote, the Lenin of the 1920s is only a small part of Lenin because Lenin lived many years and he studied a lot. It is a fact that there is a gulf between the Lenin of the state and revolution and the Lenin of imperialism in the highest stage of capitalism and the Lenin of the new economic policy. At the present time, the latter period is considered above all, admitting the tr the, as true things that which are theoretically not correct, which have been imposed by practice, which are still clothed in the practical profile and analyze theoretically, as all the problems of, problems of political economy of the transitional period." Unquote. In fact, the way in which the economic landscape, landscape, the planning mechanisms and industrial management of the USSR were configured in the 1960s bothered Guevara greatly and also how the Soviets looked back at the new economic policy. Che would be a harsh denouncer and critic of the new economic policy and the position of Lenin at the time of its implementation. In his Apuntes Criticos a la Economia Politica, Guevara would, in, in a polemical, daring, and almost heretical manner, accuse Lenin himself as the great culprit for what he called inconsistent pragmatism in all fields of the life in the, of the Soviet uh, socialist peoples and of the economic situation in which the Soviet Union found itself at that time, even though he insisted on his admiration uh, for Lenin. According to Guevara, if the Soviet Union continued with the reformist measures of that time, supposedly inspired by the political economic regression represented by the Nepian experience, 
it would gradually move towards a return to capitalism. And as history shown, has shown, uh, he was right. That's a very short uh, presentation, but I hope I was able to, to say a little bit about Che and, and Latin. Obrigado, Luis Bernardo. Thank you very much. Thank you very this, much. The dialectical reconstruction or the dialogue between Che and the Lenin. <laughs> thank you very much. That's thought provoking and <laughs> very. Thank you very much, Luis. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Then we can move to the our next speaker. Is also from Brazil. It is uh, Comrade Flo Menezes, who is a composer. Hello. Hello. A full professor in the Universidad Estadual Paulista, so Sao Paulo, and dependent Trotskyist militant, as well as an or the organizer of two or three important Trotsky conferences. The first uh, conference ever done in Cuba, and then two Trotsky uh, international conferences in uh, Brazil. Thank you very much, Flo. Your the comrade Flo Menezes will speak on Lenin's cultural internationalism. Thank you very much. You have the floor. Yes. Thank you for this invitation. I'm really honored to participate and make this small contribution. I, I took uh, part of the first uh, Trotsky event in Cuba. I was not the organizer. The organizer was Frank uh, Hernandez uh, from Cuba, but I was there as a participant. And I was a co-organizer of the events in Sao Paulo. Uh, my contribution is about art. I am a composer and a militant composer. And uh, and I have uh, written uh, a small text about uh, about Lenin and the art and the internationalism of Lenin, and I will read some sentence of this text. One of the striking democratic traits of Lenin's spirit is his notorious discretion in the arts. <clears throat> Unlike authoritarian personalities who immediately seek to impose their own conception on all fields of, of human activity, an authentic revolutionary leader will always know how to encourage freedom of artistic thought and creation. The coercions that many artists suffered under Zhdanov, a fact that led such impositions to be categorized as typical of Zhdanovism, in reality loosened it not with Zhdanov's death in August 48, but only with the disappearance of Stalin himself in March 53, which proves the above all Stalinist character of socialist realism, having generated one of the most embarrassing, embarrassing phases in the arts. Such was the low level of the works produced under the tutelage of the Soviet usurper who paradoxically used Leninism as one of the arguments for maintaining and the strength, strengthening his authoritarian power. As Anatoly Lunacharsky, People's Commissar for Education and Culture after the October Revolution rightly said, quotation, throughout his life, Lenin had very little time to devote to art. In this respect, he always confessed to begin uh, uh, to being a layman, and as he always considered dilettant dilettantism to be something odious, he didn't like to give opinions on art. Lenin declared that he could not speak seriously about those questions about art because he didn't consider himself to have the necessary competence. End of quotation. Art and culture. Art and culture should not be imposed by the revolution, and a revolutionary leader 
should not exert any coercion on the artist. Another quotation from Luna Charsky. Vladimir Ilyich never converted his aesthetic sympathies and antipathies into guiding ideas. End of quotation. There was a certain distinction between Lenin and Trotsky. While the former is characterized, as we have attested above, by a manifest restraint in the face of artistic issues, the latter seemed more involved, resourceful, and dedicated to these issues, possessing, it seemed, It's okay. You can continue, Flo. We cannot cannot hear you. The micro. No sound. You are muted or not? No. Γιατί κόβει και η φωνή του. Τα νότια εδώ. Τι μπορεί, ναι. Can you go out and join again us uh, with the okay? Please do it. Hello? Do you hear me now? Okay. Sorry for that. I think it's okay. Not... I can hear you. Thank you, Vlo. You can uh, okay, okay. continue. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Uh, it, uh, I, I lost the, the connection. <laughs> so there is a certain distinction between Lenin and Trotsky. While the former, Lenin, is characterized, as we have attested above, by a manifest restraint in the face of artist issues. The later Trotsky seemed more involved, resourceful, and dedicated to, the, to these issues, issues, possessing, it seems, a broader and more critical culture in relation, above, above all, to literary works. This distinction between Lenin and Trotsky seems indisputable to us, but the convergences are no less. In May 9, 24, in a, in a text about the, the party and the artist, Trotsky states, yes, we must deal with art as art and the literature as literature. In other works, as an entirely specific sector of human activity, we do, of course, have class criteria that also apply to the artistic field, but these class criteria 
must, in this case, be subjected to a kind of artist, artistic refraction. In other words, they must be adapted to the absolutely specific character of the sphere of activity to which we apply them. Close of, of uh, quotation. Uh, Rosa Luxemburg's great friend Clara Zetkin, in her Memories of Lenin, reproduce a statement by Lenin, quotation of Lenin, in a society based on private property, artists produce goods, goods for the market. They need buyers. Our revolution freed the artists from the yoke of such prosaic conditions. It made the Soviet state their defender and their client. Every artist, everyone who considers themselves as a, an artist, has the right to create freely according to their ideal, without depending on anything. End of quotation of Lenin. Lenin's instance was not without its contra contradictions. In the heat of the moment, he sometimes appealed to Lunacharsky to guide cultural production as propaganda for the revolution. In a text entitled The Organization of the Party and Party Literature, written on November 13 or 26, according to the calendar, Lenin even formulates that, quotation, publishing houses, stores, bookshops, and reading rooms, libraries, and other establishments must be party enterprises subject to its control, end of Lenin, quotation. A formulation that would fit like a glove in, in the iron grip of the Zdanovist Stalinist in their strict and authoritarian control of cultural production. But even here, Lenin recognized that the party's relationships with art could in no way be mechanical, a quotation of Lenin. It's indisputable that literature lends itself less than anything else to this mechanical equ equation, to leveling, to the domination of the majority of the minority. It's indisputable that it's absolutely necessary in this field to give a greater place to personal initiative, to individual inclin inclinations, to thought and imagination, to form and content. All this is indisputable, but all this only proves that the literary sector of the party's work cannot be identified mechanically with the other sectors of its work close of quotation. This is precisely what Trotsky refers to in his text, Party Politics in Art, part of Literature and Revolution, his important book published in 24. Quotation of Trotsky, Marxism offers several possibilities. It evaluates the development of new art, follows all its changes and variations through criticism, encourages progressive currents, but does no more than that art must blaze its own trail. The methods of Marxism are not the same as those of art." End of quotation. If propaganda is necessary, it's only revolutionary if it's controlled by revolutionaries. Otherwise, it becomes a, a little weapon for the revolution, revolution itself. In this sense, the defense of an anarchic condition or of artistic creation, absolutely free of all coercion, and consequently of all obligation in the face of a presumed and inescapable commitment to, to ideological propaganda itself, as Trotsky has had made a point of stating in the definitive wording of the manifesto of the International Federation, Federation of Independent uh, Revolutionary Artists, founded by him, Breton, and Diego Rivera in 38, is symptomatic. In the provisional draft written by Breton and Rivera, the statement that emphasizes this precept didn't exist, but it's included in the Finnish text and corrected by Trotsky. Quotation, if for the development of the material produce, productive forces, it's up to the revolution to erect a socialist regime with a centralized plan for intellectual creation, it must write for, from the East Art establish and ensure an anarchist regime of individual freedom." End of quotation. So, 
what is evident is the importance of not closing the doors to the creations of the past, coming out in defense of the cultural and historical legacy of all humanity, something that viscerally united once again the thought and the erudition of Lenin and Trotsky in stark opposition to the truculence and the ignorance of Stalin. It was in this sense that making an analogy with the use of officers from the old regime as members of the Red Army organized by Trotsky, Lenin stated in his 19 text, Success and Difficulties of Soviet Power, that the edifice of socialism should be built with the stones inherited from the bourgeoisie. Quotation of Lenin. When Comrade Trotsky recently told me that the number of officers in the army was in the ten of thousands, I have a concrete idea of what the secret of using our enemy is, how we must first force them who were our enemies to build communism, how, uh, how, how we must build communism with the bricks that the capitalists chose to use against us. No other bricks were given to us. And with these bricks, under the leadership of the proletariat, we must force the bourgeois experts to erect our building. This is the most difficult thing, but it's also the guarantee of success. End of quotation of Lenin. In the draft resolution of proletarian, on proletarian culture, whose, whose unfinished manuscript of October 9, 20, it was only published for the first time in 45, Lenin leaves no doubt when he states in his second point how he saw the issue. Quotation of Lenin, now, not, not the invention of, the, of a new proletarian culture, but the development of the best models, traditions, and the results of the existing culture for the point of view of the Marxist conception of the world and the con conditions of life and struggle of the proletariat at the time of its dictatorship. End of quotation of Lenin. Re resolution four of the text Proletarian Culture, dated October 9, 20, clearly states this, uh, another quotation of Lenin, Marxism gained its universal historical significance as the ideology of the revolutionary proletariat because it no, in no way rejected the most valuable achievements of the bourgeois epoch, but on the contrary assimilated and reformulated everything that was of value in more than 2,000 years of the development of human thought and culture. To end uh, my contribution, I would like to uh, point out the inter internationalist aspect of the Lenini, Lenini, Leninist or Leninian thought. Of all the Leninist conceptions of art, however, the one that is most striking up to date is the defense of internationalism. This aspect is relevant because, in addition to defending the entire legacy of humanity in the cultural field, it helps to clarify Lenin's position on nationalism in his very important polemic with Rosa Luxemburg. As is widely known, the debate around the national question came to a head when, in, the, in her Union's pamphlet, The Crisis of German Social Democracy, written between February and April 1915, uh, uh, April 15, and published just a year later in April 16, Rosa Luxemburg states as task five at the end of her text, text national interest serves only as a pretext, pretext for placing the working masses of the people under the domination of their mortal enemy, imperialism, end of quotation. She rightly identifies in that nationalist ideology, the essence of bourgeois ideology itself. At the same time, as it was in line, avant la lettre, with the Trotskyist conception that criticizes the isolation of socialism in a single country, a Stalinist theory that would serve as a, the, ba the basis for strengthening the Soviet bureaucracy, that is, within, within national borders, 
something that, as we know, would only become increasingly evident later on during the process of degeneration of the Soviet state in diametrically opposing Trotsky to, St to Stalin. It was also identified in an, in an anticipatory and premonitory way with the theory of perhaps utopian dissolution of the state as an instrument of power and social organization of the ruling class so well formulated by Lenin in the state and the revolution, concept, conceived a year after the publication of the Union's pamphlet that is between August and September 17, in, uh, on the eve of the October Revolution. On learning the uh, Union's pamphlet, Lenin was surprised by the content of the text, precisely with regard of, uh, to the Union's uh, pamphlet's opposition to the thesis of the self-determination of people. Lenin obviously relied on the progressive character and transitional strategy that was evident in the defense of anti-colonial anti struggles, supported by the history of evaluations of the struggles for independence in colonial countries since Marx and Engels. In a letter to Kautsky, dated February 7, 82, Friedrich, Friedrich Engels stated, quotation of Engels, in no case do we have the task of diver, diver, diverting the Poles to uh, their efforts to fight for the vital conditions of their future development of, uh, or of persuading them the na that national independence is a very secondary issue from, from the, an international point of view. On the contrary, independence is the basis of all common international action end of quotation of Engels. But Rosa Luxemburg didn't accept any conceptions, concessions, any concessions. Even with regard to the self-determination of peoples, Rosa was skeptical because behind the principle uh, there was, as a rule, a trail of bourgeois ideology that would certainly have a strong propensity to slow down the revolutionary movement and restrict national emancipation within the re regulatory frameworks of classist society. For Rosa, only a movement whose fundamental motto was revolutionary internationalism could carry out the radical communist project without losing its way and falling into a dramatic capitulation. Lenin opposed Rosa's positions, however, and not without reason from his point of view, to the fact that Marxist, this is a quotation of Lenin, Marxist di dialectics requires a correct analysis of each specific situation. Civil war against the bourgeoisie is also a form of class struggle. End of quotation. There is nothing more perverse and opposed to Marxist dialectics than dualistic thinking that wants to decree one side right and uh, uh, uh, when from their respective respect, uh, perspectives and points of view, both sides were right. In my opinion, both sides, Rosa and Lenin. And uh, if Lenin's position concerning local decisions, concrete assessment of each situation of struggle, it was precisely in the field of culture, in his open opposition to national cultures, that Lenin's radical internationalism is more than evident. For already in his critical notes on the national question of November 13, Lenin state, stated, quotation of Lenin, the slogan of national culture is bourgeois arrogance and often also ultra-reactionary and clerical. Our slogan is the international culture of democracy and the global workers' movement. However, wants to serve the proletariat, must unite the workers of all nations, invariably fighting against bourgeoisie nationalism, but his own and that of others. Whoever defends the slogan of national culture has no place among Marxists. His place is among the nationalist Philistines, end of quotation. And so from his discretion, in the face of artistic phenomena to his struggle for hardcore access to the mass, masses 
to the entire cultural legacy of humanity, including his uncompromising defense of creative freedom, the transcendence of great genius works of art, such as the defense by Lenin of Tolstoy, the assimilation and study of the bourgeois, bourgeois, bourgeois cultural heritage and cultural internationalism, we can glimpse the integrity of genu, genu, genuinely Leninist thought. I, I, I hope I, I was clear, although my English pronunciation is not so good, but no. that was really push. You no, know, it was excellent, obrigado Flo, for your thoughtful presentation. And, uh, Thank you very much, Tavos. Because uh, this year is not only the centenary of Lenin, it's the centenary of surrealism as well, and the centenary of Kafka. So it was great yeah. to have you with us in this uh, conference for uh, the Lenin. Thank you very much. Okay. Travou aqui, amor. Justo no final. Uh, there is obviously a problem with the connection of the Greek comrades of... of there is obviously a problem of connection for, for Savas, comrade Savas. So we'll have to continue without him until he uh, his problem is solved. Uh, I think if after Flo, uh, just one second, please. We are supposed to have Alain Clemesha of Brazil. Lenin and the Muslim peoples of the East. I wonder if uh, Alain is here. Edgardo, then uh, is Edgardo here? I'm here. Oh, very good afternoon, Sungor and all all the comrades. Are you are you listening well? We are hearing you very well. Uh, what what language are you going to use, Edgardo? I, I'm talking. I'm going to talk in English. In English, very good, very good. Um, may I may I just you know introduce you? Um, Edgardo is a very important intellectual in from Brazil. Uh, his title is Lenin's Other Testament. Is that right? Is that right? Yes. Go ahead, Edgardo. Okay. Um, First, first of all, uh, I would like to thank you for this invitation to participate in such an important event. Uh, in view of the of the short time of of our intervention, what we propose here is just to draw attention to a question that I consider of great strategic uh, importance and also of great relevance for the challenges uh, facing the international work, working class nowadays in a scenario of profound decomposition of the dying capitalism and for the task that this brings along for all of us. Uh, as you know, Lenin, in the final phase of his life, already severely affected by illness, wrote between December of 1922 and the first weeks of 23, the letter to the Congress of the Russian Communist Party known as his testament, and a series of associated documents which went down in history as his political testament. Lenin intended to initiate a struggle to change the party regime. These documents constituted a critique of the state of the Soviet government and warned about the series of dangers that threatened 
the revolution, about the danger of bureaucratization and the role of Stalin in it. Uh, the text, as we know, was not published and anyone who distribu distributed it was accused of being a counter-revolutionary and an enemy of the revolution. Now, in that same historical, historical context, a month before dictating his testament in November 22, uh, Lenin delivered his last, last speech before the Communist International, where he has addressed the issues he considered a priority at that particular gender, uh, issues that are directly related to the, to the content of the political testament. In his speech, Lenin made a balance of the conquest in the five years of the October, October Revolution and touched uh, on two main issues. Most of his speech was concerned with the problems and difficulties of the new economic policy and the state of the Soviet society. But at the end of the speech, in his last word to the four Congress, he referred to the perspectives of the international revolution. In that final part, Lenin concentra concentrated his considerations on a critical questioning of the resolution adopted by the Third Congress of the International on the structure, methods, and action of the Communist parties. The re this resolution had the defect, he said, of being too long so that foreigners would not be able to assimilate all its contents. Another problem was that it was too Russian, was completely imbued by the Russian spirit, what was its greatest virtue, and at the same time, its greatest defect. Thirdly, said Lenin, even if, if foreigners could understand it, they will have no condition to apply it. The conclusion for him was that had been made a great mis mistake with the resolution. In Lenin's own words, we have blocked, blocked with it our, our own road to success. What is un unique in Lenin's assessment is that he also said that the resolution is excellent and that I am ready to subscribe it each of his points. The document, indeed, is a very tablet treatise on revol revolutionary political structuring. Its 59 theses constitute an attempt to transmit in an exhaustive and detailed manner the experience of the Bolshevik party and its methods. The problem with the resolution, Lenny said, is that we have not learned to present our Russian experience to foreigners which can be interpreted in truth as two problems, that foreigners will have difficulties assimilating the Bolshevik experience in those terms, but also the problem that the Russians themselves will not be able to transmit their own experience, the lessons of the October victory. Lenin's answer to this problem is in a sense enigmatic. For his answer is that these problems does, must be solved through study. Study and study in a special way. Study from scratch. Where it, where it resounds clearly the fam famous quote note written in Lenin philosophical notebooks, notebooks about the fact that it is impossible to understand Marx's capital without having thoroughly studied, understood, the whole of Hegel's logic. Uh, and because of that, none of the Marxists uh, under, understood Marx, said Lenin. Ren returning to the speech in Lenin's own words, re the resolution must be carried out, carried out, but also the resolution is unintelligible for foreigners who cannot content themselves with hanging in it in a corner like an icon and praying to it. Nothing will be achieved that way. 
they must assimilate part of the Russian experience. I don't know how well they will do it. A point of immediate importance in that context was the more general question of the prospect of the world revolution. Lenin point out, points out that the Bolsheviks and he himself have committed a lot of foolishness since the October victory. But he also analyzes the moves of the capitalist powers and say that the, the, it is no exaggeration to say that these blunders are, are nothing besi beside those made by the capitalist powers and the second social democratic international. He specifically cites the Treaty of Versailles and his conclu conclusion is that the, the perspectives of, of the world revolution are, fa are favorable and that if certain, certain conditions were fulfilled, they will be even better. Of course, Lenin implicitly is alluding to the German revolution, which is open. It is in, on this terrain of the perspectives of the world revolution that the issue of the assimilation of the Bolshevik experience and the critical questioning of the revolution adopted at the third congress is placed in retrospect we can say in light in the light of the of lenin remarks that if lenin and trotsky conceived the socialist character of, of the russian revolution as as a link of the coming international revolution the correct and historical balance of the failure of the German October following this Lenin orientation <clears throat> can only achieve through, through un, an evaluation of the degree of the assimilation of the Bolshevik experience in the politics of the German communist, including the degree of under understanding of the nature of the Bolshevik experience on the part of the leadership of the Communist International. Among the various interpretation of the failure of the German uh, revolution, there are not a few which affirm that in reality, the objective, objective conditions for such a re revolution were not given in 23. And this will have been the cause in the end of its failure. But, but Lenin orientation suggests otherwise, that which at first sight appears as difficult as the, uh, to comprehend in Lenin reservation on the resolutions of the Third con Congress is revealed uh, as a deci decisive factor in the balance of both events, both the victory of the Ru Russian Revolution and the defeat of the German Revolution the problem of the revolutionary leadership, the dynamic relation between the actions of the masses, party and leadership, and a strategic le lesson that was obscure, not only, only about the German, German revolution fate, but for the future inter international revolutionary, revolutionary movement. Lenin's call to the, to the Communist International, International had a misfortune because a year later, after the failure of the German October, <coughs> the Communist International promoted the so-called Bolshevization of the Communist parties at the behest of Sinoviev and Kuusinen. Notably, these two were the responsible for the drafting under Lenin's supervision, Sinoviev of the 21 conditions for the in entry into, into the international, and Kusinen of the testings of the structure and methods of 21. The intervention on the communist parties parties consecrated in the fifth Congress of the International in 24 on the basis of the thesis of Bolshevization had precisely the objective of covering up the responsibilities of the executive, executive of the Communist International in the German failure, and at the same time to make responsible the non-aligned fraction 
critical of this leadership within the German Communist Party. Bolshevization with its apology of monolithism prevented the political balance of the German Revolution, paralyzed the political development of the Communist Party, and consolidated the rise of the ascendant bureaucracy in, Soviet, in the Soviet Union, opening the road for the later Stalinization and the subordination of the Communist International to the interest of the bureaucratic case in the USSR. In other words, the exact, the exact opposite course to Lenin warnings, warnings, both in the destiny of the Soviet Russia, Russia and in the field of the international. This process had among its most serious consequences the blockage of that which Lenin warned, warned as an essential challenge, namely the adequate assimilation of the political, political, organizational, and methodological experience of the October Revolution as a decisive factor for the perspective of the World Revolution. The great question which presents for us and which is at stake in this warning of Lenin can be synthesized in this. How does a true revolutionary leadership develop historically? What are the paths and methods so that from the historical movement of the working class emerge the men and women who will carry its struggle to the end, to victory? How does it forge a leadership capa capable of responding victoriously to the violent turns that characterize revolutionary situation? How does it is develop the capacity to reach the synthesis in practice of, of historical necessity and contingency that characterizes each particular revolutionary situation? In this last scene at the, at the stage of the Fourth Congress of the International Communist, at the end of Lenin political life, what we have is an, in, an inviolable methodological orientation on the structuring and political development of the working class. His legacy, Lenin said to us, should not be understood as, a, as an universal solution, but, but as the rigorous formulation of a problem a call launched to the world working class to assume a critical task to be faced in a renewed way in each historical circumstance. Lenin's defini definitive contribution is to have revealed that the process of constitution of the working class as a conscious subject of the revolution, that is, its structuring as a political party for the conquest of power is in thus indissolubly linked in its form, forms and dynamics to the development of a political leadership forged in the dialectical relationship between revolutionary practice and, theor and theoretical understanding and adjustment. A relationship that must, does, must be founded on the systematic assimilation of the entire historical experience of the struggle of the exploited. The contemporary challenge of building revolutionary worker parties around the world and the world party of revolution demands a profound effort of study and reevaluation of the legacy of, of October and a broad deliberation and implementation of it among the masses. The condition for future victories, Lenin tells us, requires a dis decisive, unavoidable, and anti-dogmatic special study, a study from scratch of the Bolshevik experience and the manifold lessons left by the great, by the great leader of the contemporary proletarian revolution. Thank you.
You're mute, muted, Salas. Estabas. Okay, okay. Obrigado. Thank you very much for your presentation, Edgardo. Very thought provoking and also very inspiring how to approach Lenin's legacy, not as a dogma, but in the way that Lenin himself teach us how to see it in a dialectical way and not in the, and Lenin, I mean, he's a, intervention in the Communist International that you just mentioned as the other testament by Lenin is very, very important because even including to anti-Stalinist uh, circles and Trotskys, etc., there is a confusion between Zinovievite, Russo-centric, so-called Bolshevization, and the real legacy of Lenin that we have not to copy Lenin always was against Russocentrism. This was his enormous contribution, the opening of the, to the world, real internationalism, both in action and in theory. So thank you very much. And do we please send us your paper for publication, okay? Yes, of course. Very, thank you very much and to continue this very important uh, discussion. So, sorry for the different problems. I don't know if Arlene Klemesha is connected or uh, there is still a problem. Arlene is here or no? So, uh, I have just to move. Frank Garcia Hernandez from the Comunistas of Cuba. Frank, oh, no. thank you. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Nice fine, to meet you fine. again, fine. even very from well. far away. Very well. Very okay. Well. How are you, Sabbath? How okay. are you? <laughs> <laughs> My greetings to you and to Claudia. <laughs> thank okay, you we have, we have no much time. Please be presenting your. Uh, Try to summarize your uh, in very interesting um, uh, contribution. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Can I begin? Yes, I understand. Well, um, for me, I I guess the more important uh, the more important celebrator or gift to Lenin in this anniversary is uh, give a, a proposition of, bill, of the construction of a new Communist Party in Cuba. Why is necessary build the new Communist Party in Cuba? I will read 10 Marx's reason, try uh, argument about this. First reason, the leadership of the Communist Party in, of Cuba has accelerated the process, the process of capitalist restoration. The recent economic measures taken by the Cuban bureaucracy, which directly affect the working class, price hikes in public transport, gas, and state subsidized food, together with the expansion of the bourgeoisie, grow which is encouraged by the government showed that the leadership of the Communist Party of Cuba has accelerated capitalist restoration, no matter what the pace of the package against the worker class. To restore capitalism, that is to dismantle the workers' state, is essential to suppress as many of the gains won for the working class as possible. From the Cuban ruling bureaucracy, the working class can only expect more economic cuts, cuts, suppression of subsidies, and reparation against all kinds of dissents. The Cuban Ministry of Economy announced monthly the growth of, of the new bourgeoisie, that is, the social class that owns the means of production, which, in order to put them in motion, by the labor force from the working class and thus generate surplus value, which the bourgeoisie appropriated. 
Last December, the Ministry of Economy proudly announced that there were more than 8,900 private enterprises. 8,900 private enterprises. The growth of the new Cuban bourgeoisie has researched the point that the number of workers the, uh, the growth of the new Cuban bourgeoisie has researched the point that the number of workers hired in the private sector exceeds the number of the state worker. Unlike Lenin, who presented the new economic policy as a political step back war which had to be applied pro provisionally, the Communist Party of Cuba proposed the expansion of the of the private sector as the policy to be followed. An example of this is that the Cuban president in his tour abroad met with private entrepreneurs to buy them to do business with the Cuban private sector and his tour to the province to the province he met with the bourgeoisie which euphemistically they have called micro and medium enterprise. The second reason to build a new, to build a new communist party in Cuba is by leading a process of capitalist restoration, the Cuban bureaucracy has taken on a, on a counter-revolutionary character. A government that dismantled the remains of the worker state, no matter what methodology it applied, whatever if it's the way of Boris Yeltsin or Deng Xiaoping way, is a government that is in favor of new bourgeoisie taking power. Therefore, it's a counter-revolutionary government to implant a pro-capitalist economic project in which a bureaucracy that supports the bourgeoisie is enthroned in power is not only a counter-revolutionary fact, but can only be carried out by a counter-revolutionary government. Third point, a communist party that leads the capitalist restoration is only nominally communist. Trader, a party, even if it continues to call itself communist, which leads the capitalist restoration, goes against the interests of the right of the working class and the reason the of the reason that of a communist organization is to fight for the interests of the worker class against the bourgeoisie or any form of oppression how can a communist organization then fight for the growth of the bourgeoisie at the cost of dismantling a worker state in order to move to war capitalism whatever model it is Evidently, even if it's called itself communist, any party that lead the capitalist restoration is a counter-revolutionary party. Four, the absence of socialist democracy in Cuba and within the so-called communist party also provoked the construction of a new Marxist organization. The political system in which the, the working class controls the decision of the ruling bureaucracy, applying the policies dedicated by the working class and not by a clique that hold the government and the party socialist democracy doesn't not exist in Cuba. The president of the Republic is nominated by a, by a nomination commission, which bring only one candidate to parliament, a Congress with always vote unimus, unanimously for all the law for, of the executive. For its part, internally, the Communist Party, Party also functions is in a manner contrary to the social demo, socialist democracy. The delegates of the Communist Party Congress are chosen by the ruling bureaucracy and not from the rank and file. Resolution are passed without any dissenting vote, and it is the same bureaucracy that appoints the leaders of the party. Unions. The unions 
are completely co-opted by the government. There is no right to organize at autonomous unions. Any attempt at public demonstration against the government is immediately repressed. Even if it's just one person in a park in the interior of the country, journalists from the privately owned digital media who try to break censorship are widely repressed. Some even forces to leave the country. The distribution of any political propaganda, even socialists that criticize the government, is punishable by the law. In fact, the construction of a new Communist Party in Cuba will be carried out under the strict security and underground situation. Five, the Cuban ruling bureaucracy is unreformable. The Cuban ruling bureaucracy will never dismantle the advance of the private economic sector because it will affect its own political interest. And for many bureaucrats, it's, it will also imply a strong shock for the personal economy. Many Cubans leaders own private business using front men, putting the business in someone else's name or they benefit from private business owned by close relatives who receive generous aid in different areas. The Cuban bureaucracy will also not renounce its self-granted pairs and will defend its interests above, above the interests of the popular majority. The Cuban ruling bureaucracy is politically unable to voluntarily return to the construction of socialism. Their interests go against true socialism, since in this, in this the working class will control political and economic decision, which is why one way or another the current bureaucracy will see their power considerably redu reduced or will end up losing the political past. Six. In order to restart the construction of socialism in Cuba, a new revolution of the socialist nature is needed. Because the current Cuban ruling bureaucracy is leading the capitalist restoration, becoming a counter-revolutionary bureaucracy, and will never renounce the current process, it has become an unreformable bureaucracy. Only a revolution can overthrow it. However, for it to be revolution that lead to the construction of socialism, it can be it can only be guided by the new Communist Party. Otherwise, the revolution can end up being only a popular re rebellion that ends in another path of capitalist re restoration, as took place in Poland or Romania in 1989. Seven. In order to list a socialist revolution, it's necessary that say process by led by a communist party. Without a communist party, a new communist party to lead the construction of socialism, socialism cannot even begin. The different path of non-Marxist socialism, whatever they may be, have ended and will always end orienting themselves to capitalism led by a nationalism or reformism that goes so far as to repress the working class on which it built, by, built its political foundation. The different variants of social reformism, even if they have come to the power support by mass movement and with the direct intervention of the worker class, working class reach the point where they decide not go to beyond the reformist program. Socialism then happens of, as an, an obstacle to their interest, and they end up repressing any attempt of radicalization. Therefore, the Cuban Socialist Democratic Organization, in the case of leading a revolution, even if they were to radicalize, will, will end up trying to make a pact with the bourgeoisie that should revive the revolution and therefore will begin another restorationist process. Or simple, the, they, will, they will only redirect the one culprit applied by the ruling bureaucracy. 
eight, a new Cuban Communist Party can prevent widespread discount and an eventual popular rebellion from being from being controlled by the pro-imperialist counter-revolutionary. Unfortunately, among the early sectors of Cuban youth, the idea is growing that the way out of the current crisis is capitalism. This is something that the pro-American pro uh, counter-revolutionary know perfectly well, which has been organized for decades and has the financial support of the United States, as well as private anti-communist media. The press outlets, illegally and only existing digitally, suffer at the same time from the open persecution of their journalists and collaborators, who are often very far from being anti-communist, but the economic crisis drives them to work with, with them due to the relatively good salary. Jobs which, since unfictional media outlets are prohibited, are completely in a situation of job insecurity. To do this must be added the strong propaganda of the right-wing exile on social networks, which now hold uh, how they use the growing popular discontent very well. The reaction of the Cuban government is generally cited repression and detailed censorship. In this way, counter-revolutionary organizations have not infrequently managed to penetrate some popular sectors. In fact, all the workers' demand protests that have broken out in Cuba since July 11, 2021, are supported by the pro Yankee counter-revolution, which present this demonstration in part as a product of its political work. However, no pro Yankee counter-revolutionary organization has had the necessary mobilization capacity to carry out popular protests, and the best example is that none of them have been able to claim even in a single one of said demonstration. Nine. In order to build socialism, it is essential that it be a part with an international internal democratic life. A true communist party must know how to co coexist with different tendencies. The internal life of a party in government represents how it will organize the political system. As happened with all the Stalinist party and their derivatives, the internal life of the Communist Party in Cuba was completely aligned of the social, uh, to socialist democracy, such happens today in the PCC. The construction of socialism that will emerge after the triumph of the socialist revolution which, guided by a new Communist Party, will overthrow the current rally bureaucracy will have to be done from an front and with socialist democracy. There is the working class control and political decision. Otherwise, it will begin to reproduce the insane process that already took place in Cuba. The bureaucratized construction of socialism, which ends up separating that the bureaucracy from the popular majority, becoming bourgeois, turning away from internationalism and finally return to capitalism to be able to constitute themselves as a bourgeoisie. Only a communist party with an internal democratic life will respect the indispensable construction of an autonomous trade union separated from the administration and management of the country. Only a new and real communist party with an internal democratic life will respect and encourage the existence of the civil society. There is organizations that made their own decisions outside the political power of the government. Only a communist party with an internal democratic life will understand that without socialist democratic, any attempt to build socialist inevitable ends sooner or later in a process of capitalist restoration. Ten and last. A new communist party in Cuba will imply that it will be truly internationalist and therefore will promote the world revolution. 
the Cuban Revolution places its working class, its working class as the center of the history of the class struggle. The Cold War, until then practically a mere confrontation between two powers, were revolutionized that and displacing people of, of the so-called thirds were entered the scene. From Cuba, which tried to be also socialism, the national liberation movement that destroyed the colonial regime in Africa and Asia was supported by the stim and stimulated at shaving the end of the apartheid regime in South Africa and the fall of the racist regime in the former Rhodesia. However, the bureaucratic method which, with which the leadership of the Cuban Revolution tried to build socialism also had an impact on the internationalism it professed and applied. Socialism in a, sang in a single country, even more so in Cuba, is impossible to build. Unless at least one regional revolution triumphs, socialism is a camp. The current ruling democracy has abandoned proletarian internationalism. An example of this is that in his tour abar abroad, the Cuban president meets the, with the bourgeoisie businessmen to encourage them to the business with the new Cuban bourgeoisie. The Cuban, bu Cuban bureaucracy limits itself to supporting bourgeois nationalist government, issuing lukewarm declarations and trying to pacify the region. A new Communist Party in Cuba must have as a main goal to the construction of the Communist International that coordinates the direct confrontation of every bourgeois state. It is urgent to build a new Communist Party in Cuba or the Cuban working class will end up sinking into the wars of undevelopment capitalism. Is that... Ok, gracias. Gracias, Frank. It was very interesting uh, to present in this conference the complexities and the dangers of capitalist restoration and how to fight against it throughout the day, particularly from the contributions from comrades from Russia, as well uh, and other contributions. They raise all the, the problem of capitalist restoration is on the agenda, it's not something which left behind us 30 years ago when the Soviet Union has collapsed and later have the turn of the Chinese to the world market. Now, the, the relations uh, in, in the previous contribution from Brazil, we heard the, the critical notes of uh, Ernesto Che Guevara on the NEP and the dangers of NEP. Now we see that this discussion 100 years later is on the agenda again in a much more developed, uh, higher level of the crisis of world capitalism and the need for socialist revolution worldwide, also in Latin America. Thank you, Frank. Then, sorry. Thank you very much. It was a big pleasure. Okay, so before uh, moving, uh, as it was said before, when moderator was Comrade Sungur, we have now the connection with Comrade uh, Yuri Sakhrin, who is now in Crimea, he's an Ukrainian uh, communist and uh, anti Stalinist, and he's uh, Many years uh, we know him and we fight together. He will speak to us by his phone. Okay, Yuri, you can have the floor and you can uh, speak uh, despite the difficult conditions by your phone. Okay? No problems. Comrade Savas explained their reason because uh, I live in Crimea and from uh, both sides uh, this territory is blocked. 
uh, one uh, one uh, uh, side this is Western powers, and uh, the second part uh, this is uh, Russian authorities because uh, they fight against VPN, and uh, that's why we have uh, a lot of difficulties. Uh, also, uh, I had uh, translation, and uh, Comrade Sungursov Ran mentioned uh, that uh, was uh, a, a raid uh, attack on Crimea today. Uh, uh, and uh, this is, uh, I, uh, I must explain, uh, this is not a uh, dangerous thing. But uh, sometimes, uh, but sometimes uh, we can, uh, we can, uh, uh, we can, uh, we must. Uh, sometimes we need to be uh, uh, to be careful in this point. Uh, for example, uh, two maybe two weeks before, uh, uh, um, one uh, uh, one uh, house maybe ten. Uh, uh, maybe uh, 200 meters from me was uh, uh, damaged by uh, part of a uh, racket uh, or missile, how to say it, I don't know. Uh, everybody is, uh, uh, everybody survived, uh, every, everybody is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, live, but uh, unfortunately we need to uh, pay attention to these uh, attacks. Uh, that's why uh, this is situation in which I am located. Uh, of course, uh, in comparison to Palestinian situation, this is nothing. Uh, nothing. Uh, this is nothing important. Uh, it's uh, hard to compare our situation to Gaza sector. Uh, we live. Uh, uh, we live uh, in uh, in uh, in much better situation. But uh, this is was uh, how to say uh, how to say some uh, remarks, and uh, I have to tell some uh, things about uh, the main point uh, which uh, uh, unite uh, our here about uh, Lenin and his uh, heritage. Uh, and now I uh, um, concentrated uh, mainly on the local activities. Yesterday we organized here a local conference uh, devoted to uh, devoted to, uh, to Lenin and uh, uh, discussed some uh, uh, some uh, some thing uh, some things some problems uh, connected to uh, to his uh, activity and historical role. Uh, I'll be I'll be short in my speech, uh, and uh, I only mention some uh, things. Uh, first of all, uh, first of all, uh, the most interesting uh, part of uh, Lenin works uh, are his last uh, last works when he was ill and uh, and uh, thought about uh, future fight for socialism in Russia and uh, in the world. Uh, because uh, because uh, in that time uh, in what in that time his uh, activity was finished and uh, that is why uh, was finished uh, was finished uh, and uh, uh, and um, how to say what finished uh, maybe i'll say in another way uh, and uh, after the uh, after this uh, lenin couldn't correct his views and uh, that is why it's very interesting how he looked uh, in the future uh, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, what was right and what was not right uh, of course, uh, in our country, in former Soviet Union, when we start to discuss uh, these problems, uh, very often people speak uh, in the su subjectivist terms. What can uh, could be done if Lenin uh, would uh, uh, would uh, uh, live longer and so on. What could be done uh, if uh, his letter to uh, Congress of Communist Party was fulfilled and so on. Uh, 
Uh, this is not Leninist approach to the problem because uh, if uh, if we look to Lenin's uh, to Lenin's method, we must to know that uh, uh, first of all we have to take into uh, into attention general trends uh, and general uh, tendencies of the period, and after uh, this uh, we can uh, judge what was done by people in this uh, objective uh, uh, circumstances. Uh, what uh, what what could be done, what could not be done, and uh, where were mistakes. As for Lenin, as for Lenin, uh, it was important that uh, uh, revolution uh, in Russia was isolated at the beginning of twenties. Uh, it was isolated uh, in the international scale, and in uh, you all know in his writings he always uh, mentioned that uh, Russia is not ready for revolution. Uh, not for revolution, not for socialism. Russia is not ready for socialism, and uh, uh, there are uh, there are uh, no conditions to build socialism in isolated and uh, capitalist backward uh, country. That is why uh, Lenin uh, Lenin uh, uh, thought that uh, the most interesting uh, alien uh, uh, in uh, uh, Europe uh, to solve uh, this task is Germany. Uh, why? Because after First World War, German, Germany lost uh, possibility to take part in uh, uh, uh, exploitation of colonies. And uh, that is why uh, German proletarians were, uh, were out of uh, that uh, surplus value and uh, surplus exploitation, which was uh, which was extracted from uh, uh, from uh, dependent and colonized countries. Uh, that's why he thought uh, that uh, the factor or uh, the factor of uh, uh, workers' uh, aristocracy is not significant significant for Germany and uh, that is why it has the uh, best uh, conditions for socialist revolution. But uh, there was another problem. Uh, the most uh, powerful uh, imperialist centers uh, were united uh, against Germany in the 20s. Uh, that, is why, uh, uh, that is why Lenin thought about uh, the problem, how to destroy their general front. I mean, of course, Antanta, uh, France, uh, England, uh, Great Britain, and other and our alliance of uh, these uh, imperialist powers. Uh, he uh, he uh, uh, he pointed attention attention to uh, uh, east to Asia, and uh, and mentioned that. Uh, uh, there is a major gro uh, uh, huge growth of capitalist relations in uh, Asia, in India, China, and other countries. Uh, that is why uh, he uh, thought that uh, this factor, uh, I mean uh, the growth of capitalist relations, would, uh, would provide a growth of uh, uh, struggle for independence and struggle of, uh, against uh, against capitalists from uh, from the part of uh, proletarians in uh, these uh, eastern uh, countries. Uh, that is why he thought uh, that uh, this struggle uh, could uh, change uh, the balance of power and to uh, provoke a clash between uh, main imperialist powers. Uh, in, uh, in one of his last works, he mentioned uh, that maybe in the 25 or 26 year, it will be a military conflict between maybe Germany, maybe United States, uh, or not Ge uh, Japan, Japan, maybe Japan, maybe United States, uh, Britain, and some other countries. Uh, 
that is why uh, the main task uh, to uh, to uh, uh, for Bolshevik uh, foreign policy is to support uh, uh, support proletarian uh, proletarians and class struggle both both in developed countries uh, and in colonial and uh, semi-colonial countries uh, of uh, uh, Asia. Uh, that is why Comintern devoted a great attention to uh, support uh, and organize uh, communist parties uh, in uh, all uh, parts of the world. Uh, as for uh, strategy in the Russia, uh, Lenin was afraid of uh, bu uh, bureauc uh, bureaucratic, uh, bureaucratic degradation of uh, uh, Soviet power and tried to prevent it by uh, uh, by, stre uh, by uniting uh, uh, positions of uh, leading uh, of Bolshevik leaders, uh, trying to uh, prohibit uh, fractions in the, the party and so on. You of course all know this uh, this uh, measures. And uh, uh, and after this, we can judge about uh, about mistakes of uh, of uh, uh, Bolshevik leaders. Of course, we know that uh, uh, Comintern uh, in the uh, second part of uh, the twenties made a lot of mistakes, such as uh, wrong tactics uh, in the China. Uh, everybody knows about uh, this problem. Uh, there were done uh, some uh, crucial mistakes in uh, politics in Germany, which uh, uh, which in fact prevent uh, uh, United Front of uh, Working Class against uh, uh, against far right, and uh, you know results of uh, of uh, this mistake. And uh, that is why uh, and, uh, uh, we can uh, also add some mistakes uh, in uh, uh, Russia. For example, Lenin was against uh, against uh, um, against um, uh, joining uh, of uh, uh, of uh, not conscious uh, members to Communist Party. He was for uh, for how to rest, for closed doors for some times. But just Lenin uh, died. Uh, what was uh, what was happened? Uh, Central Committee decided to organize so-called Lenin Call when many uh, when many uh, people were uh, uh, made members of Communist Party. This was just opposite to Lenin's position. Of course, we know that uh, all these mistakes uh, had uh, uh, had one uh, objective uh, reason. This reason was uh, bureaucra uh, bureaucratic uh, uh, bureaucra uh, bureaucratic process, which led to uh, uh, which led to uh, uh, working class to lose its power in Soviet Russia. You know that uh, uh, state uh, party state bureaucra uh, bureaucracy uh, took it uh, instead of workers. And uh, this is uh, the reason why uh, just, after, just after Lenin's death all these mistakes were done. Uh, of course, uh, it's very important to tell uh, to tell this thing. Uh, it uh, ex it uh, explains uh, explains uh, uh, the story of uh, Soviet Union without any subjective uh, things, without any uh, without any uh, uh, claims to the role of leader. And you know that Lenin was uh, just uh, that uh, a person who was against uh, stressing on leaders against stressing on uh, uh, against stressing on uh, a special role of a person in history uh, we uh, today saw very interesting uh, film about Lenin uh, in comparison to some uh, to some leaders uh, who were uh, uh, who, uh, who were of uh, another kind and uh, this is and uh, this uh, this is uh, uh, maybe a very important uh, conclusion which we can uh, do from uh, this experience uh, 
that uh, the most important uh, is to know and understand what uh, objective general uh, conditions, what uh, processes uh, we see, what uh, what is uh, their real nature. And uh, the second uh, second uh, reason is uh, their uh, subject uh, is uh, the uh, so-called subjective factor, uh, the role of uh, one person. Maybe this is the most important thing. Uh, dear comrades, unfortunately, I don't see you, but uh, uh, at this point uh, I'd like to finish my speech. Excuse me for my, for my English. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Comrade Jose is uh, online. Yes. Hello. Ah, okay. Hello. Hello, comrade. Hello. You can speak, comrade. Okay. Hello, comrade of the world. I speak in Spanish. And then I don't know the translation. Okay. Salim, comienzo. Hola, hola, hola, hola, compañero, compañero. Comienzo. Sobre Lenin, la conferencia de Génova y el tratado de Rapallo. Título. Uh, on Lenin, the Genoa Conference uh, and the Treaty of Rapallo. A 100 años de la muerte de Lenin, la vigencia de su legado no disminuye, sino que hoy, en el 2024, es más relevante, en particular sus escritos posteriores a 1917, esos seis años que van del 18 al 23, sin ánimo de dividir tajantemente en antes y después de la revolución. Uh, 100 years after Lenin's death, uh, the validity of his legacy uh, did not diminish. Uh, on the contrary, uh, today in uh, 2024, it is even more relevant particularly his writings after 1917 and uh, in those six years that uh, from 1918 to 1923. Uh, this is without uh, any intention of uh, creating a, a coarse uh, divide between uh, two uh, periods uh, before and after uh, the October Revolution. Esto por varias cosas concretas, objetivas, que puntualizan la importancia del internacionalismo revolucionario y proletario. Cuestiones que son indivisibles de la lucha interna con las limitaciones de la Unión de, la Unión de República Socialista Soviética y la necesidad imperiosa de conseguir suministros del exterior, en especial de los países capitalistas más avanzados. Uh, this is due to several concrete uh, objective uh, factors. Uh, that uh, point out to im point out the importance of proletarian and revolutionary in internationalism issues that are indivisible in the internal struggle against material limitations in the USSR and the imperative need to obtain uh, supplies from abroad, especially from the most advanced uh, capitalist countries. Cita de Lenin en acerca del infantilismo izquierdista y del espíritu pequeño burgués del 5 de mayo de 1918. Uh, this is what Lenin writes in his uh, leftist uh, infantilism and uh, the uh, petit bourgeois uh, spirit in um, May 5th, uh, 1918. Cita, el socialismo es imposible sin aprovechar las conquistas de la técnica y la, de la cultura alcanzada por el gran capitalismo. Uh, and I quote, comrade said, uh, socialism is impossible without taking advantage of the technical and cultural achievements achieved uh, by capitalism. Solo son dignos de llamarse comunistas 
quienes comprenden que es imposible crear o implantar el socialismo sin aprender de los organizadores de los trust. Uh, only those who understand uh, that it is impossible to create or implement socialism uh, without learning from uh, from the trusts are worthy of calling themselves communists. Porque el socialismo no es una invención, sino la asimilación y la aplicación por la vanguardia proletaria después de conquistar el poder por todo lo creado por los trusts. Uh, because socialism is not an invention, uh, but rather uh, the assimilation and application uh, by the proletarian vanguard after uh, conquering power of everything created uh, by these trusts. Nosotros, el partido del proletariado, no podemos sacar de ningún sitio la pericia para organizar la gran producción del tipo de los trusts como los trusts. We, the party of the proletariat, cannot obtain from anywhere the expertise to organize large-scale production of the type of trust, uh, such as trust. No podemos sacarla de no sea de ningún sitio como no sea de los mejores especialistas del capitalismo. Uh, the, the best place to uh, get it is uh, the um, best specialists of capitalism. Nosotros, en cambio, Si no somos comunistas en edad infantil ni de mentalidad infantil, debemos aprender de ellos y tenemos cosas que aprender. But if if we are not uh, communists, uh, uh, if we are not infantile, in childish uh, communists of childish mentality, uh, we should learn from them, and we have uh, things to learn from them. Tenemos cosas que aprender, pues el partido del proletariado y la vanguardia del proletariado carecen de experiencia para trabajar independientemente en la organización de grandísimas empresas que sirvan a decenas de millones de habitantes. Uh, we have things to learn uh, from them because the party of the proletariat and the vanguard of the proletariat lack the experience to work independently in the organization of uh, very large co companies that serve uh, tens of millions of inhabitants. Okay. Cierro comilla. Ahora voy con algo mío. Uh, end of quote. And, uh, end of quote. And now, comrades, uh, uh, explain. Okay. Además de la Constitución de la República Socialista Federativa Soviética de Rusia, aprobada el 10 de julio de 1918, del libro La Enfermedad Infantil del Izquierdismo y de los cuatro primeros congresos del Internacional Comunista. En uh, adición a la uh, uh, Constitución de la República Soviética uh, Socialista de Rusia, que fue aprobada el 10 de julio de 1918, uh, the uh, the book of the infantile uh, disease of leftism and the first uh, four congresses of the communist international que podemos estos encasillarlos como algo ideológico uh, which we can uh, call as uh, something ideological hay mucho material escrito por la premura de avanzar ante las limitaciones de las condiciones de las relaciones de producción arruinadas después de la guerra imperialista. Uh, much has been uh, uh, written uh, due to the uh, in the face of the uh, limitations and uh, obstacles uh, on the conditions of uh, relations of uh, pro uh, uh, production uh, ruined by the imperialist war and internal uh, civil war of the uh, counter revolutionary bands. Y de la guerra civil interna de las bandas contrarrevolucionarias. Todo este material condensado y brillante es ineludible analizar y profundizarlo ahora. Uh, it, it, all this is a uh, very condensed and brilliant material, and it is uh, an unavoidable ta uh, task to analyze and deepen it now. Después de los retrocesos temporales de la revolución tanto en la ex Unión Soviética como en China, Cuba, Vietnam 
later uh, after the temporary setbacks of the revolutions both in the former Soviet Union and in China Cuba uh, and Vietnam y en la guerra de la OTAN en Ucrania en contra de Rusia país no imperialista el genocidio uh, and also in the uh, NATO's war uh, in Ukraine against Russia which is uh, not an imperialist country el genocidio en Palestina el apoyo concreto y no discursivo de los Tusis, también el acoso a China. Uh, and the genocide in Palestine, uh, as well as the concrete uh, sport, and not just discursive uh, sport of Houthis, uh, and also the harassment of uh, China. Y a otros países donde está incluido Venezuela, a través del decreto 13692 de Obama, 2015, declarando a Venezuela como una amenaza a la seguridad de los Estados Unidos y que ha sido prorrogada por Trump y Biden. Uh, and also other countries uh, of which uh, to, to, to which Venezuela has also been included uh, by Obama in 2015 uh, by what is called decree uh, 13692 uh, Uh, which declared Venezuela as a, a threat to the uh, security of the United States and which has been extended by Trump and Biden. Otra cita de Lenin, escrita, Proposición sobre el problema del combustible, del 16 de marzo de 1921. Uh, Lenin had, uh, had already written a proposition on the fuel problem uh, in uh, March 16, 1921, and uh, a quotation starts. Cita, no hay duda que la crisis de combustible es uno de los principales problemas, sino el más importante de nuestra, de toda nuestra construcción económica. Uh, the, the, the, there is no doubt that the fuel crisis is one of the uh, most important problems, if not the most important one, of our entire economic construction. Si no otorgamos concesiones, no podemos esperar ayuda de la bien equipada técnica capitalista moderna. Uh, if we do not grant concessions, we cannot expect help from the well-equipped uh, modern uh, capitalist technique. Y sin utilizar esa técnica, no sería, no, no será imposible instalar correctamente los cimientos de, para nuestra gran producción. Uh, and without using this technique, it will be impossible for us to correctly lay the foundations for our large-scale production. En industrias como la extracción de petróleo, que tiene ex excepcional importancia para toda la economía mundial. Uh, this, this, this is particularly valid for uh, industries such as uh, oil extraction, uh, which is of exceptional importance for, uh, for the entire world economy. Aún no hemos firmado un solo contrato de concesión, pero haremos todo lo posible por firmarlo. We have not uh, yet signed a single concession contract, but we will do everything uh, in our capacity uh, to sign them. Han leído en el periódico que se va a inaugurar el oleoducto Bakú Tiflis. Pronto habrá noticias de un oleoducto similar hasta Batum. Uh, have, have you read uh, in the newspaper that the uh, ba Baku Tbilisi oil pipeline is going to be uh, inaugurated? Uh, there will be soon be uh, news of uh, news for a similar pipeline uh, in Batum. Esto nos permitirá tener acceso al mercado mundial. Uh, this will uh, permit us to have access to the uh, world market. La cuestión reside en mejorar nuestra situación económica y el equipamiento técnico de nuestra república. The issue lies in improving our economic situation and the technical equipment of our republic. En aumentar la cantidad de productos, la cantidad de víveres y de artículos de consumo para nuestros obreros. Uh, and the issue also lies in increasing the uh, quantity of products, the quantity of food and consumer items for our workers. Todo lo que, facil que facilite las cosas en este aspecto tiene para nosotros enorme importancia. Uh, everything that facilitates this uh, is of enormous importance to us. 
Por eso no tememos entregar en régimen de concesión una parte de Droni y Bakú, entregando el régimen de concesión una cuarta parte de Droni y una cuarta parte de Bakú. Uh, this is why we are not afraid of handing uh, Grozny and Baku over uh, to uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, hand, uh, handing these cities uh, under concession. By handing over a quarter of uh, Grozny and also a quarter of... Uh, uh, we will hand a uh, quarter of Grozny and a quarter of Baku under a concessionary regime. Utilizaremos esa entrega si conseguimos realizarla para alcanzar en las tres cuartas partes restantes, el alto nivel técnico del capitalismo avanzado. And if we can uh, manage to carry this out, uh, we will use this handover, handover uh, to reach in the remaining three quarters of these cities uh, the high technical level of advanced capitalism. Lenin decía en el informe presentado al segundo Congreso Nacional de los Comités de Instrucción Pública del 17 de octubre de 1921. So, uh, End of quote, I believe. Uh, and then uh, Comet uh, says, Lenin said in the uh, report presented to the Second National Congress of uh, Political uh, Formation Committees on October 17, uh, 1921. Uh, so, uh, the bourgeois, uh, the bourgeois, uh, bourgeoisie of the whole world uh, right now supports uh, the bourgeoisie of Russia, and it uh, and it is much stronger than us. Otra cita: Guerras de esa ha habido muchas, pero jamás ninguna de un poder público contra tal, contra toda la burguesía de su propio país y contra la burguesía unida de todos los países. Uh, there have been many such wars, but there has never been uh, any of a public uh, power against the bourgeoisie of its own country and against the united bourgeoisie of all countries. Cierra cita, comienzo yo. En abril, mayo de 1922, se realizó la segunda conferencia monetaria internacional convocada por la Sociedad de Naciones, con la excepción de Estados Unidos. Uh, so in April and May uh, 1922, uh, the Society of Nations, uh, the, the, the League of Nations uh, held the second uh, international uh, monetary conference, but to which uh, the United States uh, did not join. Que tuvo lugar en la ciudad italiana de Genova, con el fin de reconstruir el comercio y el sistema financiero internacional. Uh, which took place in the uh, Italian city of Genoa in order to build trade and international uh, fin financial system. Se trató de instaurar el patrón de cambio oro. Todo esto producto del caos tras, después de la Primera Guerra Mundial. Uh, so they tried to establish the gold, uh, gold ex uh, exchange, the standard of gold exchange, and all this was a product of the cha chaos that came after the first imperialist world, world war. Asistió una delegación soviética encabezada por Chicherin, con una tarea aprobada por resolución del Comité Central del Partido Comunista de Rusia. Uh, a Soviet uh, delegation was headed by uh, Georgi Tsherin, uh, which attended with a task approved by the uh, uh, Central Committee of the Communist Party of Russia. El fin de los bolcheviques era aprovechar una brecha entre los países burgueses más agresivos y los más pacifistas, buscando beneficios comerciales para la salida del, del estrangulamiento al que estaban sometidos. Uh, the purpose of the uh, Bolsheviks uh, in this occasion was to take advantage of the, of the friction between the most aggressive uh, bourgeois countries and the most uh, pacifist one, ones, uh, seeking uh, commercial benefits for, uh, from, uh, by uh, escaping the strangulation, the uh, chokeholds uh, to which they were uh, sub uh, subjected. Al margen de esa conferencia, el domingo 16 de abril, en la, en la población de Rapallo, cerca de Génova, se reunieron temprano los representantes de Alemania capitalista y Rusia soviética. 
so on the sidelines of that uh, conference uh, in April uh, 16 uh, in the town of Rapallo, which is uh, near uh, the city of uh, Genoa, the representatives of capitalist Germany and uh, Soviet uh, Russia uh, came together. Firmaron un tratado estableciendo relaciones diplomáticas. Uh, they signed the uh, treaty uh, and established diplomatic relations. Ambos países estaban sometidos a duras condiciones. Uno por su derrota en la guerra y el otro por sustituir al capitalismo. Uh, both countries uh, were facing harsh conditions, were subject to harsh conditions. Uh, one, Germany, uh, for its defeat in the war, and the other, uh, Soviet Russia, uh, for uh, overthrowing capitalism. Rompían el aislamiento individual cada uno a los que estaban sometidos, resultando un desagradable sorpresa para los planes de los países capitalistas que estaban reunidos en Génova. So, uh, with this uh, treaty, uh, both countries broke the uh, individ individual uh, isolation uh, that they were subjected to, uh, which resulted in an uh, unpleasant, unwelcome uh, surprise for the plans of uh, other capitalist countries meeting in Genoa. Genoa. El fin de este mensaje es aterrizar en la situación actual donde prolifera lo que llamó Lenin el peligro de la altanería comunista. Uh, so the uh, ending of this message actually fits well into a current situation. Uh, and this message concerns uh, what Lenin called the danger of uh, communist uh, arrogance. Y Trotsky más tarde señaló en el programa de transición como el, poli como el peligro del sectarismo. And Trotsky later uh, stressed uh, that in, in the transition pro program the danger of uh, sectarianism. Y desde Opción Obrera añadimos y le llamamos las limitaciones de intentar cimentar partidos nacionales o exaltar los problemas nacionales olvidando el contexto universal de la lucha de clases. Uh, and as Opción Obrera, the uh, workers' option from Venezuela, uh, we, uh, we, we join this call and uh, underline the limitations of uh, just trying to uh, create uh, national parties or just and focusing on national uh, issues and forgetting the uh, global context of uh, class struggle. Como condición indispensable para todo intento de construir desde donde sea una organización que no puede ser nacional, sino la sección desde una región del partido internacional. Uh, because this uh, global context of class struggle is the, uh, and this understanding is an uh, indispensable co uh, condition to, uh, for any attempt to uh, build uh, an organization which cannot simply be a national organization, but uh, it should be uh, a section of an international party. Lenin no hubiese clamado todo lo que es hoy su legado. Uh, le uh, otherwise, Lenin would not have uh, the legacy, uh, uh, legacy that he has today. No pudiera haber escrito todas sus obras sobre el partido, el Estado, el imperialismo, la revolución. Uh, he, he wouldn't be able to write all his uh, works on the party, the state, imperialism, uh, revolution. En fin, aplicando la dialéctica materialista, sin conocer las luchas y las organizaciones de toda Europa, no solo de Rusia. En otras palabras, fue un internacionalista consecuente. Uh, so, uh, if Lenin didn't know of the struggles of uh, all the struggles and organizations uh, beyond Russia uh, in all of Europe, uh, in other words, if he wasn't a, a coherent internationalist. He wouldn't be able to, uh, and he wouldn't be able to apply uh, materialist uh, dial dialectics. And as I just uh, mentioned, he wouldn't be able to uh, create his legacy by all his work on uh, parties, uh, state imperialism, and revolution. Para cerrar, dejo de nuevo palabras de Lenin en 
Cinco años de la Revolución Rusa y perspectiva de la Revolución Mundial. 13 de noviembre de 1922. And to, uh, to... Uh, to, uh, to conclude my uh, speech once again, I will uh, return to Lenin in the uh, in five years of the Russian uh, Revolution and uh, perspectives of the uh, World Revolution. Considero que lo más importante para todos nosotros, tanto para los rusos como para los camaradas extranjeros, es que después de cinco años de Revolución Rusa debemos estudiar. Uh, Starting your quote here, uh, I, I think that the uh, most important thing uh, for uh, both Russians and for foreign comrades, uh, th this is the thing that we should study after the five years of revol uh, Russian Revolution. Solo ahora hemos obtenido la posibilidad de estudiar. Ignoro cuánto durará esta posibilidad. Uh, It is only now that we have obtained the uh, conditions of st uh, studying uh, this. Uh, I don't know how long this uh, occasion will uh, last. No, no sé durante cuánto tiempo nos concederán las potencias capitalistas la posibilidad de estudiar tranquilamente. Uh, I don't know uh, how long of a time that capitalist uh, powers will give us uh, Uh, to, uh, the opportunity to study uh, in peace. Pero debemos aprovechar cada minuto libre de las ocupaciones militares de la guerra para estudiar, comenzando además por el principio. But we should use every minute, every uh, moment of uh, moment we have uh, free from uh, military occupations and from war uh, to study and study even uh, f uh, by starting from scratch. Estoy convencido de que en este sentido debemos decir no solo a los camaradas rusos. Uh, I'm convinced that we should tell this to uh, not only Russian comrades, to uh, all comrades. Sino también a los extranjeros, que lo más importante del periodo en que estamos entrando es estudiar. Uh, so we shouldn't say this only to Russian comrades, but also to our uh, international foreign uh, comrades that the most important thing in this uh, time period is, uh, is, is to study. Nosotros estudiamos en sentido general. And we study in a, a general sense. En cambio, los estudios de ellos deben tener un carácter especial para uh, so, que lleguen a comprender realmente... Uh, so we as Russians, uh, I believe, uh, study in a general sense, uh, but they, uh, foreign co comrades, uh, they, their studies should have a, uh, they, they should uh, study peculiarities. Para que lleguen a comprender realmente la organización, la estructura, el método y el contenido de la labor revolucionaria. Uh, this way they can understand the organization, structure, uh, method and content of revolutionary work. Si se logra esto, las perspectivas de la Revolución Mundial, estoy convencido de ello, serán no solamente buenas, sino incluso magníficas. Uh, I'm convinced that if uh, this can be achieved, the prospects of the revolution are not simply good, but they are uh, wonderful. Ok, cierro con Lenin. Muchas gracias, saludos a los compañeros. Uh, Len uh, I'm closing with uh, Lenin. Uh, thank you, com uh, comrades. Gracias, Ayim. Okay, now uh, from Venezuela, we'll move again to Brazil. Is the last speaker from the Latin America session is uh, Comrade Arlene Clemesha, historian, and uh, also, ah, hello. Uh, And, and uh, very active also, as I heard, in the struggle of solidarity to Palestine. Okay, okay you have the floor, Arlene. Thank you. I cannot hear you. The, ah, you are mute. Okay, now. Yeah. So thank okay, you. Arlene. Thank you very much, Savas. It's a big pleasure to be here, to be able to meet virtually with you. 
Uh, I know how much uh, work goes into the organization of something like this, so I really appreciate all the organizers and those who invited me and the Christian Harkovsky Center and Osvaldo Kogiola at USP and my colleagues and everyone. I must say we are speaking at a very critical moment in which um, the efforts of many of us, including mine, are very much focused on what is happening in Palestine. I don't think everyone has had much of a moment, of much of a respite or a moment to uh, think very much out of the crisis, of the extreme uh, genocide that is going on now. So I do hope that I can put together some words that might make some sense and might help in any way to start thinking a bit of the relation between uh, Bolshevism and uh, the Muslim peoples of the, of the East, inside and outside of uh, the Tsarist uh, or, uh, Empire or, or later the uh, Soviet, the USSR. So, um, and I'll try not to exceed my time also, I'll keep an eye on that. Uh, so. Uh, well, Islam was a crucial component of the emerging uh, national consciousness of the Muslim peoples of the Asia of Asia and the Middle East. That is something that is uh, absolutely important to recognize. Uh, the, however, the, the Bolshevik and Soviet programs, uh, uh, governments, sorry, relationship with Islamism was one of the most uh, complex. Uh, Soviet Russia adopted an openly anti-religious policy towards the Christian Orthodox Church, which represented the more majority uh, religion in Russia. Now, the founding program of uh, Russian socialism of the RSDLP of 1903 explicitly advocated separation of the church from the state and the school uh, from the church, confiscation of property, possessions of the monasteries, and, and so forth. Um, However, Bolshevism's religion with Islam and the Islamic clergy uh, was put on another level since Islam, as well as you know, being uh, a minority in the former Tsarist uh, empire, was not identified as the official religion of the autocratic state, uh, at least this in a first moment. In fact, the, the, the, the uh, um, there was even a major revolt in uh, 1916, 1916 uh, in Muslim regions of Central Asia against the Tsar, which was brutally crushed. So, um, in, in fact, the, the, the, the, the terrain there was not at all clear or predetermined or anything. It was really an issue of step-by-step of, uh, -step, um, elements and consequences, let's say. Uh, after the revolution, the first Congress of the Peoples of the East was held in September 1920 in Baku, the capital of Soviet Azerbaijan, uh, with delegates from more than 20 uh, peoples in the region. Uh, Soviet Russia had proclaimed uh, the right of all the subject peoples uh, of the defeated Russian Empire to, oh, uh, um, quote unquote, free self-determination up to and including the right to succeed. On December uh, 7th, 1917, the Council of Peoples of Commissars had declared null and void all the treaties through which Tsarism had ruled over and looted the Eastern uh, peoples. So there was a, a very important, strong element of liberation in this relation between the revolution and the peoples of the East who were themselves struggling against Tsarism uh, for national liberation. Uh, and the, the main issue here will, will, will, um, will be between the religious element of their own local and particular uh, movements for liberation and Bolshevism. Well, in 1919, Lenin had declared that the socialist revolution would be a struggle of all the colonies and countries oppressed by imperialism. So he included the idea of, uh, of a revolution that could only be realized through uh, and, and successful through the inclusion of the struggles of the formal co former colonies and not only workers against their own bourgeoisies in the different countries. So that aspect was um, consciously put out and thought out by Lenin in, in, in the program and in the means of addressing these regions uh, or the, the elements uh, that should uh, guide this address. No? However, uh, instead of going through the resolutions of the Baku Congress or Lenin's address to the second All-Russia Congress of Communist Organizations of the Peoples of the East, for example, uh, which was, by the way, centered on the Russian and international current situation of the time, uh, I'd like to go straight to a few of the main indicators of the difficult relation that um, was developed between uh, the Soviet Union and peoples of the East, mainly after Lenin's death 100 years ago. Uh, Regardless then of the principles of freedom and respect for local ethnic realities, 
a Soviet policy in this in the new Soviet republics in Central Asia was more than atheist. It was actually anti-religious. Uh, and if we look back at the existing orientations, they seem to be very fragile in the context in which they were implemented, to say the least. Veteran communists such as uh, Sultan Galiev, who was very close to Lenin, hoped to be able to reconcile Islam, and this still at a moment, uh, let's say, you know, of, of optimism, um, reconcile um, Islam and socialism through a pro program that would, quote unquote, de-spiritualize the, the Muslim peoples in progressive stages. Well, this formulation at a time you know, uh, in which we could see the local Muslim anti-imperialist political tendencies of the late 19th, early 20th centuries in um, Muslim regions or Arab Muslim regions also, uh, they all tended to, in different ways and degrees, of course, without generalizing, drink from the waters of Islamic refor reformism from the end of the 19th century. And to provide but one example, in 1928, Ali Juan, or the Muslim Brotherhood, was born in Cairo, founded upon the idea of exactly the opposite, of gradual Islamization of Islamic society, uh, with, with a view that the Islamic society should be you know, brought back further back to its origins, and that this should be an element of force for even the anti-imperialist struggle. So there seems to be actually a big a big gap between um, the, the orientations put forward and the reality on the ground in Muslim and Arab regions. Um, of course, then regions inside and outside what became the USSR. When the October uh, Revolution, 1917, took place, a provisional government of Jadid reformers or the new reformers, known as the Council of Muslims of Turkestan, to mention one of the regions inside, uh, what became the USSR, um, declared to Turkestan's autonomy. The new government, to have just an example of these tensions, was quickly crushed by the military forces of the Tashkent Soviet. Uh, and the proclaimed autonomous states of Bukhara and Hiva were also overrun by the Red Army. The Islamic guerrillas known as uh, Basmachis continued to fight against the Red Army until 1924 with external relations, external support even. Uh, after being conquered in another region by the, by the Soviet army, Central Asia as a whole experienced a wave of political administrative reorganization. So in 1918, the Bolsheviks created the Turkestan Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic. Uh, Bukhara and Hiva also became Soviet republics in 1919. Um, the, the Conciliation Commission for Turkestan Affairs was set up to try to improve relations with local inhabitants. So it was actually a very tense pro process, even at the beginning. Um, now, if we jump further over, you know, further in time, in 1929, uh, finally, the, the Soviet Socialist Republic of Tajikistan was divided from uh, that of Uzbekistan. Um, and new, and to give one example, and, and in general, new political borders had little to do with the ethnic or even religious composition of the local population. So this was also uh, another origin for tensions. Um, a critical assessment, you know, it, however, in the views of some authors, you know, of, of the Bolshevik approach to the cultural and religious question in Central Asia during the first decade of the revolution is extremely challenging given that from exactly the 1930s on, the Stalinist bureau bureaucratic power suppressed and uh, implement implemented a, a brutal repression of, uh, of locals, of, inclu uh, it, of locals, local organizations, um, including mass deportations um, and transferal of populations in some cases. Uh, and all this under the pretext of mobilizing manpower for the forced industrialization of the USSR. The repression of nationalism and religion reached unprecedented heights. Uh, and after Lenin's time, in fact, brute force replaced politics uh, in the USSR in, in so many aspects. So, you know, at first Lenin, we, it can be said, believed that national specificities, if we go back a bit to what I was saying at the beginning, should be accommodated within a single state. But then he went on to advocate the creation of an ethnically based states. So he, he shifted from the idea of a single state with the national specificities accommodated to the idea of actually having territorial and extraterritorial um, autonomy. Yeah? 
and, and, and the idea of, of federalization instead of the idea, therefore, based on the idea of the possibility of development of culture and respect to local, cultural, ethnic um, uh, realities. Um, now, others such, of, uh, such as uh, Trotsky, Hakovsky, Majdanek, uh, uh, Sultan Galiev and others, they are very much uh, linked to Lenin's ideas in this sense and, and, and followed this direction. Uh, Stalin, on the other hand, and that is where you know the, the 1930s really uh, uh, becomes difficult, uh, was um, uh, uh, quite uh, uh, he viewed Lenin's conceptions as a nationalist deviation, uh, harmful to the interests of the Soviet state. Uh, the defense that Lenin had made of the of the federative principle for the organization of the USSR against the unitary principle defended by the Stalinist faction was, uh, for some authors in some analysis, the actual crucifix of uh, Lenin's last uh, struggle. Uh, Lenin's death in January 1924 and Stalin's victory over the Bolshevik opposition, you know, the left opposition, uh, and the consolidation of the ideology and policy of socialism in one country in the second half of the 20s did the rest of the job, let's say. So uh, Grand Russian uh, prison of the peoples uh, was reconstructed under supposedly socialist veil, uh, but with long-term consequences for, for the history and development of, of uh, the local struggles of the region, of, of the Muslim regions of, of the empire. Now, I'd just like to finish. I hope I, I haven't exceeded my time. And I tried not to take too long, but I, because there's, it's a vast subject uh, and I, and I uh, but I'd just like to finish with an example of how these contradictions were shortly after instrumentalized and used by uh, the National so Socialist Party of Germany, the Nazi Party of Germany. In the late 1930s, a series of German scholars uh, ex uh, uh, researched the relation between the Soviet Union and the Muslim peoples of the East and explored the tensions existing there uh, and highlighted that uh, this could be a very significant um, uh, a breach to, to, to, to approach the Muslim peoples and gain their support against Soviet, uh, uh, the Soviet Union. Now, it wasn't exactly at all a, a, a, a, um, very much, um, let's say, successful in itself, but the fact that these scholars did uh, do uh, play this role, they ended up highlighting and being a means of documenting the tensions that did exist and the problems that did exist between a Soviet Union that was uh, always more and more repressive as the, as the 1930s advanced in regard to uh, what uh, initially had been outlined by Lenin as an idea of a more um, a less repressive and more authentic, let's say, participation, uh, autochthonous participation of the Muslim peoples in the building of the Soviet Union. And this just to mention inside, if we go to, for example, Palestine, uh, what happened in the Communist Party of Palestine, that's a whole uh, story and a huge example of how the intention to um, control and direct the leadership of the party was um, extremely detrimental to the development of uh, the idea of, of communism and of socialism and this force inside uh, the region of Palestine to give just that example to finish off. And of course, we can later discuss. Thank you. So Thank you. I my 10 minutes. Yeah. Thank you. Can you send us your paper? It was very interesting. Okay, Arlene. Yes. Nice to meet you again, even though. <laughs> okay. Ora, più si no. Γιατί είναι μόνο η φάτσα μου τώρα. We finished the, the session with the Latin American speakers and we move to the uh, last but one session of this conference with the members and friends of the Rakowski Center sending comments and greetings to our meeting. Uh, the the moderator will be Comrade uh, Ernesto Flomeik. I will help him also by the first, because 
the first uh, message we had from supporters, very dedicated comrades and supporters of the Rakovsky Center on the other side of the globe from Australia, our comrades Alex Mitchell and Judith White, and you received, the, for this reason, I take the, still the floor, I keep the floor. And uh, because there it is uh, nine hours from now, <laughs> it is about uh, two o'clock or three o'clock in the morning. So uh, they informed us that they support the conference fully and they sent a message to the conference, although they cannot uh, directly speak in the in the tube in the in the internet. So this is the conference uh, message of the conference by Comrade Alex Mitchell on his behalf on the behalf of Judith White. So I read it. Lenin has been my mentor and guide since my 20s. As a result, I became a rather pompous authority on his life. If I was confronted with a difficult decision in my life, whether to marry this lady or another, or take this job or that, I could ask myself, what would Lenin do? Sometimes Lenin's advice was good, but other times it was bad, very bad. As an example, Lenin, the banned Russian revolutionary, was alarmingly carefree with his security. <laughs> he was a terrible judge of character, particularly those who stopped him in the street, women or visitors to Moscow, who wanted an autograph. He wrote many books stressing the need for tight security, but it was theoretical and not practical. In 1901, he wrote what is to be done, which railed against dogmatism and celebrated freedom of criticism, but in practice, he did the opposite. I read and studied all of his writings, Lenin, with the assistance of his wife, life partner Krupskaya, wrote dozens of books, which lined myself, ignorant, some ignorant commentators said his slogan for Russia, 19 uh, October Revolution, bread, peace and land, was a motto stolen from others. That's a lie. Lenin's motto was derived from dialectics. He wanted to appeal to three sectors. Bread was for the hungry, peace for war weary soldiers and sailors, and land was aimed at recruiting Russia's peasantry. Of all Lenin's sayings, my favorite is, we're marching in a compact group along a precipitous and difficult path, firmly holding each other by the hand. We are surrounded on all sides by enemies, and we have to advance almost constantly under their fire. We have combined by a freshly adopted decision for the purpose of fighting the enemy and not of retreating the neighboring Mars, the neighboring Mars, Mars of Balta, the inhabitants of which from the very outset have reproached us for having separated ourselves into an exclusive group and with having chosen the path of struggle instead of the path of conciliation. And now some among us begin to cry out, let us go back into the marsh. And when we begin to shame them, they retort, what backward people you are. Are you not ashamed to deny us the liberty to invite you to take a better road? Oh yes, gentlemen, you are free, not only to invite us, but to go yourselves wherever you will, even into the marsh. In fact, we think that the marsh is your proper place, and we are prepared to render you every assistance to get there. 
Only let go of our hands. Don't clutch at us. And don't besmirch the ground world, freedom. For we too are free to go where we please. For to fight not only against the marsh, but also against those who are turning towards the marsh. It was typical Lenin, brutally frank and dismissive of opponents, whether they were in his own ranks or not. Lenin makes today's class compromisers look like second raters. Alex Mitchell was a former leader of Britain's Workers' Revolutionary Party and his global affiliate, the International Committee of the Fourth International, former journalist. Mitchell now lives in Australia, where he's an acclaimed author. Judith White, his partner wife, writes books on culture and art history. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Judith. By the way, the quotation by Lenin was made uh, extremely beautiful contact by the Soviet composer Sergei Prokofiev. Thank you. Okay, now I give the, the, the my job as moderator to <clears throat> Comrade uh, Ernesto. The next speaker is Dimitris. Okay. Okay. Thank you a lot. Thank you, Shabas. Thank you all you uh, participants, organizers, and uh, all you that you are you are viewing now this very important very important international conference held a tribute and uh, for the legacy of Lenin, 100 years Lenin is living, lives through his work, through the struggle for the world revolution. So we, we, are, we are now in the fourth session of this important international event held by Christian Rakowski International Socialist Center. We will uh, now hear the contributions by the members and friends of uh, Christian Rakowski Center uh, in this session. And we will continue after Alex Mitchell and Judith White uh, uh, message to the comrade Dimitris Mizaras, uh, leader from the Marxist uh, Workers League uh, of uh, Finland. Comrade Dimitris, have you, you have the floor. Okay. You are not uh, at all. We are not here. You. Uh, open again. Okay. Now uh, I think so. Then, no? Okay. No. It Microphone. Is... We just wait, he will uh, connect again. Yeah. Oh, no, Dimitris. No. Maybe some uh, regulation from your uh, screen about the microphone. Can you? No, the, the micro is uh, muted. Yes, uh, comrades, uh, let's proceed to the next speaker and, Dimitris, and uh, we later. will find, uh, we, we will solve the problem. Uh, comrade Guy from, France. from uh, uh, Renaissance, who well, uh, revolutionary. Uh, okay. Yeah. 
Bonjour, est-ce que vous m'entendez euh, Oui, camarade, on ne sait pas. On t'attend, oui. Parfait, mais ouais, on t'entend. Qu'est-ce que je peux faire Il faut que je mette plus fort, plus faible et Plutôt plus faible, je dirais, mais et, et, voilà. com combien de safa et... Alors, est-ce que ça, ça c'est mieux est-ce que c'est mieux Oui, c'est nettement mieux. D'accord. Alors, euh, je te demandais, Bourak, si je lis le texte en français d'abord et tu fais la traduction ensuite, ou je lis en plusieurs morceaux et tu fais les traductions au fur et à mesure. On, on, on fait à plusieurs morceaux comme ça. Ce, en plusieurs morceaux, d'accord. C'est mieux pour les auditeurs. Ouais. D'accord. Alors, quelques secondes. Bon, euh, il s'agit de faire un point sur euh, la situation en France. Euh, donc, que le, le, la France est dans une crise politique. Uh, the, uh, I, will, I will make a couple of points about France. France is uh, going through a political crisis right now. Yeah, was... J'y vais Ouais, ouais. J'y vais Ok. Donc, euh, pour se faire élire, euh, Macron a bénéficié de l'effondrement du Parti Socialiste et du Parti Gaulliste UMP-LR qui tous les deux étaient discrédités, compromis par les politiques antisociales et anti-ouvrières euh, de ces partis euh, qui sont des partis historiques de la Ve République. Uh, so to get elected, uh, Macron uh, uh, exploited the collapse of the Socialist Party as well as the uh, the Gaullist Party, uh, meaning the part the uh, historical party which is based on the legacy of uh, Charles de Gaulle, uh, Gen uh, General uh, Ch uh, Charles de Gaulle, and these uh, both these par uh, parties uh, had been compromised and discredited uh, by uh, their uh, anti-social and anti-worker. Uh, Uh, policies and these two parties were the uh, main uh, the parties of the Fifth Republic in France. Uh, C'est sur les ruines de ces partis-là que Macron a pu construire son mouvement qui s'appelle, qui s'est appelé En Marche. Uh, so it was on the ruins of these parties uh, that uh, Emmanuel Macron uh, built his pol uh, political movement, which is called in France uh, En Marche, uh, which means uh, uh, marching in, in French. Uh, mais ces conditions réunies n'étaient pas suffisantes, bien entendu. Uh, la campagne électorale de Macron a été uh, construite sur des illusions. La première de ces illusions, c'est celle du social-libéralisme, celle d'un progressisme dynamique et jeune, et puis la tromperie portée par toute la bourgeoisie, qu'il est possible de concilier les intérêts de la classe ouvrière et ceux du grand patronat. Uh, so, uh, but obviously, this crisis in itself was not enough, and Macron's electoral campaign was built uh, on several illus illusions. Uh, first of all, that of uh, social liberalism, which means, uh, and also that of uh, a dynamic, a youthful, uh, progressive uh, pol uh, politics, and also uh, the, the deception carried out by the en entire uh, bourgeoisie that uh, it was possible to re reconcile the interests of the working class and uh, uh, those of uh, big business uh, of uh, bourgeoisie. Euh, parmi euh, les mensonges, il y a par exemple la théorie dite du ruissellement qui prétend qu'en enrichissant les riches, l'argent finit par revenir vers les moins riches. 
Uh, and uh, among these lies, these uh, deceptions, there was this pseudo theory uh, call, uh, called trickle down uh, theory, which um, means that by enriching even even more uh, the rich, the money will eventually uh, trickle down to uh, to uh, less wealthy uh, classes. Malgré les illusions, malgré les mensonges, il y a eu euh, une promotion euh, médiatique inouïe dont euh, Macron a bénéficié de la part des grands patrons de l'industrie qui sont également aujourd'hui les grands patrons de la presse. Uh, but uh, despite these il illusions and the lies and all uh, the, that uh, deception, uh, Macron had the chance of uh, benefiting from the uh, an unprecedented amount of promotion uh, by uh, by media, which was led by the big bosses of of the industry, which who happened to be also the big bosses of the press in France. Uh... C'est euh, malgré euh, les mensonges, malgré, malgré les illusions, malgré la promotion euh, médiatique, Macron a été élu euh, en 2017, mais avec un taux d'abstention énorme. Euh, L'abstention avait été forte et une fraction des électeurs avait voté pour lui, pour faire barrage à l'extrême droite. So notwithstanding all these deceptions and all all all that support from uh, from media, Macron uh, Macron was elected in the end, but it was only uh, with uh, uh, a, a, a, an important uh, rate of abstention in the elections, and this only happened because a good part of the uh, of voters voted for Macron only in order to uh, stop the uh, far right. En 2022, c'est-à-dire cinq ans plus tard, l'abstention était encore plus forte qu'en 2017. Et Macron a perdu près de 2 millions de voix entre le deuxième tour de 2017 et le deuxième tour de 2022. So the, uh, the uh, prior party was about uh, 2017, uh, Macron's first election, and for his second term in uh, 2022, uh, uh, five years uh, later when Macron uh, was uh, elected, he, uh, his election was even less glorious in the sense that he lost almost uh, two million votes. La Macronie, comme on l'appelle ici, uh, c'est les vieux. Uh, 41% de son électorat avait plus de 60 ans. Ce sont les vieux, mais les vieux aisés et dotés en capital. Uh, so, uh, Macroni, as, as uh, it is called in, uh, in French, or the uh, Macron sort of uh, political fifth and po political realm, is composed by uh, old uh, voters. And uh, it is notable that Uh, more than 40% of his voters were over six, uh, 60. But these are not only old people, these are uh, old and uh, wealthy people who, uh, who possess uh, the capital. Uh, une frange... Non, le, le, la classe ouvrière et les autres fractions de classe populaire connaissent donc aujourd'hui très très bien ce qu'est la politique néolibérale, c'est la déréglementation, la dérégulation, le remplacement des services publics par des entreprises privées, et puis c'est le travail précaire euh, du genre euh, de Mac, euh, travailler chez McDo euh, et toutes les entreprises euh, de, de travail précaire, quoi. Uh, so in France, the working class and also uh, other fractions known in uh, France as popular classes are uh, deeply familiar uh, with uh, neoliberal policies, which means deregulation and also replacement of uh, public services uh, with uh, the services of private companies, as well as precarious work, such as, uh, you know, uh, precarious jobs uh, at uh, fast food joints such as McDonald's. Face à cela, il y a historiquement la CGT, les organisations syndicales plus généralement, et il y avait le PC. Euh, Aujourd'hui, euh, 
la CGT regarde vers la CFDT, c'est-à-dire un syndicat de collaboration de classe, et euh, la CGMT aimerait bien avoir les succès de la CFDT. Je mets « succès » entre guillemets parce que ce ne sont des succès que pour la bureaucratie, pas pour les travailleurs. Uh, so historically against uh, these policies, we, uh, we had a habit of seeing the French Communist Party as well as the main, uh, at that point, main trade union federation, uh, uh, uh, uh, general trade union uh, federation in its uh, translation. But right now, uh, the uh, CGT uh, trade union ha uh, developed the habit of looking towards CFDT, which is uh, an another trade union confederation and uh, with the tra uh, tradition of class collaboration. And now CGT wants to uh, sort of imitate uh, the success uh, obtained by CFDT, but the success is obviously in, uh, in, in the biggest possible quotation marks. Donc, il y a longtemps que la CGT euh, n'est plus sur une ligne de classe, mais au printemps 2023, pendant la lutte euh, massive est déterminé d'une grande majorité des travailleurs et bien au-delà de la classe ouvrière, en réalité, contre la contre-réforme des retraites, l'opportunisme et la ligne réformiste et traite de la direction de la CGT a conduit cette organisation à se subordonner à la CFDT, donc les collaborations de classe, et a précipité le vaste mouvement de protestation en une véritable défaite et qui sera certainement lourde de conséquences. Uh, so it's been a while uh, since the, the, the CGT Trade Union Confederation uh, has adopted a, a class struggle line, but particularly uh, in uh, uh, 2023 during the uh, massive and determined uh, struggle of uh, of a of a gigantic ma majority of the working class as well as uh, other uh, popular uh, categories uh, beyond the working class, uh, CGT uh, has simply followed the, the class collaboration line of this other trade union federation, CFDT, which le led to a disastrous defeat. And uh, of course, there will be further uh, uh, consequences of this defeat. Parmi ces conséquences, uh... On pense immédiatement à l'extrême droite et euh, tout le monde a la conviction ici qu'avec la défaite qui a, eu, qui a été occasionnée par les organisations réformistes, cette défaite-là ouvre une avenue à l'extrême droite. Uh, of course, what comes to mind as the result of this defeat, uh, the immediate result uh, will be the, uh, the paving, uh, this defeat, defeat will pave the way uh, for the far right. Les grèves et les manifestations contre les lois El Khomri en 2016, l'effondrement de la gauche, essentiellement le parti socialiste, mais euh, le PC aussi s'est effondré, euh, donc effondrement de la gauche mais aussi de la droite, l'élection d'un Bonaparte fragile avec une abstention record en 2017, le mouvement des Gilets jaunes en 2018-2019, une abstention record aux élections présidentielles et un mouvement euh, gréviste des énergéticiens euh, à l'automne de euh, 2022, on voit qu'il y a une résistance de la classe ouvrière, euh, d'une part sur euh, la contre-réforme des retraites, mais en réalité plus générale que euh, la seule réforme des retraites. Uh, so in the... Uh, last years, almost in the last uh, decade, we also see a uh, reaction, a resistance uh, uh, uh, against these uh, re reforms, including in 2016 in the uh, mobilization against what was known as El Khomri uh, laws uh, from the name of the uh, minister, uh, minister who adapted the law, a new uh, co uh, code of uh, la uh, labor. This was in 2016. And then uh, the collapse of the traditional uh, left uh, in France in, 
uh, first the Socialist Party, but also the Communist Party, uh, and then uh, the collapse of the right as well, and the election of uh, a fragile Bonaparte in the person of uh, Emmanuel Macron, as well as uh, other uh, resistance movements such as uh, Gilets Jaunes or Yellow Vests in uh, 2000. Uh, 18 and uh, 19, and then the uh, record level of abstention uh, for the election uh, of Macron, it shows that uh, spirit of resistance uh, towards this uh, reactionary reforms is uh, alive in France. Malgré les résistances, uh, le néolibéralisme ne passe pas. Mais Euh, les gauches, politique et syndicales, ne représentent plus qu'elles-mêmes et on ne voit ici aucune force un petit peu importante qui se trouverait capable de donner un cap aux luttes, de, d'organiser euh, euh, les militants, de proposer une stratégie, mais il n'y a ni stratégie ni euh, tactique Personne ne semble capable d'organiser la résistance. Uh, so, but in this context, uh, both the political left and trade unions, or the uh, lefts of left uh, within the trade union, uh, they o- they are only representing themselves. They don't have any like more uh, extended uh, popular representat- representation, and uh, there is no major force uh, capable. Uh, of giving a direction, uh, providing a leadership uh, to these uh, ongoing uh, struggles. And there is uh, neither a, a coherent strategy nor uh, required tactics for that. And uh, accordingly, no one is uh, able to uh, properly organize the resistance. Finalement, c'est la médiocrité des gauches qui fait la force de l'extrême droite. Le, les récents Changements de personnel dans l'appareil gouvernemental ne feront que accélérer la crise et ce ne sont pas de simples ministres, mais ce sont vraiment des ennemis de la population, des ennemis du peuple. Et ça fait que aujourd'hui, euh, depuis déjà un certain temps, la France est à la croisée des chemins. Uh, so, uh, the this failure of of the left uh, provides uh, strength for the far right and also the uh, most recent changes uh, within the government uh, shows that the crisis crisis will only uh, will only deep uh, deepen and these are these new, this new governments these are not just ministers but these are enemies of the people and uh, france at this uh, moment is at a crossroads Euh, vous avez entendu parler probablement de la loi immigration. Euh, il faut dire que cette loi immigration est directement inspirée et copiée dans les programmes historiques du Front National devenu Rassemblement National. Uh, you must have heard about the new uh, immigration law uh, in France. Uh, which has been adopted on, uh, the, directly uh, from the pol- uh, political historical uh, program of the party known as Front National and National Front, uh, which was a Front National National Front and now is known uh, as uh, Rassemblement National, uh, which is the uh, main party of uh, French far right. Avec cette loi immigration. Euh, Macron intègre l'idée de préférence nationale. C'est une loi euh, raciste. Uh, with this law, um, Macron uh, brings about uh, what is known as national uh, preference, and this is a racist law. Uh, et cette préférence nationale est donc une partie historique du programme du Front National à l'époque du père, mais la fille reprend également. Uh, ce thème. C'est un thème majeur de l'extrême droite. Cette loi raciste voulue par Macron et développée par uh, Darmanin est pourtant non constitutionnelle car elle contrevient à la Constitution qui, au contraire, garantit un droit égal pour tous. 
so this uh, law uh, was uh, a part of the program of this uh, uh, front, uh, national front or the now uh, Rassemblement National uh, Party from the time of the father, uh, Comrade said, uh, which was uh, uh, father Le, Le, Le Pen uh, who, uh, and whose uh, daughter uh, Marine Le Pen is is the, the current, even if not the, uh, like officially de facto, a uh, current leader uh, of uh, Rassemblement National, and with the daughter, uh, this program uh, continues. And now uh, Macron uh, ad adopted this law as developed by his uh, Minister of Interior, uh, Dar Darmanan, and this is an unconstitutional law uh, because it creates a national uh, preference, whereas a constitution uh, stipulates uh, equality for uh, for all. De fait, euh, Madame Macron ne s'y est pas trompée et elle a publiquement revendiqué une victoire idéologique. And in fact, uh, Le Pen uh, reclaimed an ideological victory after the adoption of this law. Et uh, il nous faut, hélas, le reconnaître. Il s'agit bien de cela, et en conséquence. C'est bien une défaite, une autre défaite pour la classe ouvrière. And she's not wrong. This is indeed a victory for them, which in con consequence is a, is a defeat for the working class. Le grand quotidien du soir, Le Monde, qui est habituellement très très sage, titrait d'ailleurs « Une rupture politique et morale ». Et il qualifiait cette loi de « tract du rassemblement national ». C'est dire. Uh, so uh, the major uh, French uh, daily newspaper, Le Monde, uh, carried the headline of uh, a political and moral break after the adoption of uh, this law and described the law as a uh, as a flyer, a, a brochure, almost like a brochure uh, of Rassemblement National, this far right party. Les macronistes disent que, bien entendu, ça ne vient pas du Front euh, National, mais ils mentent tellement que ça ne change rien du tout. Uh, of course, uh, Macron and his followers are saying that the ideological inspiration for this law uh, does not come from uh, Rassemblement National, but ob obviously they are lying. Cette loi est faite pour diviser et affaiblir la classe ouvrière et les catégories populaires. Uh, this law is meant to divide and weaken uh, the working class and other uh, popular uh, categories. De fait, aujourd'hui, uh, les partis fascistes ou proto-fascistes ou fascisants, on ne sait plus trop quel terme employer, ces partis sont en position favorable pour les prochaines élections, les européennes bien sûr, mais on se pose des questions pour les, Euro pour les présidentielles. Uh, yes, we have to, we have to, yes. Yes, let me translate, Comrade. Uh, so, the, uh, the, and indeed, the fascist or proto-fascist uh, party is right now poised to take advantage of that and be, uh, be the top party in the uh, next elections, which are uh, European elections. But uh, one cannot help but ask uh, himself or herself uh, that if this will not be the case for president, next presidential elections as well. Yes, Comrade Ernesto, you were saying something? Just we have to go to shorten uh, as if possible, okay. because we uh, are uh, extending the time now. We are uh, out of the original program. Okay, it is that, important uh, to hear, to uh, go uh, to uh, the uh, conclusion. Okay. Il, il, il faut accélérer, accélérer, il faut bientôt finir, parce qu'on a déjà... Bon. Euh, je dirais que je coupe, je, je vais à la partie numéro 6, nécessité d'une organisation révolutionnaire. So I, I, I, will, I, I will cut some parts and I will uh, talk about the last part, which is uh, the necessity of a revolutionary organization. Euh, en plus de la lutte ordinaire contre le capitalisme, Uh, Aujourd'hui, uh, il faut inclure les différentes uh, variantes uh, 
de réformisme, le réformisme social-démocrate, mais aussi le réformisme stalinien. Et nous sommes engagés donc dans une course de vitesse contre le fascisme, le fascisme montant. Uh, so, in, a, in addition to uh, our ordinary struggle against capitalism, including different uh, very, uh, sorts of uh, uh, reformism, including uh, its social democratic kind and Stalinist uh, kind, now uh, we find ourselves uh, engaged in a, in, a, in, in a fight, almost a race against the, uh, time, against uh, rising fascism. À l'occasion de la guerre par procuration, entre les USA et la Russie, guerre qui se déroule sur le terrain euh, ukrainien, une fraction majoritaire des, or des organisations se réclamant de Trotsky et de sa continuité avec Lénine se sont compromises dans une sorte d'union sacrée avec nos bourgeoisies respectives et avec l'impérialisme, euh, comme la social-démocratie en 1914. Uh, so in the current uh, proxy war, uh, which is which, uh, which is being uh, waged in Ukra Ukraine, a lot of uh, organizations who reclaim the heritage of Trotsky and the co continuation of Lenin uh, are forming a union sacré, a, a coalition uh, with their uh, own bourgeoisie. Uh, C'est dans ce contexte, uh, dans ce contexte contradictoire, qu'il faut de nouveau, mais inlassablement poser et reposer la question de l'organisation révolutionnaire. Uh, it is in this context that we should uh, put uh, the uh, question of revolutionary organization uh, into the, uh, our uh, agendas. Et je pense que nous devons rompre d'avec les courants et organisations qui ont failli et qu'il faut rechercher au contraire des convergences avec celles et ceux qui, sur la question de la guerre en Ukraine, n'ont pas failli. Et, en effet, je pense que nous devons avec ceux qui ont dans ce test important et essayer de convergences avec ces organisations qui ont adapté les positions positions concernant la guerre en Ukraine. La problématique du Parti révolutionnaire se pose donc aujourd'hui et je pense qu'on peut la situer à l'intersection de la conception léniniste du parti qui s'oppose euh, bien entendu aux perceptions, aux, aux élaborations de Kautsky d'une part, mais aussi les analyses faites par Ostrogorsky et Michels par exemple. Uh, so in this context right now, uh, the question of revolutionary uh, party uh, should be uh, uh, constructed at the intersection of first Uh, the Lenin, Leninist uh, conception of a uh, party, which of course is opposed to uh, the uh, party conception of Kautsky, uh, but also on the other hand of Ostrogorsky uh, and uh, Mikhailovsky. Uh, C'est l'intersection de plusieurs choses. Le, un autre aspect. Euh, important, c'est bien entendu euh, les perceptions, ce qu'on pourrait appeler une sorte de théorie de la période révolutionnaire par Lénine. Uh, another important aspect of is what we can call the theory of revolutionary period, uh, which was uh, created by Lenin. Uh, ce sont aussi les textes réunis uh, sous le titre de défense du marxisme, qui sont eux de Trotsky, uh, de Trotsky. Uh, and also as an additional element uh, uh, of this uh, conception of revolutionary party, of course, uh, Trotsky's, te Trotsky's uh, texts uh, gathered uh, in, the, in the book uh, in defense of Marxism. Et puis, pour finir, c'est quelque chose qui a été évoqué aujourd'hui dans la conférence, la question des nationalités et la question de savoir quelle est l'articulation entre la question du droit des nations et l'approche le, le, de classe, c'est-à-dire laquelle de ces questions est la question principale. Voilà, c'est ma conclusion. Mm -hmm. And the final element should be, uh, and uh, this, is, this has already been uh, discussed by uh, other uh, speakers, uh, should be the, uh, the 
uh, nations questions or national nationalities uh, question and especially its uh, interplay with the question of uh, class uh, that is to say especially to understand uh, which one of these two is the main uh, question and i conclude with this uh, comments thank you very much comrade uh, Gil. Uh, let's uh, proceed uh, immediately to comrade dimitris now that we can hear from finland dimitris try to be brief yes thank you it is, it is brief this is much briefer hope you hear me you can hear me now of course yes yes good very, very good, good. Okay, the headline of this presentation is Lenin's legacy in the eve of a war escalation in the Baltic Sea. What does Lenin, Lenin's legacy mean 100 years after the Bolshevik leader's death? The October Revolution made, make, made, made it possible for Finland to establish a, an independent bourgeois state with Lenin's approval. The agreements of Brest-Litovsk, the naive and inexperienced, inexperienced leadership of the working class in Finland and the interve intervention of Germans contributed to the fact that uh, Lenin handed over the document of independence not to the, the representatives of the workers as he would have liked, but to the bourgeoisie. The civil war that started uh, uh, right after that and the defeat of the Reds sent the rebels underground to prisons, to concentration camps and to Soviet Russia. The Communist Party of Finland, Eskope, was founded in exile in Moscow only after the defeat and uh, it was illegal uh, in Finland from the beginning. After Lenin's death, the Stalinist bureaucracy began to strengthen its position and it was not very difficult to manipulate the Escope. Bourgeois, bourgeois Finland, Finland's attitude towards Russia was aggressive, uh, hostile and Russophobic. Stalin's advent adventurism in the Winter War in or, uh, of uh, 1939 further fueled Russian hatred. After the war, special relations uh, prevailed until, until the Soviet Union was driven into a political bankruptcy. After that, Finnish uh, bourgeoisie returned to the anti-Russian positions, joined the EU, Euro, Euro, European Union, and since last year, finally joined also NATO. If Sweden uh, also joins this military alliance, the Baltic Sea will become NATO's inner lake. The collapse of the Soviet Union has spread enormous confusion among the international left and even more so even more so among the proletariat. On the international level, most of the leftists rejected Lenin's theoretical and political legacy and saw Leninism as the cause uh, of not only the disaster, but uh, uh, of the phenomenon of Stalinism as well. Despite the illusions, Lenin's legacy is alive today, both theoretically and as living force. You can see you can see it from how both the central power of imperialist capitalism, uh, which is in a stage of decline and uh, its death in the deathbed, and the oligarchic states hate both hate and fear Lenin in principle. The power of the living Leninism lies firstly in the dynamics of the Marxist method and the potential of the class struggle for the deep the transformation of the society. Uh, these two camps, so imperialism and uh, uh, uh, oligarchs, these two camps, both in an existential crisis, faced off in Ukraine. 
the victory of imperialism would put the world closer to a global barbarism. The defeat of imperialism is a necessity for humanity and for the whole civilization as well. The proxies of imperialism in Ukraine are currently facing a fatal defeat. There is only one way forward for imperialism now. That is the path of escalation. Ukraine's defeat may, makes the class between United States and Russia topical. This conclusion has been reached by Robert Bauer, the chairman of NATO military committee, who stated without hesitation, let's prepare for war against Russia. Finland's 1,340 kilometer border has been handed over to the United States Army. The United States gets 15 base, military base, base areas for its own use. American troops are permanently uh, repatri repatriated to, the, to Finland. Even the scenarios of stockpiling peeling nuclear weapons in Finland have not been ruled out. At the same time, NATO is preparing for the largest military exercise in its history. Steadfast Defender 24 is the name. This will take place from February 28th to April 21st. More than 90,000 soldiers and partici are participating in the military exercise. It is a rehearsal for the planned war against Russia. According to NATO official, the Eastern Front of the escalation extends along the axis from Finland to Romania. A second part of the military exercise is planned To, make, to take place in, uh, in May. A smaller military exercise, uh, Winter 24, started in Estonia in January. Now, this month. The Estonian military participates in it. The military exercises in uh, question are planned at NATO, a NATO su summit in Vilnius last uh, July in Lithuania. No one is going to offer the keys to power to the proletariat. Power is only taken by force. The war, the war in the Middle East is part of the same development towards the East. In addition to the ethnic cleansing, cleansing of the Palestinians, the target, the, the, the target is Lebanon, Iran, Central Asia, and through it also China against Russia, both Baltic and Black Sea fronts will be attempted. On the eve of the Great War, the present uh, moment uh, contains both aspects, the massive destruction and the possibility of a deep transformation of the society, revolution. Seeds of uh, transition to a new historical era. This road passes through the collapse of capitalism and imperialism and ends in the uh, emancipation of the working population in the socialist era. For this task, we need Lenin's legacy, analysis of uh, prevailing situation, the power of class struggle, proper organization, and orientation towards internationalism. In this way, we can prepare our own 1917 social revo socialist revolution, leaving behind everything that refers to class cooperation and compromise. compromise. This is the only way to avoid a world war and a nuclear disaster. If one breaks out, we must turn the war into a socialist revolution. This is the revolutionary challenge of today's Leninism. That is why Lenin's legacy is very crucial today. The successor of Leninism and Bolshevism, 
that is uh, Trotskyism is dangerous for the both bourgeoisies and oligarchs. Uh, bourgeoisie and oligarchs. oligarchs. We must return to Lenin. The international working class and its vanguards must complete this social, global, revolutionary change that began in October 1917 and remained unfinished. It will only happen when we succeed in forcing the uh, uh, irreplaceable and vital tool for it. This tool is the revolutionary international of our time, which is, in our opinion, should be the fourth international. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you a lot for the very focused and uh, detailed and uh, well-informed uh, presentation, Com Comrade Dimitris. And uh, let's uh, go now to the next speaker, that is Comrade, we have the honor to have with us Comrade Latif Parker from South Africa to share with us his oh, yeah. thoughts about the subject of the conference. Comrade Latif, you have the floor. Comrade Latif, uh, we have to wait for a while. Comrade Latif. Maybe uh, we have to make some. Uh... Okay. Before we hear uh, Comrade Latif, we can uh, go to the next uh, speaker. We have now to announce that we have a very good uh, contribution from the Comrade uh, Gianfranco Gamboni from the Sardegna Rosa in Italy. Uh, we have a very good uh, text that we just, we have to announce that we will uh, publish it. We cannot now read. It is a very good contribution with the, under the title, Lenin's Command, Let's Convert the Imperialist War into Civil War. Lenin's Realism and the Revolutionary Defeatism. A very topical and very important uh, issue and uh, text uh, contribution from the comrades from Italy. Uh, then we, we will, of course, thank for this contribution and we will publish this text. Now, let's hear before uh, Comrade Latif, uh, Comrade uh, Tony Marco from uh, Red Roja in Catalonia. Yes, thank you. Hello. Hello. Uh, dear comrades, between the anniversary of the Russian Revolution and the anniversary of Lenin's death, many articles have appeared, recalling well-known quotations and praising him in ways that he wouldn't have liked. So I'd rather to point out to the chief teams of Lenin's work, his unfinished fight to prevent the bureaucratic degeneration of the Communist Party, and even more important for us in the present, to apply the essence of his lessons and experience to what needs to be done in our time and in the concrete European situation. In the hundred years that separate us from his death, the world has changed radically. Capitalism has entered an increasingly decadent and senile phase that threatens the existence of humanity, if not life itself on this planet. The degenerative crisis of the Anglo-American imperialism led it to spread chaos, war, and terrorism in many countries. The class consciousness of the working masses has receded in Europe, also in Spain, dragging within the left, which calls itself revolutionary, because it, it is incapable of doing what Lenin himself did, which is to make a concrete analysis of concrete reality. 
Lenin's work is of enormous importance and covers the fundamental themes for the development of the communist movement, both in theory and in practice. If since uh, 1850 we have references to dictatorship of proletariat and permanent revolution, Lenin and his comrades of the Bolshevik party put it into practice and opened a new phase in human history. Their method and experience continue to enlighten revolutionaries in the current class struggle to apply them to a different situation that we cannot fail to analyze and discuss. I would like to highlight some aspects that are particularly useful to us in this indispensable work and which have been deliberately ignored or distorted by the reformists and all the left that is compatible with capital and the institutions of imperialism. The tactic of intervention in the bourgeois parliaments, using them to denounce capitalism as a loudspeaker of the class struggle, not to create illusions in changing the system of bourgeois democratic institutions, and in no case to commit to the support of the working class to one bourgeois faction against another, even more reactionary. When they ask us to vote for the parties of capital in the name of stopping the extreme right, we remember that Bolsheviks fought against the Kornilov coup without supporting the bourgeois, imperialist and warmongering government. The contribution on the right of the oppressed nations to self-determination and independence, developing the concept of the proletarian nation and bringing their democratic radicalism to the solution of the historical questions pending under imperialism, which not only the workers' movement can overcome on condition that is, that is, it carries its struggle to the end and maintains its independence against the nationalist bourgeoisie. Today, the UN and the European Union have turned the right of self-determination into a mere political formalism to be applied to some African and Asian colonies that remain economically dominated or to create divisions that favor their geostrategic interests, as in Kosovo. Lenin's old definition of the imperialist phase clashed today with postmodern theories which empty the law of value of its content and distort the concept of imperialism in order to adapt it to the limits imposed by democratic bourgeois reaction and the rules of the updated international institutions. Then it has an orientation to give us to work for the political unity of revolutionaries while fighting to strengthen the practice of the workers' movement in the sense of going beyond the simple level of economic and social demands, raising the perspective of the socialist goal. For example, young people struggling for access to housing can directly understand that only socialist planning can provide affordable housing as Engels explained. Lenin attached great importance to the debating, even of small differences, which could cancel serious errors of tomorrow. We must once again put it into practice, the dialectic between the broadest discussion with the class currents without exclusions and the rigor to define the task or the intervention and party building in our epoch. Therefore, we propose the work in the next period to establish a calendar of debates to which to invite to other revolutionary currents with the double objective of recovering the class independence in the workers and, and the imperialist movement and of setting socialism as a political objective that directs the different struggles towards the question of power. We were able to make an honest assessment of the errors and limitations of the October experience and of the international communist movement to avoid the bureaucratic danger, as Rosa Luxemburg had warned, to work on the question uh, that Rakowski asked in a letter to Russian left opposition, how to keep the power in workers' hands. This is to examine some aspects of Russian civil war, the NEP, and the problem of scissors, or the final, though the first years of Third International, Congress of Livorno, the action in Germany in March in 1921, etc. 
Today, we must put the, this knowledge to work, reread learning, and fight again as he did to refine the theory and methods that allow us to work at different levels, to strengthen the proletarian culture and the left wing of the workers' movement, to give a socialist perspective to the social movements and struggles, to work for their political articulation, to go beyond partial and local demands, to aim at power, to take a position in a great world anti-imperialist and anti-capitalist struggle that is on the rise. This is the practice that we need as a basis to work with the scattered forces of revolutionary Marxism, for the communist unity and the construction of the revolutionary international in a process that does not allow shortcuts or voluntary proclamations. It is about responding with determination and flexibility to the tasks posed by the situation. Thank you for attention. Thank you very much for this contribution, this uh, speech by Comrade uh, Tony. Yes, many revolutionary greetings to all the comrades in Catalonia, in Spain, in Red Roja. And uh, let's now proceed to the next uh, speaker, that is Comrade Levent uh, Dolek, uh, from a leading uh, member of the uh, uh, Revolutionary Workers' Party from Turkey. So, Comrade, you have the floor. Hi, Comrade Ernesto. Hi, Savas. Hi, all comrades. Uh, on behalf of the Revolutionary Workers' Party, uh, deep from Turkey, I greet all the international participants of our conference and all our comrades and friends who follow us on various platforms. We, as the Revolutionary Workers' Party, think that Lenin is not the past, but the future. He is the leader of the world revolution today, as he was throughout his revolutionary life. In 2023, the seventh Congress of our party, Revolutionary Workers' Party, assembled, and our seventh Congress declared 2024 as the year of Lenin. This resolution formulated our party's duty in this Lenin year as to introduce Lenin's thought and practice to the working class and youth of Turkey and explain how future generations can benefit from it. This should be the duty of every revolutionary socialist of every nation. We hope that this conference will contribute to the achievement of this mission on an international scale. Who is Lenin? He is the theorist and architect of victorious Bolshevik party, master of the art of insurrection, defender of revolutionary Marxism. From the reactionary years of First World War to the era of First World Revolutionary Wave of October Revolution, from Zimmerwald to Comintern, he is the leader of the World Socialist Revolution. This is how we see him. The leader of British imperialism, Winston Churchill, of course, would see him, would see Lenin in a different perspective. He asked about Lenin. Churchill said, was he someone who wanted to save the world and his method of doing it was to blow it up? Blow it up. The concept of revolutionary could only be expressed in this way on the language of an imperialist. Yes, Lenin became the leader of the world revolution with the revolutionary and international poll he built against the social democrats who tried to reconcile socialism with the imperial system and repair the capital state with reforms. Lenin's revolutionary poll as a genuine Marxist poll was insisting to blow capital state up rather than to reform it. In the, and the name of this poll is called Leninism, as well as Bolshevism and Revolutionary Marxism for 100 years. It is necessary to remember the two great leaders of the international poll that Lenin built against social chauvinism under the difficult conditions of the First World War, Rosa Luxemburg and Karl Liebknecht. They were also murdered by the social democratic traitors on 15th of January, four years before Lenin died. These three Lenin, Luxembourg, and Liebknecht are the three L's of revolutionary socialism and internationalism. Rosa Luxemburg exposed social democracy's support of its own imperial governments in the war with these words. The global historical appeal of the Communist Manifesto undergoes a fundamental revision. 
proletarians of all countries unite in peacetime and cut each other's throat in war. Lipnate, uh, and again, Lipnate's international phrase, the main enemy is at home, was an expression of Lenin's revolutionary strategy turn imperialist war into civil war. This strategy made Bolshevism as an enemy of imperialism as well as the nationalist bourgeoisie of their own country. This position was not only victorious, it was also the revolutionary strategy that led the proletariat to conquer power in Russia. Lenin saw the October Revolution as the beginning of the World Revolution. After Lenin became the leader of world communism, he used his doctrine on the national question to draw the path of the world revolution. He carried the communist program of Marx and Engels to a world scale and made it universal. Liberation will occur through the unification of post-revolutionary peoples in the heart of the same federation, the Soviet state. Lenin's policy on national question never understood by the centrist right-wing factions of Russian and world communism. Nationalist bureaucratic tendencies were opposed to Lenin's policy of nations from a great Russian chauvinist perspective. Also, we can observe liberal and opportunist tendencies which defending so, uh, so-called defending right to self-determination by also referencing Lenin, but in reality, they are defending not Lenin's principles, but Wilson's. Nowadays, these opportunists are speaking about Ukraine's right to self-determination against Russia, not against NATO. On the other hand, Russia's capitalist restorationist leader Putin accuses Lenin placing a time bomb under the Russian state by drawing administrative borders along ethnic lines. This is Putin's words. Putin is wrong. Lenin never placed a time bomb under the Russian state. He blew it up directly with the revolutionary cannons of Aurora battleship. He demolished not Russia, but the bourgeois Russian state and built a new state with new working class roots, a state which is protected by a new red workers and peasants army, a state which is not Russian, but a Soviet state. And this non-Russian Soviet state had become the worst nightmare of imperialists for a century long time. And hope for all oppressed nations of the world against colonialism and imperialism. Is it very ironic that Churchill and Putin's unity against Lenin, their class base unites them against Lenin, but The saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, is not always true. Putin and Russia are now in war against NATO and US and British imperialism in the recent war, which can be defined as a prologue for a World War III. We need concrete analysis of the concrete situation, as Lenin always said. In the present war, neutrality is unacceptable. No doubt, we are in favor of the defeat of NATO and its proxies. Again. The enemy of my enemy is my friend is not always true. So we are following Lenin for the world revolution and we shout Soviet Union again. We are not following Putin. We don't give any political support to him who says Soviet Union never again. Lenin's war policy focuses on the analysis of the present war based on the interests of the world proletariat and the world revolution. As Lenin says, Marxism requires a concrete assessment of each separate war. For the present war, we must understand the political aim of today's present war is to bring Russia and China to their knees by sieging them in military and economic ways, by US-led imperialism. We must understand the political goal of this war is to carry the capitalist restoration to its logical conclusions by turning these giant countries into giant semi-colonies and further possibly to divide them into pieces. For the present genocidal war of Zionist Israel against Palestine, We don't separate this war from the general campaign of imperialism. Regarding the future war, our attitude will be the same in the words of US imperialism and its proxies directly or through its proxies against China, Iran, or North Korea. We don't give political support to the leadership of these countries, but unconditionally, we will be in favor of the defeat of US imperialism again. Lenin's theory of imperialism saves us from the mistake of falling into a reactionary policy of neutrality by declaring Russia and China as imperialists. Lenin's theory of imperialism shows us that the Russian economy, in which the export of raw materials is decisive, not the export of capital, or China, in which the export of commodities is decisive, not the export of capital, 
these are cannot be described as imperialists. Lenin pro provided us with the necessary tools to distinguish between expansionist policies or struggles for regional influence on the one hand and imperialism on the other, which means the struggle for domination over the world. Leninism is unity of theory and action, unity of strategy and taxes fully, fully dedicated to the main goal, world socialist revolution. Leninism is the strongest revolutionary weapon at the hands of world proletariat. Why not maybe a bomb to blow up, not the world, as Churchill said, but the imperialist world order. We need that weapon. We need this revolutionary political bomb rather than bombastic feds and fashions like post-labeled ideologies, countless types of identity politics and liberal left garbage. Lenin's thought passed through the test of history successfully. We have witnessed the confirmation of Leninism in the victories and defeats of the world proletariat. From the October Revolution to the collapse of Soviet Union, the determining factor in victories and defeats was the presence or absence of the Leninist party. Speaking in terms of world revolution, we can say that victory and defeat will depend on whether the Comintern, which represents the organizational pinnacle of the Leninist party, is rebuilt or not. Of course, this task to rebuild the Comintern cannot be achieved without the programmatic achievements of the Fourth International. The era of era of proletarian revolutions opened by the October Revolution continues. Revolutions are happening. We will see revolutions. We must prepare their victory. Therefore, the answer, answer to the question, what is to be done, is still the same. Forward to the construction of revolution workers' parties and internationals that organize the vanguard of the working class and put an end to imperialist capitalist barbarism. Thank you very much. Thank you a lot, Comrade Levent, for this uh, speech on behalf of DIP. Uh, and uh, now we are going to the next speaker, that is uh, Comrade uh, Mitrofanis Patsouras, uh, Comrade from EEC. He will speak right now. Lenin Youth. 121 years ago, Lenin, in September 1903, wrote the text, the, Tax of the Tasks of Revolution Youth, a point of reference for revolution youth also today. In this text, the great Bolshevik leader, responding to a related article that had been published, points out that the task of the young revolutionists is to acquire a marked consciousness by the membership, training and fighting throughout the lanes of the political body of Marx, the Marx body of the working class, party of the working class. And also, the way to achieve this goal within the context of the ideological, political and organizational work of the leadership of the proletariat under the formation of the time. For Lenin, the Marx political consciousness and the revolutionary struggle of the youth couldn't be acquired with ultimatums, moral preaching, appeals and bureaucratic trigger, suffocating the necessary independent political life and action of the youth, or submitting to their spontaneous instincts, as was the case with Stalinism, but in a living, non-dogmatic and ever-developing, collectively organized and disciplined way. And although in the youth all the contradictions and of the Buddhist society are expressed, as they reflect it with a relative peculiarity or even amorphously, Lenin's uh, criterion of, for the work in the most political advanced uh, but disorganized and educated strata of the youth is also in a case political with the Bolshevik sense of the term. That is on a basis of the rule of uncompromising organized struggle for the emancipation of the labor movement from Buddhist ideology and any Buddhist influence. In short, Lenin doesn't give organizational receipts and formulas supposed to be suitable for every situation, but his analysis in a much way the relationship between the party and the youth in the ongoing historical political conditions for, uh, from the viewpoint of the needs of the evolutionary action that derives from them. Priestly, because of this mythology, Lenin's approach is as relevant as ever today. Lenin, recognizing the revolutionary potential of the rapidly growing students' movement in the years Presley, the revolution of 1905, fought against the observation of the, of the many tasks of task of each conscious part, which was the consolidation and development of Marx's education mobilization of the forefront 
of the class struggle of the proletariat and its vanguard. Having established with his work what is to be done, the primacy of such an approach that means the adoption and development of uncompromising Marxist theoretical political work and its constant testing of the independent work for the, of the proletarian party among the masses, Millennium was able to face with greater fluency in his polemic the confusion that was shown in the youth movement by the devotes of ideological unity and compromise, making brilliant explanatory contribution to a Marx regarding to an inextressible link that has in it the politics and sociology under the guidance of material dialectic. The essence of Lenin polemic is that differentiation of distinct political groups in a student's movement reflects the differentiation of political forces in society it ultimately represent different class interests. In this class differentiation of party differentiation in society and therefore in the students' world, learning explains is carried out only by political struggle, sometimes by long persi persistent struggles, and other ones in a stormy way in the form of a political crisis. The task of the Marxist in the students' uh, youth Lenin concludes is to seek the most conscientious and constant as possible separation of the political heterogeneous groups. The kind of approach expressed with the ideological acumen of Lenin is the necessity of the revolutionary intransigence of the party in the service of the proletariat and its historical interests. The importance that Lenin attached to this struggle for political separation within the lanes of the liberal movement with the education of the revolutionaries in Marxism and with all the party's methods of action based on Marxist uh, traditions, proved to be crucial throughout the long course after 1905, leading to the victorious seizure of power in 1917. The relentless ideological struggle of Lenin and Bolsheviks against all forms of Buddhist ideology among the proletari proletarian youth, maintaining, uh, maintaining and dialectically super, uh, surprising the consequence of early Bolsheviks, acquired after the victory of October, a completely new quality, high, a higher level in the decision of the task of the Communist Youth taken by the Third International in its Third and Fourth Congress. In the, in the first of these uh, resolutions, in view to the Bolshevik spirit, uh, the Communist International defines as the basic task of the Communist parties, the support of the work uh, of the Communist Youth, which were organized at the level of the Communist Youth International, which was founded about six months after the Communist International, in November 1919, by young leaders who had broken away uh, from social democracy. The main task set by Communist International to the newly created, created Communist Youth International was the complete political subordination of the Communist Youth Organizations to their newly formed party while at the same time maintaining the organization independent that their work requires among the masses of working youth. So the Second World Congress of the Communist Youth International, which began in April 1921 in Jena, continued in Berlin and ended in July in Moscow, took this decision. It is important to point out here that the Fourth Congress of the Communist International, which the last Congress of the Fine International Revolutionary Organization of the Proletariat, the danger arising from the split of uh, that capital was organized between the generation of the working class with the, with the youth because of unemployment to attempt to turn into a battering ram against the older workers was emphasized as the Congress sounds alarm against the imposition of such division at the working class. Also, in the, rele uh, in the relevant decision of the Fourth Congress, it is even proposed to create association for the children of the workers with the responsibility for their education by the Communist Youth. The race of Stalin destroyed all this work, turning the Communist Youth International into a degenerate instrument of class cooperation for the survival of bureaucracy and to eventually dissolve it too, like the Third International also in 1943. The struggle for penetration and consolidation of the Revolutionary Party with the proletarian youth, which is important with the word of Karl Liebknecht, in, is the flame of the proletarian revolution is today 
in this age of advance, a rot of decent capitalism, which asteroids who own in defense of, of Marxism, offers great possibilities, but also brings terrible danger. As timely, as necessary as ever, and as and necessary as ever. The legacy of Lenin and Bolshevism is a quiet in the struggle for the revolutionary internationalist youth of the party of the working class and the future international, which for the Ektrotskist is the 40th international. This tradition, an integral part of the tradition of the op op uh, oppressed lives on the international and international struggle of the Rakovsky Center for the crushing of imperialism and its capitalist government and the international institution with workers power and the opening of the way to universal communism through the world of world social revolution youth of ec thank you comrade tefanis uh, for this presentation and uh, now we are uh, uh, going to the uh, next speaker, that is uh, Comrade uh, Azad Said from uh, Azerbaijan. We are very glad to have uh, this comrade with us. Thank you a lot. You. Merhaba, Yoldaşlar. Merhaba. Uh, hepinizi selamlıyorum. Benden önce uh, konuşan yoldaşlarıma teşekkürlerimi iletiyorum. Uh, hello, hello, comrades. I, hello, comrades. I would like to start uh, by saluting all the comrades who spoke before me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, metnimizi yoldaşlarım adından ben seslendireceğim. Uh, <coughs> ve biliyoruz, biliyoruz, kahır kahır, kahırlanarak biliyoruz. Bin kat daha telaşsız, bin kat daha ağrısız geçilirdi dönemeçler. Siz öyle vakitsiz. Siz öyle genç, 54 yaşında ölmeseydiniz yoldaşım. Ne güzel şey size yoldaşım diyebilmek. Uh, com comrade initially said that uh, she will be the one uh, who will read the text uh, in the name of com uh, comrades in Azerbaijan. And then she gave me the uh, formidable task of uh, translating an Azmik uh, poetry uh, on the spot. While having no pretension to that, I will give my best shot. Uh, and we know uh, and we know with great grief that uh, these meandering paths will be uh, uh, traversed which, with much less uh, pain and uh, trouble. If you uh, haven't died this early at 54, dear comrades, and what a great pleasure to be able to uh, call you uh, my comrades. These are the verses of uh, Nazm Hikmet on Lenin, uh, of which other examples you heard from Comrade Sungur. Buyurunuz. Sosyalist şair Nazm Hikmet böyle dile getiriyor Lenin'in ölümüyle ilgili duygularını. Uh, that's how uh, Nazm Hikmet, uh, the socialist poet, expressed uh, his feelings about the death of Lenin. Bugün Dünya Proletaryası'nın en büyük önderlerinden biri olan Vladimir Ilyich Lenin'in 100. ölüm yıl dönümü. Today is the centenary of the uh, death of Vladimir Ilyich Lenin, who was one of the uh, greatest leaders of the world proletariat. Vakitsiz ölümüne rağmen ardında öyle büyük teorik ve pratik bir miras bıraktı ki, bu miras ölümünden 100 yıl sonra bile gerçek devrimci proleter mücadelenin yolunu ışık tutuyor. And notwithstanding his uh, early demise, he left such a theor theoretical and practical legacy that uh, this legacy uh, is shedding light uh, for a revolutionary, a, a truly revolutionary struggle, even after uh, a century after uh, his, his demise. Lenin'in çalışmaları Marksizmi bir üst seviyeye taşımış, Marksist politikayı en doğru şekilde nasıl uygulamak gerektiğini bize göstermiştir. Uh, Lenin's work carried Mar Marxism uh, to uh, a superior stage and uh, demonstrate uh, uh, provided a demonstration of how we can uh, apply um, uh, Marxist politics uh, in, in the correct manner. 1902'de kaleme aldığı Ne Yapmalı başlıklı kitabı Devrimci Parti'nin nasıl örgütlenmesi gerektiğine dair tespitleriyle 20. yüzyıl boyunca ve aynı zamanda 21. yüzyılda da Devrimci Pratiğin tabiri caizse el kitabına dönüşmüştür. 
the book he penned in 1902, uh, What is to be done, uh, has practically turned into a manual of uh, a man manual as to the organization of the revolutionary uh, party, uh, both uh, throughout the 20th century, but also in the 21st century. Gerek devlet ve devrimde ortaya koyduğu devlet teorisi, gerek içerisinde yaşadığımız çağın özelliklerini berrak biçimde açıklayan emperyalizm teorisi, ulusal sorun hakkındaki görüşleri ortaya atıldığı günden itibaren önemli zerre kadar yitirmeyen kaynaklardır. Uh, the theory of state that he developed in uh, State and Revolution, uh, his uh, theory of imperialism, which clearly illustrates the uh, characteristics of the era in which uh, we live, and as well as his uh, opinions about the uh, about the question of uh, nations, are uh, are sources that did not uh, lose a, a shred of importance uh, from uh, their value. Tabi bunların yanına bir de onun şaşmaz enternasyonalizmini eklememiz gerekir. But of course, his, uh, uh, his principled internationalism should be added to this list. İkinci enternasyonel partilerinin ulusal şovenizmine karşı hep proletarya enternasyonalizmini ve dünya devrimini savunmuş ve 1919'da iç savaş daha yeni kurulmuş devrimci Rusya'yı kasıp kavurduğu zaman komünterinin kurulmasına ön ayak olmuştur. Uh, not only did he uh, defend uh, international, proletarian internationalism and the world revolution against the parties of the Second International, he also uh, spearheaded the creation of the Communist International, the Comintern, uh, in 1919 uh, in the midst of a civil war uh, in, uh, in the newly revolutionary Russia. Onu bir sanatçıya benzetirsek, en büyük eserinin, tarihin en büyük ve kalıcı zaferle sonuçlanan ilk proleter devrimi, yani Ekim devriminin gerçekleşmesi olduğunu söyleyebiliriz. Uh, if we could compare him to, to an artist, uh, we could easily say uh, that his, uh, his masterpiece, his uh, biggest work uh, was uh, the uh, most important and the uh, most important proletarian revolution of the history and the first proletarian revolution to uh, succeed uh, to obtain a, a permanent uh, uh, success, which was uh, the October Revolution. Ne yazık ki erken ölümü hem Ekim Devrimi'nin hem Sovyetler Birliği'nin hem de dünyanın bütün halklarının kaderine büyük etki etmiştir. Unfortunately, his uh, early death uh, had a had a terrible impact on on the course of the uh, October Revolution uh, on the. Uh, on the fate of uh, on the uh, trajectory of the Soviet Union as well as that of the uh, peoples of the world. Hem Sovyetler Birliği hem de Komintern bürokrasinin pençesinde boğulmuştur. Uh, the bureaucracy was able to uh, strangle uh, both the Soviet Union uh, and the Communist International. İşçi devletini bürokrasinin yükselen etkisinden korumaya ömrü yetmemişti. Uh, he did not uh, live long enough to uh, be able to uh, protect the uh, worker state uh, against the rising uh, impact of bureaucracy. Leninizm çarpıtıcıları önce bürokrasi içerisinde yıllarca kendine yer etmiş, Stalinizmin etkisini kaybettiği dönemden beri ise postleninizm adı altında Lenin'in sınıf politikasını yatsımaya, proletaryaya sır çevirmeye, çeşitli kimlik politikaları ile proletaryayı kandırmaya devam ettiler. Those who distort Leninism first uh, obtained a place uh, within the rising uh, bureaucracy and then since uh, Stalinism started to uh, lose its cloth, its, uh, uh, its, its power, uh, they started to uh, deny uh, Leninist uh, class uh, po uh, politics uh, to deny the proletariat uh, it, it, itself in the name of a post-Leninism, and uh, they uh, continued deceiving the proletariat, but by uh, various uh, sorts of uh, identity politics. Lenin'in mirasına sahip çıkmak aynı zamanda bu sınıf düşmanlarına karşı barışmaz bir tutum gerektirir. Uh, reclaiming the legacy of Lenin also requires an uh, 
un uncompromising attitude uh, against these class enemies. Bugün Lenin'in yolunu devam ettirmek demek, işçi sınıfını mücadelenin merkezine koymak, proletaryayı güçlü Leninist merkeziyetçi partide örgütlemekle beraber hem de emperyalizme ve onun yandaşlarına karşı sert ve kararlı bir şekilde mücadele yürütmektir. Uh, today taking the path of Lenin um, means uh, putting uh, putting proletariat to putting working class to the center of our struggle, uh, organizing the proletariat uh, within uh, uh, the centralist uh, uh, Leninist uh, party and uh, uh, fighting an uncompromising fight against imperialism and its lackeys. Emperyalizmin derinleşen çelişkilerine karşılık solun üzerinde bir atalet gözlemleniyor. Notwithstanding the deepening contradictions uh, uh, between imperialism we uh, observe uh, a, a, a lethargy uh, within uh, uh, within the left emperyalizm yükselen faşizmle saldırıya geçmiş bulunsa bile and this is notwithstanding the fact that imperialism uh, is uh, started an onslaught with rising fascism Solun üzerinden bu ataleti atmak, post Leninist zırvalıkları bir kenara bırakıp Lenin ve Trotsky'ye yeniden tutunmaktan geçiyor. The, the method of uh, beating this uh, lethargy uh, on, on the left can only be through uh, reclaiming the legacy of Lenin and Trotsky uh, and uh, fighting against this uh, post Leninist uh, gibberish stuff. Son aylarda Filistin'de yaşanan olaylar, olayları değerlendirirken kendisini Marksist adlandıran birçok kişinin İsrail'e ve emperyalizme açıkça destek verdiğini görebiliriz. We unfortunately observed that even uh, some uh, those who uh, claim the name of um, Marxism uh, supported uh, Israel and imperialism uh, in Palestine in the uh, last few months. Her zaman olduğu gibi bu defa da postlenistler Burjuvazi'nin ekmeğine yağ sürmeye, işçi sınıfının kafasını karıştırmaya çalıştılar. As always these postlenists are playing the uh, bourgeoisie's game and they are trying to confuse the working class. Uh, biz Azerbaycanlı devrimci Marksistler olarak sınıf iş, biz Azerbaycanlı devrimci Marksistler olarak Lenin'in ezilen milletler hakkındaki politikasını benimsiyor. Filistin halkının İsrail'e karşı mücadelesinin haklı ve meşru olduğunu ve Filistin halkının yanında olduğumuzu bir daha vurguluyoruz. We as the revolutionary Marxists from Azerbaijan reclaim uh, Lenin's policy towards uh, oppressed nations and declare that uh, the struggle of uh, of the Palestinian people against Israel is right and uh, legitimate and that we stand with Palestine. Anlıyoruz ki Filistin başta olmakla bütün Orta Doğu'nun ve dünyanın bütün ezilen halklarının kurtuluşu devrimci Marksistlerin Lenin'in mirasına hangi derecede sahip çıktığına bağlı. Ve söylüyoruz ki hala yaşıyor çünkü mücadele henüz bitmedi. As it is clear, crystal clear now uh, that uh, the, people, the peoples of uh, the Middle East starting with uh, Palestine as well as Uh, those of other oppressed peoples uh, uh, throughout the world, their uh, liberation can uh, de uh, depends directly on uh, revolutionary Marx Marxists adopting the legacy uh, of Lenin. And here uh, we once again declare that uh, Lenin is alive because his struggle uh, continues. Uh, bu kadardı. Dikkatiniz için teşekkür ederim. Uh, I conclude my speech, comrades. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for this speech and uh, Comrade Azad. So we can uh, continue now uh, with Comrade uh, Ali Akminov from Uzbekistan. Okay. Okay, Comrade Ali. Thank Hello. You. Can you hear me? Hi. Of course, very well. Yes. Hi comrades, I'm glad to see you all here. Today is the day when we lost our leader of the revolution 100 years ago. 100 years ago, our revolutionary leader showed the world a new order based on the equality 
Brotherhood of the Nations and a Life Without Exploitation. Thanks to October Revolution, led by Lenin and Trotsky, that after the revolution, immediately first we got electrification of Central Asia and other Soviet countries, liquidation of slavery, elimination of illiteracy and women's rights, collective farmings, kolkhoz, industrialization, which our country could produce civil planes uh, and people's self-determination. Beginning in the middle of 20th century was a golden age for communist movements and for Soviet socialist republics. But after the 1991, we jumped back to the pre-revolution period, 1970s. Now we see around the world the imperialist wars, poorness, unemployment, migration crisis, religious fanaticism, rising of income inequality and diseases, etc. Looking at the Soviet experience, I remember quote of Karl Marx, as Marx said, the salvation of humanity is in socialism. And the legacy that Lenin left us, that is his theory and practice, is always in our minds and hearts. Long live, long live the leader of revolution, comrade Lenin. We will extinguish the sun if it only shines for the bourgeoisie. Thanks for, thanks, thanks for your attention, comrades. Thank you a lot, comrade, for this very essential uh, contribution to the conference for the legacy of Lenin. And uh, now we can uh, just, we have, uh, we are in the end of this session, but we can finally read the contribution of the comrades from Italy, from uh, Sardegna Rosa, uh, about the uh, revolutionary defaitism of uh, Lenin. So I will uh, read this uh, important text. Lenin's command, let's convert the imperialist war into civil war. Lenin's realism and revolutionary defeatism. In opposition to the other leaders of workers international, Lenin never dissociated his theory and his practice from Machiavelli's rules. As enunciated in the sixth chapter of the prince. Hence, it comes about that all armed prophets have been victorious and all unarmed prophets have been destroyed. This is the quotation from the prince. The title of this chapter is indeed concerning new principalities acquired by one's own arms and ability. Uh, the age of imperialism, according to Lenin's theory, was characterized as the age where the working class would create his own new principalities and the revolutionary party had to be ready to achieve this goal. In the 90s, uh, in, the first of the, in the first year of the 20th century, a Workers' International Congress in Paris, it was individuated the development which would have led to First World War. During the discussion on militar militarism politics, Rosa Luxemburg stated that this politics generalized and evolved into the political form of imperialism. This politics started with Sino-Japanese War, followed by Spanish-American War, Transvaal War, and finally the war between United Europe and China. Bourgeois so society entered into a new stage of evolution. But where this last effort dies, there it comes the time of the final defeat. After Russian-Japanese war, the revolution that followed and the massive strikes in 1905, the great German revolutionary proposed the mass political strike as a way to knock down the capitalist domination. Thinking about the revolutionary experience in 1905, Lenin observed that mass political strike could not be the way to conquer political power. Lenin's quote, General political strike in the actual stage of the movement must not be considered, considered an autonomous way of struggle, but an, an uh, auxiliary uh, weapon at the service of the insurrection. Hence, it is appropriate to subordinate the choice of the time for this kind of strike, the choice of the workplaces and the trades to be subsequently involved to the time and conditions of the main way of struggle, which is the armed insurrection. End of quote. 
the matter of insurrection was debated by Lenin against the economist supporters and the Mensheviks, sustaining the concept of the party as made up of militants who had to be always ready. The organization, this is a quotation from the what is to be done, the organization built around its journal, the organization of its collaborators, which means everyone involved in it, will be precisely ready for, ready for everything which includes saving the honor, the prestige, and the tradition of the party during the bad times of revolutionary depression, but also arranging, deciding, and realizing the armed insurrection of all the people, what is to be done. During the years preceding the first great imperialist war, there was a wide confrontation concerning the general arming of the people, the popular militia who would be opposed to the mass armies, Karl Radek wrote. To the proletariat, the claim for militia means a switch from defense to offense. End of quote. Radek himself, arguing with Jean Zoré, pointed out that the general arming of the people, the popular militia, would have never been accepted by the bourgeoisie. A quotation from Radek. This belief, the compatibility between democracy and capitalism as a part of a petty bourgeois ideology led our French comrade Jean Jaurès to his actual conception of militia. In his extremely interesting work, L'Armée Nouvelle, The New Army, he connects the, the idea of militia with a complete departure of France from the path of imperialist politics and he believes in the possibility of a peaceful and merely defensive politics in France. According to his view, militia has nothing to do with the capitalist reality. This is an utopia because French capitalism will clutch to imperialist politics as well as the others until the proletariat, proletariat will not take the power. End of quote. Inside the debate around popular militia, the second international left wing follows from a theoretic perspective the contradiction of militarism individuated and exposed in Engels and Deering. Engels. This militarism brings itself the seed, the seed of its own ruin. It is foreseen to consider seriously the compulsory military service for everybody and by doing so, so it is even forced to make the, pop, the people familiar with the use of guns and at a certain time to make them capable of affirming their will against the lords of military class who hold the command. At this point, the army of the princes turns into the army of the people. The machine refuses to obey. The militarism is bent by the, the dialectics of its own development. End of quote. Hence, we could affirm that Lenin's political imperative, converting the imperialist war into civil war, did not come unexpectedly. Which is then the difference between Lenin and the workers' international left wing? Lenin prepared the Bolsheviks to, the achievement, to this achievement on a practical basis. The contradiction of militarism supplies the matter, but only the specific preparation of the party can give conscious form to the matter. In what is to be done, the instruction is clear. As soon as our forces will allow, allow us, we will have to deal carefully with propaganda, the agitation among soldiers and officers, the creation of military organizations afferent to our party. End of quote. In occasion of the third Congress of uh, the Russian Social Democratic Labour Party, uh, April 12 to 27th of 1905, Lenin wrote two projects, one resolution, and made two speeches about the insurrection. The organization of military squads of the party and the organization of the propaganda inside the army were complementary. In 1905, it was created the military organization, which operated from inside the army by publishing the follow papers. Barak in Petersburg, Soldier's Life in Moscow, Barak's uh, Bulletin in, in Finland, The Voice of a Soldier, Riga, Life of a Soldier, Ekaterina Noslav. Here's why the position of the transformation of the imperialist war into civil war was not a flatus vocis. Uh, after February 1917, the Russian Conference of the RSDLP organizations took place from June 16th to uh, 23th. Of June. This conference saw the participation of 167 delegates in a representation of 26,000 members of the party. In, 20, in 1923, in Germany, the heart 
of European capitalism, the insurrectional plan arranged in, Mons in Moscow took life, but it failed because of the inability of German communists and their fatalism and wait and see approach, notably described by Trotsky. Trotsky quote, many Western communists never got rid of their fatalist and passive manner to approach the main issues of revolution. In the German communist party, there is still a strong faction which is inclined to revolutionary fatalism. Revolution gets closer, they say, and, uh, and uh, they will bring it, it will bring itself the insurrection and it will give us power. As regards the party, in this particular moment, its role is about arranging the revolutionary agitation and waiting for its effects. Given th these conditions, defining strictly the deadline of insurrection means eradicating fatalism and passivity from the party. It means also making the deal with the main issues of the revolution, in particular the conscious organization of the insurrection aimed to kick the enemy out of the, from the power. End of quote. Revolutionary defeatism and realism nowadays. Revolutionary defeatism tactics was developed starting not from an abstract concept but from the existing contingents, compulsory military service and mass armies. Nowadays, in the most dominant countries of the imperialist system, compulsory military service and mass armies do not exist anymore because they were replaced by armies of professionals. What kind of work has to be done to convert the imperialist war into a civil war? First of all, are these professional armies in good health? The answer is negative. For example, in the USA, there is a recruiting crisis which seriously worries the military leaders. Quote, the all volunteer force may finally have reached its breaking point just after the United States fully withdrew from Afghanistan last summer and it shows no sign of abating anytime soon. As a result, the USA military is shrinking, not because of any strategic choices, but simply because there aren't enough qualities volunteers and that may have enormous implications for, for the USA strategic position in an increasingly uncertain and dangerous world. For 50 years, the USA military has relied upon an unbroken stream of willing volunteers to fill it, its ranks in times of peace and war. However, most of the trends that have created the present recruiting crisis will not change anytime soon, and if left unaddressed, they could soon threaten the ability of the all volunteer force to protect the nation. A return to conscription is neither desirable nor politically viable since, as we often like to joke, the only groups in America who oppose a draft are Democrats, Republicans and Independents. So without urgent action to improve eligibility and increase propensity, the military may find itself continuing to involuntarily shrink for wholly non-strategic reasons and may soon be too small to address the growing insecurity challenges facing the United States in the next few years and beyond, end of quote. This is from the addressing the USA military recruiting crisis, uh, yes, recently. Uh, now, nowadays, masses do not feel sympathy towards the professional army because it is commonly associated to the war economy and the people do realize that aggression uh, is its... Uh, uh, is it reason that okay uh, hence the war against the imperialist war has to be done by claiming the abolition of the professional army and claiming the general army of the people the popular militia the working class strikes in favor of salary raises and public instruction for the conquer and the defense of political and, uni and union rights and uh, finally against the imperialism working class had has to strike and mobilize as well to abolish the old volunteers army and to claim the popular militia in favor of the general arming of the people. Claiming the abolition of the professional army without claiming the general arming of the people is equivalent to uh, uh, uh, hoeing without having arms. Consequently, since the claiming of the militia shows the path of the power, it represents our purest slogan against imperialism, the imperative of our days. Karl Radek. And this is uh, the text from the comrades, important text from the comrades of Sardinia Rosa from Italy about the Lenin's uh, 
politics uh, for the transformation of the imperialist war to the civil to civil war. So we are in the end of this session uh, with the members and friends of the Rakovsky Center make a contribution. Unfortunately, Comrade Latif uh, uh, didn't uh, we didn't hear his important, of course, uh, uh, contribution. I suppose that we will have a kind of text from him. And uh, the original program uh, now has a discussion, but I think that uh, maybe we can, uh, yes, we can proceed to the next session. The special session, that, that is, I have the, how to say, the honor to uh, say that we are in the end of Lenin uh, conference and uh, a lot uh, th thought-provoking uh, contribution from all the comrades that take the floor and spoke today. Um, we will have the published material with all these uh, texts and contributions, and uh, we can proceed to the special session of the today's conference of Christiana Kovsky International Socialist Center. And I have to uh, give uh, the floor for the... Uh, uh, for, the, for the moderate for the, the for the moderate of the discussion now on to comrade kutlu comrade kutlu from medip yes uh, right comrades i'm I, i'm i'm not comrade uh, so uh, i believe uh, you, you yeah. are uh, so we were uh, yep. yes I'm uh, so i think uh, comrades Thank, thank you, comrades, uh, for this uh, wonderful uh, session. So, if, uh, we, if for discussion, if there are any guests or participants who want to uh, make an additional intervention or add some uh, some something, uh, please feel free to contact us, like either through uh, our streaming software or directly uh, through the platform that you are uh, watching us, be that YouTube, Facebook, or uh, Twitter. Uh, otherwise, uh, as Comrade Ernesto said, uh, my understanding is that we are uh, passing to the special session on uh, Palestine. Of course, as we have recently uh, passed uh, that, let's say, uh, fa fateful uh, mark of 100th day uh, of, uh, of the uh, genocidal war uh, on Gaza, uh, this uh, session is, of course, of a very special importance uh, to us and some uh, very uh, special part, uh, in, uh, speakers will uh, share their interventions uh, with us, be that uh, the Uni Uni uh, United Campaign for the Liberation of uh, Lebanese uh, Revolutionary, uh, as well as uh, a comrade who, ha who was recently in West Bank uh, in the midst of this uh, genocidal war. Uh, so uh, on this note, I leave the floor uh, to comrade Kutlu. Sorry, comrade. Uh, are, are we beginning the Palestine session or? Yes, we, we are beginning the Palestine session. Okay. Okay. Comrade. That we we have a video, by the way. Let's uh, let's begin with with it. Comrade Safa. Gadul umamia, 
يوحدوا البشر بجموع قوية هبوا لا حظ فر غادوا الأمامية يوحدوا البشر العمل والفلاحون جميعا حزب الكادحين الأرض ملك المنتجين فما بقى للخاملين العمل والفلاحون جميعا حزب الكادحين الأرض ملك المنتجين فما بقى للخاملين كم تمزق اللحم منا مخالب المفترسين اجلوا سود الغربان عنا تشرق الشمس كل حين بجموع قوية هبوا لا حظ فر غادوا الأمامية يوحدوا البشر بجموع قوية هبوا لا حظ فر غادوا الأمامية يوحدوا البشر Dear comrades, now we are at a special session of this very fruitful conference. Allow me to call it once again um, a conference on which the sun never sets, as uh, the previous conferences of uh, Christian Rakowski Center and Redmond. Uh, we have opened this session with uh, the international, this time in uh, Arabic, from a refugee camp in West Bank. I'm not going to give a spoiler. Uh, you must um, wait for our friend Jeremy Lester's uh, speech in this session for the story behind it. We, we by the way, thank him uh, a lot for uh, sharing uh, this recording with us. Uh, comrades, we are in the midst of a real genocide. It's financed and supported by the imperialists and it's implemented by the Zionists. Uh, more than 25,000 people were killed by Israel up till today. Whole Gaza, including hospitals and the civilian infrastructure is targeted. Uh, a new Nakba is being carried out by Israel. The organizers of this conference, RedMed and the Christian Rakowski International Social Center stand against this imperialist-backed Zionist massacre uh, from the very beginning. They signed uh, a common declaration in support of the Palestinian resistance. And where they are organized, they took to the streets, organized demonstrations, both in the city centers and in front of the ports uh, from which the shipping of goods to Israel is done. And uh, this session in uh, such a conference actually is a reflection of the importance that both Rokowski Center and Redmet give uh, to the Palestinian cause. Our approach to the struggle of Palestinian people and their struggle and their resistance uh, organizations is not unattached from Leninism. Uh, the analysis of imperialism uh, right of uh, self-determination and the strong commitment to internationalism uh, is Lenin's legacy to us uh, that shaped our attitude uh, to the Palestinian uh, cause. Now, um, I give the floor to our speakers, beginning with uh, the United Campaign for the Liberation of George Abdullah. They give a steady and 
determined struggle against French imperialism for a long time in the belly of the beast. Uh, Abdullah is the longest held prisoner in Europe and uh, exemplary military and a real nightmare for imperialists and Zionists. Uh, the floor is yours. Chers amis, chers camarades, j'espère que vous m'entendez. Vous m'entendez, chers camarades eh Oui, on, on vous entend, camarades. Très bien. Donc, vous, Brock, tu, tu feras la traduction en simultané eh, Pas simultané, mais je, je vais parler juste après vous. Si, <rire> du coup, si on peut aller morceau par morceau ou phrase par phrase, je vais traduire après vous. Très bien. Donc, je commencerai comme commence toujours Georges Abdallah au niveau de ses déclarations. Il commence toujours par dire « chers amis, chers camarades ». So, uh, comme il dit, that I will start uh, the way that George Abdallah always starts uh, his uh, declaration, declarations by uh, saying uh, « dear friends, dear comrades ». Au nom de tous les camarades de la campagne unitaire pour la libération de Georges Abdallah, je voudrais d'abord remercier tous les camarades pour l'organisation de cette conférence et pour nous donner l'occasion de rendre hommage aux grands dirigeants et révolutionnaires qu'a été Lénine et qu'est encore Lénine et nous donner la parole aussi pour présenter le combat de notre camarade Georges Abdallah. Euh... First of all, uh, in the name of the United, United campaign for the liberation of George Abdullah, uh, I would like to start the organizers of this conference uh, to create an occasion to uh, uh, commemorate the uh, glorious and great revolutionary leader uh, that was Lenin and who uh, remains to be uh, the, the great and glorious revolutionary leader and also for uh, creating an occasion uh, for us to talk about the struggle of George Abdullah. Je ne reviendrai pas en détail sur l'héritage que Lénine a laissé au mouvement communiste mondial et au prolétariat. Uh, I will not uh, dwell on uh, in, in detail on the uh, uh, on how crucial the uh, the heritage of Lenin uh, was to the uh, world uh, communist movement and the world uh, proletariat. Son œuvre théorique. Uh, his uh, theoretical work son action révolutionnaire as well as his revolutionary action sa contribution pour la formation d'une avant-garde révolutionnaire moderne uh, his contribution for the formation of a, a modern revolutionary vanguard et pour un parti de type nouveau communiste and a new uh, type of a party a communist party son rôle essentiel pour les forces révolutionnaires pendant la Première Guerre mondiale, pour le parcours uh, des bolcheviques vers la Révolution socialiste. Uh, his, his role as a, uh, as a pole uh, for the uh, revolutionary forces uh, during the uh, uh, First World War. Ainsi que uh, son rôle essentiel pour la construction socialiste. No, uh, and I skipped a part. Uh, sorry, uh, and his uh, uh, victor victorious uh, uh, and his his role uh, in the victorious trajectory of uh, Bolsheviks uh, towards uh, the social uh, revolution of uh, the October Revolution, as well as uh, in the first years uh, of socialist construction. Et naturellement aussi pour uh, son rôle essentiel dans la fondation de l'international communiste. And of course, uh, his uh, crucial role in the creation of the Communist International. Ce sur quoi je souhaiterais insister aujourd'hui, c'est surtout son aide à notre compréhension de l'impérialisme. Uh, more than anything, I would like to uh, talk about he, uh, how he helped us to understand uh, imperialism. Tout démontre aujourd'hui la justesse de son analyse. Uh, everything uh, clearly illustrates uh, today uh, the, uh, how right his uh, an analysis of imperialism was. Quand il évoque le stade monopoliste, parasitaire et ag agonisant du capitalisme, parvenu à son stade suprême qu'est l'impérialisme. Uh, 
he was right when he talked about uh, the uh, phase of uh, uh, monop monopoly of uh, parasitic and uh, uh, the, the phase of agony of capitalism, which reached its uh, final uh, uh, stage, which is called imperialism. Cela se vérifie tout d'abord, premièrement, dans cette tendance à une concentration toujours plus extrême de la production dans la main d'entreprises géantes et surpuissantes qui imposent leur monopole au peuple du monde. Uh, this shows itself in, in several respects. Uh, the tendency towards uh, uh, an, an, an always increasing uh, concentration of the uh, production in the hands of uh, giants and uh, superpower uh, uh, companies which uh, impose their um, monopoly on the peoples and uh, the peoples of the world. Cela se voit aussi dans cette domination toujours plus forte du capital financier oligarchique. Uh, which is also seen in the uh, ever increasing domination of the uh, uh, oligarchic rule of uh, finance capital. Cela se voit aussi dans cette quête de profit qui passe nécessairement par l'exportation des capitaux vers les pays opprimés pour toujours plus avoir de terres, de matières premières et d'une main d'œuvre bon marché. And the quest for uh, pro profits, which necessarily uh, entails uh, the export ex exportation uh, of capital towards uh, oppressed uh, countries, which uh, they call uh, globalization. Enfin, cela se voit naturellement aussi dans ce partage du monde qui révèle aussi toutes les contradictions interimpérialistes de ces monopoles et de ces États. Uh, this also shows uh, itself in the uh, exasperating, uh, uh, the, the, in the exasperating uh, interimperialist inter -imperialist, uh, contradictions. Et dans cette bataille pour, les, pour le, ter, le contrôle des territoires, Lénine nous rappelle aussi que la tendance n'est pas tellement à la collusion, mais plutôt à la concurrence. Et cette concurrence uh, uh, s'exprime selon deux, deux, deux, deux facettes de la même médaille, sur le plan économique et sur le plan militaire. Et dans ce combat pour le contrôle des territoires, Lénine nous montre que la tendance n'est pas nécessairement à la collusion, à un crash course, mais plutôt à la compétition qui se montre dans les deux côtés de la même coin, sur un plan économique et sur un plan militaire. Ainsi, aujourd'hui, on ne compte plus les zones de guerre et les zones de tension interimpérialistes. And indeed, right now, it is almost impossible to make a list of the uh, uh, war zones uh, in the world. On a l'Ukraine, l'Arménie, l'Azerbaïdjan, le Pakistan, l'Iran, l'Éthiopie, toute la corne de l'Afrique, le Yémen, la République démocratique du Congo, la région des Grands Lacs, le Sahel, la zone du Pacifique et notamment avec Taïwan et aussi naturellement tout le Moyen-Orient. Uh, this will include uh, Ukraine, uh, Armenia, Azerbaijan, uh, Pakistan, Iran, uh, Ethiopia uh, and practically the whole uh, Horn of Africa, uh, Yemen, uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo, as well as uh, the region of uh, Great Lakes in, uh, in, in Africa the region of uh, Sahel in Western Africa, uh, as well as the uh, region of uh, Pacific, especially uh, uh, Taiwan, and also uh, the whole Middle East. Ce sont des zones de tempête, comme les a appelé le président Mao Zedong quand il parlait de l'Afrique, de l'Amérique latine, de l'Asie. Ce sont donc des zones Des, pour les des zones de tempête pour ces nations et peuples opprimés qui sont en proie à l'impérialisme et à ses contradictions. Uh, indeed, these are uh, zones of uh, uh, storm, temp tempest, as uh, it was called by uh, Chairman um, uh, Mao uh, Zedong uh, when he talked about uh, the system uh, uh, 
which, uh, which, which has been the prey of uh, uh, imperialists. Mais ce sont aussi des zones où se révoltent contre lui finalement les peuples, et ce qui annonce aussi ce caractère finalement d'une crise révolutionnaire que le système va engendrer. Uh, but indeed, it is in these zones that also uh, peoples are also re uh, revolting against uh, im uh, imperialism and uh, creating a revolutionary uh, crisis. Aujourd'hui, l'une de ces zones de tempête qui fait trembler les, les tigres en papier par le déluge d'Al-Aqsa, c'est naturellement la Palestine. Uh, and today, one of these uh, zones of uh, storm, uh, uh, tempest, uh, which uh, shake uh, the uh, paper uh, tigers uh, with, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, with Alexa uh, uh, storm, it is uh, Palestine. La Palestine, avec sa glorieuse résistance, qui officiellement, depuis 76 ans, combat l'antitessionniste, mais en réalité depuis l'arrivée du premier colon sur sa terre. Uh, in, indeed, this is uh, Palestine and its glorious resistance, which officially uh, has been resisting uh, for 76 years, but in reality, uh, it has been uh, resisting since the arrival uh, of the first uh, uh, settler uh, in its uh, territory. Or, cette lutte est essentielle, car elle n'est pas simplement contre un colon, pas simplement contre un ennemi qui aurait occupé une terre qui ne lui appartient pas et qui a uh, chassé les habitants. This is an essential uh, struggle because this is not a uh, fight simply against a settler who simply uh, occupied a territory uh, which did not uh, belong to the settler. Ce n'est pas seulement contre un con, contre un colon mais et pour un droit inaliénable. Cette guerre, cette lutte est aussi en réalité une guerre qui va mettre à mal tout un système, le système impérialisme au Moyen-Orient, car la Palestine est le bras organique de l'impérialisme dans la région. Uh, this is a war that will uh, put the whole imperialist order into a crisis because uh, what is happening in Pal Pal Palestine, this is uh, the sort of orga organic extent extension of the whole imperialist order. L'antitessionniste a été créé de toutes pièces pour justement le vol des richesses et maintenir les peuples et les nations arabes sous la domination de l'impérialisme. Uh, Zionist entity was indeed uh, created with this precise uh, pur purpose that is uh, oppressing and keeping subjugated uh, uh, Arab people in the region. Lenin nous l'a enseigné ça aussi. Lenin uh, taught us this as well. Et il nous permet de ne pas nous perdre dans de fausses analyses. Uh, it's with Lenin's analysis that we are not uh, losing our ourselves in uh, uh, false analysis. Tout comme il a dénoncé Kautsky à l'époque contre une soi-disante position réformable du capitalisme. Uh, just as he uh, denounced, denounced uh, Kautsky who was uh, preaching a position about, a, uh, about a, a capitalism that is possible to reform, a reformable capitalism. Il nous aide dans ce combat concernant la Palestine contre l'impérialisme, à bien choisir notre camp. Uh, he, uh, he helps us to uh, choose our, uh, our, our side in this fight against imperialism. Celui de, non pas des réformistes, mais bien des révolutionnaires. Uh, not, uh, not the reformist side, but the side of uh, revolutionaries. Ainsi, dans le cas de la Palestine, cette boussole qu'est Lénine nous conduit à choisir le camp entre deux positions antagoniques. And indeed, in the uh, case of Palestine, uh, the uh, clarity provided uh, by uh, Lénine uh, helps us uh, uh, position ourselves clearly uh, between uh, two uh, antagonistic poles. D'un côté, il y a le camp des négociations, des concessions, 
des collaborations et finalement de la soumission à l'occupant. Uh, on one side, you have negotiations, uh, concessions and collaboration uh, with the final aim of uh, subjugation. Ce camp vise à brader la cause palestinienne à travers des mots d'ordre comme un état de tous ses citoyens ou la position entre deux états où le colon et le colonisé seraient côte à côte. Uh, this position uh, waves the name uh, Palestine uh, with, for, uh, for a uh, for a so-called so uh, solution, which will be the, uh, the state of all of its citizens, or uh, something like uh, two states where a uh, co uh, colonizer and the colonized will live uh, side by side. Et de l'autre côté, il y a un autre camp qui est celui de la résistance. And on the other side, there is another uh, side, another camp, uh, which is that of the resistance. Aujourd'hui, de toute la résistance sous toutes ses formes, Uh, right now, uh, every, every, every kind of uh, resistance in, its, uh, in all of its forms, principalement armé, uh, particularly the armed one, dans cette lutte de libération nationale, uh, in this uh, fight for uh, national liberation, pour une cause palestinienne qui est avant tout une cause de l'anti-impérialisme, de l'anti-colonialisme, de l'anti-sionisme et contre les états réactionnaires armes. Uh, for the co uh, Palestinian cause, uh, which is more than anything, a cause of anti-imperialism, a cause of anti-colonialism, anti-Zionism, and a, a cause against all reactionary Arab states. Dans cette guerre, un des glorieux résistants de cette cause a to toujours choisi son camp, c'est George Abdallah. Uh, one of the glorious fighters uh, of uh, one of the glorious resistance of this fight, who uh, always uh, chose its uh, side clearly, uh, he is uh, George Abdallah. George Abdallah is a combatant communist who, during his whole life, has been on the side of the Palestinian people, of his resistance, and of the oppressed peoples against the imperialism. Uh, George Abdullah, uh, who's a, a communist fighter uh, throughout all his life, uh, has always been on the side of, uh, of the Palestinian people. Uh, its resistance and th uh, that of the uh, oppressed peoples uh, against imperialism. Il est aujourd'hui détenu en France depuis plus de 39 ans, alors qu'il est libérable depuis 1999. And uh, right now he's uh, imprisoned by the French state since uh, 39 years, even though since 1999, uh, legally speaking, he could be liberated. For des actions de résistance, alors que son pays, le Liban, était occupé. Comrade, uh, est-ce que vous pouvez répéter? Désolé, ça je le. Il est en prison en France pour des actions. Je rajoute juste qu'il a été. Il est en France pour des actions de détenu en France pour des actions de résistance alors que son pays le Liban était en, en occupé. Okay. Uh, he is imprisoned in France for uh, for the actions uh, uh, actions while his country uh, Lebanon was uh, occupied. George Abdallah n'a jamais rien renié de ses engagements. Uh, George Abdallah never uh, gave up uh, on his engagements. Il a toujours été aux côtés des masses populaires en lutte. He, he has always been on the side of uh, uh, popular uh, masses uh, in, in their fight. Et ce révolutionnaire qui marche dans les pas de Lénine et de tous les révolutionnaires porte en lui l'optimisme historique. And this revolutionary who uh, walks on the path of Lenin and other uh, revolutionaries uh, carries in himself uh, that historic uh, optimism. Chaque jour, il affirme avec détermination que le peuple palestinien est toujours là, que la cause palestinienne est plus que jamais vivante. Uh, each and every day, he sh shows with uh, determination that uh, Palestinian people uh, is still there, uh, well alive, and uh, the Palestinian cause is uh, stronger than, uh, uh, str stronger than uh, ever. Et que forte de son expérience historique, elle est et elle restera toujours prête à relever le défi jusqu'à la victoire. 
uh, and uh, counting on his uh, histor historic uh, ex experience, he, he will always be ready to take up the challenge uh, until the victory. Ce qui se passe depuis le 7 octobre, notamment, le démontre. Uh, what has been ha uh, happening since October 7 uh, showed this clearly. Pour conclure, je dirais simplement que fort de l'enseignement et de l'optimisme révolutionnaire que nous tenons ici, que nous avons donc de ces grands révolutionnaires que sont Lénine et euh, aussi de Georges Abdallah, nous devons tous réaffirmer notre soutien aux masses populaires, aux masses populaires palestiniennes. Nous devons réaffirmer toute notre solidarité jusqu'à la victoire. Taking our strength from uh, the historical uh, teachings of uh, these revolutionaries and uh, from a historic, uh, historical uh, optimism and uh, on, on the part of revolutionaries like uh, Lenin and uh, George Abdullah, in uh, this fight we should uh, always uh, stand with uh, popular masses in Palestine. Je finirai juste par des, par des mots d'ordre que Georges Abdallah scande aussi dans ses déclarations. Uh, I will uh, conclude with uh, some slogans uh, that George Abdullah uh, always ends his uh, declarations with. Que mille initiatives solidaires fleurissent en faveur de la Palestine et de sa prometteuse résistance. Uh, may a thousand initiatives uh, emerge in favor of Palestine and its uh, promising res resistance. La solidarité, toute la solidarité avec les prolétaires en lutte. And solidarity, all our solidarity uh, with the proletari uh, proletariat in its fight. Honneur aux martyrs et aux masses populaires en lutte. Uh, glory to uh, martyrs and uh, uh, uh, popular masses in their struggle. Abat l'impérialisme et ses chiens de garde sionistes et autres réactionnaires arabes. Uh, down with imperialism and uh, it's uh it's stop it's uh guard dogs uh zionists and other uh, reactionary arab states le capitalisme n'est plus que barbarie honneur à tous ceux et à toutes celles qui s'y opposent dans la diversité de leurs expressions uh, capitalism is nothing but uh, uh but uh, barbarism and glory to uh, all those who oppose capitalism in the, all the diversity of their expressions Ensemble, camarades, ce n'est qu'ensemble que nous vaincrons. Uh, together, comrades, it's only together that we, will, uh, we shall triumph. À vous tous, camarades, nos salutations communistes. Merci beaucoup. Uh, to all uh, you comrades, our uh, communist salutations. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you very uh, much indeed. Merci beaucoup, camarades. Thank you very much indeed. Um, now... Uh, I now I would give the floor to Comrade Abdullah, but I think he, he's not present here. Um, so um, now I give the floor to Comrade Jeremy. He's with us um, as soon as he came from Palestine. Uh, thank you again, Comrade. Uh, the floor is yours. Yes, correct. Please. Okay. Thank you very much. Do you, do you hear me? Do you yes, hear yes, me? Yes. Yes. Yes, Comrade. Yes, we can okay. hear you. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, first of all, thank you very much for playing the. No, I'm getting. I'm I'm getting an echo back. Uh, come on. We, can, we, can you, we can hear you clearly. We can see you and we can hear you. You can go on. I'm getting an echo back. I'm getting ah. an echo back. Ah, is your is your YouTube uh, is open? Can, can be the problem. Yeah. The YouTube. Do I close the YouTube? 
Yes, yes. You have to go close uh, the YouTube. Okay. Yes. Now it's fine. Thank you very much. Okay. okay, you're welcome. First of all, thank you very much for playing the Internationale at the start of this session. It brings back wonderful memories of my New Year's Eve uh, celebration in the camp where I was, where I and a group of young Palestinian uh, youngsters, teenagers, uh, celebrated the end of the old year and celebrated the beginning of the new year by singing the Internationale. They sang it in the Palestinian dialect version. I contented myself with singing it in Russian. Uh, and at least that night we went to bed happy, content, full of inspiration and hope. And I would also say we went to bed unwashed because earlier that evening all the water supply in the camp had been cut off. So it was a, a, a very special evening. As was mentioned, uh, I only got back actually last night. So I join you and bring to you uh, warm fraternal international greetings not only from myself but more importantly from all the comrades with whom over the past month or so I have been living, working and collaborating. All of them express and emphasize very strongly that every act of solidarity with the Palestinian struggle is greatly appreciated. One final thing in this very brief introduction, I would also, like others before me, like to pay a special tribute to Sasha Buzgalin. I first met Sasha nearly 40 years ago now, in what was then still very much the old Soviet Union. And over the course of many, many years, we had many shared platforms and political gatherings together. We shared many wonderful occasions in the company of each other's family. And the memories that I have of those times with Sasha and his family will be ones that will remain very strongly in me. Uh, the news of his sudden, and sudden death saddened me greatly. As I have very hastily, just before coming back from Palestine, prepared a very brief, early written report on some of the key activities that I did while I was in Palestine, I just want to use this verbal report to emphasize just a couple of things. I will try and be as quick as I can and as brief as I can to say there are just a few things that I would like to emphasize. If I can, I would like to start with a very short quotation from the great Palestinian poet Mahmoud Darwish. The words that I'm about to quote to you come from his very last letter that was actually written on his deathbed in August 2008. And the few words that I've chosen from the letter to uh, quote to you are as follows. Being Palestinian is not a motto, nor is it a profession. The Palestinian is a human being, a, to a tormented soul with daily questions, both national and existential. The Palestinian has a love story who contemplates a flower and a window open to the unknown. The Palestinian has a metaphysical fear and an inner world utterly resistant 
to occupation. And of course, it's this strong, very, very strong resistance to occupation that has so shaped and defined the whole history of the Palestinian struggle, dating back not only the last 76 years, but also, of course, uh, during the British control of Palestine uh, after the First World War. And of course, it's this extremely heroic struggle that in particular today we are seeing across the length and breadth of Palestine, and most particularly, of course, in the extremely heroic struggle being waged in Gaza, not just by the militant guerrilla forces that are directly combating the Israeli army and the genocide that they are carrying out, but also amongst the ordinary people themselves. It's a heroic resistance in such dreadful, terrible, horrific circumstances that I think we all must salute and uh, honor as much as we possibly can. Situated as I was in the West Bank throughout my time in Palestine, of course, the first thing to note is that the situation there pales into insignificance compared with the current genocide that is taking place in Gaza. But having said that, since October the 7th, each and every day, military raids, military invasions of refugee camps throughout the West Bank have increased, increased in number, increased in violence, increased in atrocities committed by the Israeli army. And as I say, these are increasing day by day by day. And with all the effects that, of course, come with such invasions. I do, in fact, have some secret material shot in the camp where I was of what it's like to see the Israeli coming in with tanks and other uh, military equipment coming into the camps and to see the kind of damage and destruction that they, that they cause. And I think it's becoming ever clearer that as one hears and reads all the statements currently being given by Israeli government ministers, that very soon in the near future, the current genocide being waged against Gaza will almost certainly spread to the West Bank as well. It is very clear that the aim of the Israeli fascists uh, and the government that is in place at the moment is to conclude the Nakba process of 1948 by either killing or expelling all remaining uh, Palestinians from what will, they hope, become a single Jewish Israeli state. And certainly all the comrades that I worked with and collaborated with are very aware that we are approaching, they are approaching, we are all approaching a key turning point in the history of the Palestinian struggle. A turning point that will become very much an all or nothing struggle. Either the Israelis will succeed in their horrific plans to create a single Jewish state and expel or kill the remaining Palest uh, Palestinians, or that long-lasting, long-standing struggle for Palestinian independence and liberation will eventually be successful. And certainly, Preparations are well underway in all the camps, and again in the camp where I was in, 
knowing that this is what is going to hit them in the near future and they are preparing strategically for this militarily for this politically and ideologically for all of this and as i say they fully expect that the situation in the west bank will become pretty similar to what gaza is currently facing it's also well known that already in recent days a couple of military units israeli military units that had been based in gaza have now already been transferred to the west bank and the israeli government plans to reinforce the current military numbers in the west bank considerably over the next days and weeks so i think this is the kind of future we're going to see quite quite quite soon and as i say preparations are underway in each of the camps to uh, get ready for the new situation which will arise let me just say a little bit about the specific camp that i was in it's a very special unique camp it's the camp called Dehesha, which is just on the outskirts of bethlehem and since its foundation immediately after the nakba in 1948 beginning of 1949 it has always been recognized and celebrated as a bastion of communist left political ideological revolutionary struggle a reputation that has continued right up to this day and at no time during this long period of its of its existence has it fallen under either the control or even indeed even the influence of islamic fundamentalist groups it genuinely is the focal point for the left wing of the Palestinian resistance, the communist left wing of the Palestinian resistance. And they are very proud of this and continue all their activities in the knowledge that they represent uh, the Palestinian left today in ways that no other refugee camp could possibly uh, represent in, in, in the same way and as i say certainly all the work and discussions that i had with uh comrades showed this very very clearly inevitably one of the main questions i asked all my comrades was therefore what are their views of the 7th of october attack on israel by uh hamas and all of them unanimously agreed that it was an action that was absolutely vital absolutely essential and is a necessary vital part of the ongoing revolutionary struggle it's one episode in that uh, and it has certainly opened up new spaces new contexts in which their own activities can now be performed and so they certainly wholeheartedly support the actions that were taken on the 7th of October and fully recognize that only a military organization like Hamas had the ability at that time to undertake that kind of action. At the same time, of course, they're fully aware that the fundamentalist ideology of Hamas is very very different from the kind of aims and ambitions for a future palestine that they have but for as long as the dominant part of the struggle remains uh, opposing uh, israeli genocide then they are more than prepared to work together as much as possible knowing full well that if that hope 
and that aspiration of full Palestinian liberation eventually comes about, then at that point, an internal struggle for control over a new future Palestinian state would begin. In essence, it's a situation not all that dissimilar from what happened in Iran in 1979, where the revolution there was commenced and motivated and inspired by left-wing forces, but then was quickly co-opted and taken over uh, by Islamic fun fundamentalist forces, and all left-wing forces were eradicated from, brutally eradicated from, from the scene. Um, a similar situation one can quite imagine in, in, in, in a future Palestine that has achieved liberation. A great deal of the work that takes place in the camp is amongst the youth uh, in uh, the Haitia camp and it's work that commences at a very young age it's work and education that is uh, self-managed self-organized fully participatory by the children by the young people them themselves there is no official kind of academic style teacher-student relationship in which the students are there simply to learn what the professor or what uh, they are being told. It is fully participatory. Uh, those who are responsible for giving some kind of education in all kinds of different areas constantly li listen to the needs and the requirements of the youth knowing full well that it's going to be them they who are going to be the ones who will be the main participants in the much stronger future struggle that is likely to impact on them uh, in the not too distant future it's an education that takes Comment, by the way, you, you have one or two minutes. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm about to finish. Yeah. It's an education that takes place strategically, preparing young people for the struggle that will take place. It's an education that takes place politically, consciously, uh, ideologically, with full emphasis on achieving maximum degrees of consciousness not only a consciousness of the national struggle taking place in Palestine, but a clear recognition that this is only one part of a global struggle, that Palestine is absolutely dependent on other forces around the globe waging that struggle and all together collectively winning that struggle. It's also very much a struggle in cultural artistic terms and the little paper that I have distributed gives you some idea of some of the work that I was doing while I was based in the camp. But certainly my experiences with all the young people that I worked with left me with a great deal of hope and inspiration for the future that the Palestinian struggle and resistance is going to be in very good hands. If I can, I would just like to conclude now with a short quotation from Georges Abdallah, who we've heard tributes to just before now. It's a short quote, and I think it's a very appropriate quote to finish on. So these are the words of Georges Abdallah. The Nakba of 1948 is the day-to-day -day life of a whole people. From its entrails also come long processions of Fedayeen and the children of the Intifada. It is the Palestine of each day, comrades. 
Ben-Gurion, just like all the reactionary criminals of the 1940s, used to tell those warning him about the Palestinian revolution that causes also age with time and end up one day dying and disappearing. Yet more than seven decades later, Palestine is as alive as it is resistant. The determination of the Palestinian popular masses, popular masses is more than ever unshakable despite the terrors and the atrocities of all kinds. The Palestinian prisoners too, despite so many years, are still there on their feet, facing their jailers, personifying the heroic resistance of Palestine and showing all the Ben-Gurions that Palestine not only will live, it will certainly be victorious. On that note, a viva la Palestina, Palestine, hurrah, a viva la rivoluzione. Thank you, comrades. Thank you very much indeed, comrade. Uh, thank you indeed. Uh, now, um, Comrade uh, Salas uh, Mikhail Matsas will speak uh, on behalf of uh, EREK, uh, the Greek revolutionary Marxists carrying the flag of anti-imperialism and anti-Zionism for tens of years with pride. Uh, the floor is yours, Comrade. Uh, comrade, you are muted, by the way. Yes. Okay. It's important that uh, after a conference on Lenin, which was a real marathon, because until now we are more than eight to nine hours, we culminate this work by a special session on Palestine, because Palestine in struggle today against a genocidal war waged by Zionism with the full support of the collective Western imperialism, first of all of the United States, is the central, occupies the central of the world political scene. Everything has changed after the Palestinian operation flag of Al-Aqsa to 7th of October. And uh, the International Socialist Center, Christian Rakowski, one week after this event, this break of continuity of political developments, not only the Middle East, but all over the world, in our view, we issued a statement stressed the importance of this major turning point, not just in the Palestinian struggle, but in the world history of struggle for universal human emancipation, as Marx has called communism. So first of all, we want, it is not a formality, but we want first of all to denounce the genocide which takes place, a horrible thing, which is not just the Nagba number two, as both friends and enemies of the Palestinian people say. By the way, in our view, Nagba did not finish from 1948 until now. It had ups and downs. But now we are we had to reach a very crucial point. In every minute, some uh, child is killed in Gaza. And not only in Gaza, it is correct and it's important. The report we just heard by my friend and comrade Jeremy Lesler about the West Bank. 
okay, although the focus of the genocide now is, is Gaza, but it's not limited to Gaza. The, the West Bank, it was always the main bastion of the most left wing, the most radical resistance of the, of the Palestinian people. And it, from the beginning, the fascist government of Netanyahu, the settlers, they wanted to the annexation of the West Bank. And according to one of their ministers, Smotrich, even Jordan. So, first of all, we say, stop the genocide, immediate ceasefire, immediate exchange of all political uh, prisoners in the Zionist jails with all the hostages all for all, without this bazaar, which is really a shame and a crime against humanity, which is taking place. So we stand firmly with the Palestinian resistance and the Palestinian revolution for liberation from occupation to dismantle this regime of apartheid, this settled colonialist tyranny which tries to exterminate the whole people. Because we have not to forget that settled colonialism, in difference from other, other forms of colonial policies, it has in its own logic genocide because the in the settler colonialism in different from other colonialism the target is not just to over exploit the local indigenous population like for example in the apartheid regime in south africa in the past it is to exterminate to expel all these people for this this is behind there is a logic in the madness of these declarations by the Netanyahu government, by the officials of this regime, to bomb with a nuclear bomb Gaza, or to the plan, this hideous plan, to expel them, not only from Gaza, but from the Middle East to Africa, repeating what Hitler and Nazism had it was the initial plan to expel all Jews from Europe to Madagascar or another place. Then they changed, they moved to the final solution at Auschwitz. And this is a horrible lie, a big lie to speak in the name of the Shoah of the Auschwitz, these followers of the Nazi extermination policy, they are, they cannot speak in the name of the victims of Nazism, those who repeat these crimes against another people with the full help with the fascists of Europe and America from Trump to the IFD in Germany, to Orban, to Meloni in Italy, to the fascists in Greece, including the Greek far-right government of Mitsotakis, all of them, they take the side of Netanyahu and the other settler Zionists against in this genocide. So we salute the heroism of the Palestinian people. We, we, this is a condition from our part. And we fight by their side. And we denounce 
all those who do nothing in the in front of when and the genocide takes place in front of them. Both, not only the bourgeois governments in the West, including my country, not only the most of the left, the official left, despite the millions of people who spontaneously they move in the streets of uh, or in Europe and America and all over the world, not only the Arab Muslim world, in solidarity, but also against the Arab reactionary regimes, they do nothing but help this genocide. Only the poorest of the poor, the Yemenis, the Houthis, they save the honor of the Arab nation in its uh, struggle against imperialism and against Zionism today. We are not, we don't take an equidistant position as all kind of hypocrites say. Despite all differences that we have with the methods, tactics, the strategy or the lack of strategy of the Hamas or the other fundamentalist forces, etc., we are not neutral in the clash between imperialism and Zionism from one side or on the other side, the axis of resistance in the Middle East. Their fight is our fight for liberation by a world socialist revolution. So we see already that the war is extended beyond, not only Gaza, beyond occupied Palestine, all over the Middle East, and even beyond in Central Asia. It is part of this imperialist war drive that express the historical impasse in which American and global Capitalism in its decline is today. The, the war at the heart of Europe, in the, the NATO proxy war in Ukraine against Russia, the war of the Zionists in the Middle East for the extermination of the Palestinian people, with the full help of the American and Western imperialism, are different moments, but of the same world historical process where a, a decaying system, capitalism, brings humanity at the brink of an abyss of the Third World War and of a nuclear holocaust. We have to wage war against war. The enemy, of course, it is, the, we see it commit all of these crimes. But we, we call all the forces in their own countries to look the enemy in our own countries. We have to kick out the US NATO bases from Great Turkey all over the world. We, if we accept, we know very well that all the recent attacks are sustained by the U.S. imperialist forces in bases in Greece. They sent the Greek government, they sent their military, their ships to this, to this fleet of the U.S. and British imperialists in the Red Sea and beyond. We are already an international confrontation between the forces of destruction of humanity and the forces who can, by struggle, by revolutionary struggle, without compromise, go to emancipation, social and national emancipation of all oppressed. For this reason, we have not just stay and see what happens, but to use the title of a, 
the contribution by the Russian comrade today, Comrade Epstein, we have to understand and act. We have a huge political responsibility. We have a huge moral, ethical debt. We cannot be passive and see the, the innocent to be killed, massacred by the tyrants of this world. But we can see also the other side, despite the, the magnitude, the horrible dimensions of what happens now in this genocidal war. We can see also the enormous weakness of our enemy. The entire US and Zion strategy recently before the 7th of October, it was to create, to normalize the relations between the Arab monarchies with Israel, either with the Abraham Accords by Trump or by the Israeli-Saudi pact that Biden tried to do on the eve of this explosion, they wanted really to create, to eliminate completely the Palestinian people, to create what they say said just on the eve of this explosion, a new Middle East with a corridor of prosperity and peace going from the Gulf via Israel to Europe, to make, as the Zionists say, to have an Israel from the river to the sea, making a mockery the well-known slogan of the Palestinian movement. But all of this, and the Americans, the American capitalism in its crisis, in its decay, needed, either from Obama to Trump and then to Biden, to make the so-called pivot to Asia, go out of the Middle East, where it was a fiasco in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in everywhere, it was an American Waterloo, worse than what happened in Vietnam in 1975. They wanted to go to face in Asia what they call the main strategic rival, China. But the Palestinian people with its resistance destroyed this needed for uh, strategic plans of imperialism and they created a new world situation. The Zionist project itself faces an implosion. We saw that almost all the way, even before the war with the judiciary coup by Netanyahu. We saw it during the war, because I don't remember any other war, or even from the first weeks or months of a war confrontation to have anti-war uh, demonstrations or activities. This enormous split and polarization, even in the Israeli Jewish population, we can see that and we can to, we should elaborate a strategy really, which appears now utopia, but is not utopia in front of this hell. We have to fight to free all the historical space of Palestine and create conditions that only a social socialist revolution can do it for peace, a peace who does not exist without justice, the victory of the justice of the oppressed Palestinian people, of the oppressed people in the Arab countries, of the oppressed people in the global south, of the oppressed and the overexploited of working class all over the world. On this basis, we can see with confidence the horizon of our struggle of our, for world revolution 
and of the necessary wasteland for its victory, the build of a revolutionary international. Thank you. Thank you very much, comrade. Uh, now I give the floor to comrade Burak from the Revolutionary Workers' Party, deep of Turkey. The floor is yours, comrade. Uh, hello, comrades. Uh, so, uh, dear comrades, I would like to start uh, my intervention by expressing, just as many speakers uh, did before me, my utmost solidarity with the Palestinian people facing an ongoing genocide attempt, a continuation of Nakba as we speak. Yet, their resilience and resistance, notwithstanding arguably uh, the most terrible atrocities com committed uh, in the 21st uh, century that they, ha they have been uh, facing, and this is under uh, thunderous applause uh, from what is euphemistically called the international community, carries in itself the, prom the promise of a free Palestine. It is no coincidence, dear comrades, that the Revolutionary Workers' Party of Turkey uh, in its 7th Congress adopted a resolution on Lenin and Lenin year, as Comrade uh, Levent Dölek uh, before me uh, eloquently explained in, in the previous session. And uh, this Congress also adopted, adopted a forceful resolution uh, on Palestine. The resolution adopted unanimously expressed its unconditional support for Palestine and Palestinians against the massacre, genocide attempt, and ethnic cleans cleansing that Israel undertook. I just said that the ado adoption of uh, resolutions on Lenin and Palestine uh, in the same Congress uh, was uh, not a simple uh, coincidence. Indeed, the emphasis on a jealous def defense of, of the Leninist heritage and the steadfast uh, defense of the Palestinian cause are interrelated and equally central elements of the Revolutionary Workers' Party's revolutionary strategy. By gathering uh, here for, for a conference commemorating uh, Vladimir Ilyich Lenin, we are not simply uh, commemorating a historical figure. On the contrary, we claim and reclaim a political heritage which includes as one of its cornerstones the strategical alliance of the working class and oppressed peoples against imperialist capitalism. Accordingly, and as the logical consequence of this stance, we stand with Palestine, not as a, a simple token of solidarity, but with the consciousness that Palestine stands at the forefront of the fight against world, world imperialism and uh, the prospects of an anti-imperialist revolutionary future. It is due to this dialectical uh, connection, dear comrades, that we affirm that one cannot reclaim the Lenin's heritage without unflinching support towards the anti-imperialist cause, not least that of Palestine. And one could hardly propose a coherent anti-imperialist position uh, on Palestine without basing itself on Lenin's political legacy. It is on this understanding that Revolutionary Workers' Party conducts a relentless struggle uh, in support of, Pal of Palestinian cause. As our seventh Congress, uh, as the resolution uh, adopted at our seventh Congress uh, reiterates, DIP continues to fight for a revolutionary solution in Palestine, which will entail nothing less than a free, democratic, secular, and socialist Palestine within the Socialist Federation of the Middle East and North Africa. And let me say, uh, comrades, in addition to uh, theoretical elaborations and resolutions, DIP's engagement with, uh, in the Palestinian cause is well visible in its militant action in the streets of Turkey, uh, carried uh, together uh, with the Friends of Palestine, uh, of who, uh, which uh, a militant will take the floor uh, just after me. But dear comrades, it is also equally important to underline that uh, this, that support of a uh, revolutionary Marxist tradition for the Palestinian cause has a long history, not incidental, uh, incidentally reaching well before the foundation of a state of Israel in historic uh, Palestine. 
And because of that, after uh, briefly introducing the re resolution uh, adopted at uh, Revolutionary Workers Party's 7th Congress, I would like to mention a special uh, publication, and concretely speaking, a dossier published uh, by the Revolutionary Workers Party's uh, quarterly journal uh, in Turkish, which is called Devrimci Marxism uh, in its language, and its special annual edition in English uh, called Revolutionary Marxism. And I believe uh, comrades will be able to uh, project the cover of the special issue um, on the screen as I speak. Yes, uh, I see that they already uh, did that one step ahead of me. Uh, so, uh, dear comrades, this dossier, whose introdu introductory text is uh, aptly uh, titled As Red as a Palestinian uh, Watermelon, introduces precisely this pr proud tradition of ours. The first two texts uh, are from 1947, which means before the imperialist imposed partition and the in, uh, ensuing following uh, catastrophe, known in Arabic, as we know, uh, as Nekbe. Uh, the first of these texts was uh, published by the Revolutionary Communist League, uh, which was the Palestinian section of the Fourth International at that time. The second, on the other hand, uh, is an editorial uh, from the French language central publication of the Force International itself. The publication was called uh, Quatrième International. And what marks these texts is a steadfast and uh, principled opposition to the partition of uh, historic Palestine and the creation of a settler colonial state uh, on parts of uh, Palestine. We are proud to reclaim this history as our history, comrades. And whereas a uh, principled opposition to, colon to the colonization of Palestine might seem only too evident looking back from uh, uh, now from a uh, socialist, from a communist perspective, please do remember that at that time, the Soviet Union and a uh, newly emerging Eastern Bloc, uh, controlled by uh, the Stalinist bureaucracy, uh, they were voting for the partition of Palestine and communist parties of the world were uh, towing this official line and lining up to salute Israel. Let it be crystal clear, comrades, our inter intention could not be further away from digging deep into history to find bones of contention where there exists none. But we would like to also offer a level of clarity and even confidence in this new generation of militants worldwide swelling the ranks, ranks of the fight in support of Palestine by showing them that there exists a co communist tradition whose, whose support uh, for uh, Palestine is not simply conjectural or tactical, but rather st strategical, strategical, and let me say existential even. Or to put it as uh, Lenin once uh, famously expressed in a distinctly different uh, context in Russian, Yistakaya Partia, uh, or comrades, there is such a party, there is such a revolutionary uh, tradition, and us revolutionary Marxists are proud to call uh, this history uh, ours. And to be sure, uh, comrades, this is uh, no ancient history, and our support for the Palestinian cause does not conjugate in the past tense. As a reminder of this, in addition to uh, the uh, items that I already list, and the more that you will hear from the comrades, comrade uh, who will uh, follow me. Uh, the same dossier includes a, com a communique statement uh, co-published by DIP and our ch cherished uh, air com comrades in Greece uh, in support uh, of the uh, Palestinian uh, cause and uh, Palestinian uh, people. And I would like to uh, encourage all our participants, all uh, our audience, to uh, check out this uh, special issue of revolutionary Marxism, as I said, published in English and freely available uh, online on the website of uh, Devrimci uh, Marxism, of uh, whose link uh, I believe comrades uh, will publish uh, just right now uh, on chat. And let me co uh, conclude my uh, words, uh, dear comrades, uh, by saying that we shall never cease to hold that proud uh, banner of ours high until the day, that long-awaited day, when Palestine is free. Thank you, comrades. Uh, 
Thank you very much, Comrade Brock. Uh, and now, comrades, now uh, it's my turn. Um, to begin with, I want to introduce our platform to you. Friends of Palestine Against Imperialism and Zionism was founded in 2018 uh, as an initiative of uh, DIP, the Revolutionary Workers' Party of Turkey, but it also has participants from other organizations as well. Uh, our main aim is to fight imperialism and Zionism in Turkey. In my speech, uh, I wish to summarize our points regarding the latest developments in Palestine uh, in seven, uh, unfortunately, very brief titles. Firstly, we must admit that the problem did not begin uh, in the October the 7th. It's a result of the Zionist occupation in Palestine, which has a long history. The development of the Zionist movement, its alliance with imperialism, the Balfour Declaration of 1917, the Zionist terror in Palestine in the 20s and 30s, the Nekba and the ongoing uh, Zionist massacres, ethnic cleansing uh, going on since then. Israel is clearly an illegitimate entity aiming to annihilate Palestine and expel Palestinians from their historical land. Israel had killed more than uh, 200 Palestinians in the West Bank uh, this year when the Al-Aqsa operation was done. So the Al-Aqsa followed operation did not occur in a vacuum. It was a response to all of this. Secondly, we must also admit that the Al-Aqsa float operation is a rebellion against perishment. It followed 16 years of Gaza blockade, the rise of Israeli apartheid, ongoing ethnic cleansing, increasing humiliation, United States decision to accept Quds, Al Quds as the capital of Israel, uh, the Abraham Accords, and Netanyahu's map uh, that he has shown in the United Nations, uh, which does not include uh, Palestine on it. Palestinians thought they will suffocate very soon, and they got into action. Thirdly, like all the Palestinian factions, for us, Hamas is right and legitimate in its fight against Zionism. We Revolutionary Marxists do support the communists of Palestine in their struggle to win the leadership of the Palestinians. For other Palestinian factions, we do not give any political support to them. They lack the political program that will give Palestinians a prosperous life with equal rights at the end. But they are right in their fight against the colonizer now. That's why we give them uh, only a conditional support. This is also, by the way, what Palestinian socialists do in their alliances with those factions, including Hamas. Fourthly, we must emphasize that the civil death toll in October the 7th is in the responsibility of Israel. We, revolutionary Marxists, do not want to see any civilian death, of course, but first, as we see previously in many instances, the accumulated outrage can unfortunately channel to civilians. Algeria uh, was an example for this. Second, unlike Palestinian forces, Israel openly aims to kill civilians in a systematic way. Third, Israel had to admit that its army had killed its own civilians, you know. So Israel is directly responsible for many civilian deaths, even if they are Jews. Four, Israel's death toll is unreliable, as we saw in the example of the 40 beheaded babies lie. 
And five, most importantly, the responsibility of civilian losses belongs to the guilty part in a war, which is clearly Israel. Fifthly, we must clearly understand, comrades, that if Palestinians win, working masses around the world also win. A victory of Palestinians against the Zionist entity will also be a victory against imperialism, which is the most advanced power we face in our fight against capitalism. If imperialism receives a wound, there will be occasions for the exploited masses around the world. Also, even now, the rise in the struggle of Palestinians is leading to some positive developments. For example, Egyptians are taking it to the Tahrir Square after 10 years, or huge demonstrations shake the imperialist centers, or peoples of the West Asia, including Turkey, see the relations of their governments and bourgeois classes with Israel. Sixthly, we see that Palestine is fighting against many powers. Zionists are at the top of the list, of course. Imperialists follow them. You know, Biden says uh, aid uh, to Israel is a smart investment. Uh, European imperialism left is its uh, own rhetoric of human rights when it came to Gaza. We all, we all see that. But also reaction, reactionary Arab regimes follow the example of uh, the Jordanian king who attacked Palestinian guerrillas in 1970 and Ahmad Sadat who spoke at the Knesset. They now have the Abraham Accords, you know, which are nothing but a dirty shame. In Turkey, in our country, Erdogan, the so-called protector of Palestine, did nothing, absolutely nothing in defense of Palestine. Moreover, his despotic regime was planning a new normalization with Israel in an attempt to take part in the stealing of Palestinian natural, natural resources. Neither the Islamist nor the secular Westernist bourgeois camps stopped trade relations with Israel during its assault against Gaza. Lastly, Palestinians' own government, which is an offspring of Oslo Accords, is still helping the Zionists to control West Bank. We won't forget the murder of Basil Arash and other Palestinian fighters killed by Zionists with the help of the Palestinian Authority. It's, it is some sort of a collaborator fed with the imperialist fronts. So, uh, for the conclusion, for the freedom of Palestine, for the emancipation of Palestinians, for the defeat of Zionism and imperialism, we must first mobilize the international working class and all the oppressed against the destruction of Gaza. Second, we must stop especially the shipping of military products to Israel with an organization of trade unions and working class organizations. Three, we must call for an effective boycott of Israel and sanctions to it. Four, we must fight for the unity of Palestinian Arabs and Jews. Five, we must fight for a free, independent, socialist Palestine from the river to the sea, which will be part of a socialist federation of the Middle East. And of course, also, for the emancipation of Palestinians, we must work hard to build the vanguard of the international working class and the oppressed, following the internationalism of Comrade Lenin. Comrades, uh, time is up, uh, but not me. Uh, someone else will conclude this very conference. Uh, Gassan Kenefani is uh, one of the founders of the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine. Uh, his analysis of uh, the Palestinian struggle of 30s 
guided the Palestinian socialists in their fight against Zionism. He was an uncompromising internationalist. Now I uh, now I quote him. Imperialism has laid its body over the world, the head in Eastern Asia, the heart in the Middle East, its arteries reaching Africa, Latin America. Wherever you strike it, you damage it, and you serve the world revolution. And another quote, the Palestinian cause is not for Palestinians only, but a cause for every revolutionary, as a cause of the exploited and oppressed masses in our era. Thank you very much, comrades. I hope heat in struggles that we shake imperialists and Zionists under the guidance of Comrade Lenin. Thank you very much.